On the faraway continent of Norzelia, three mighty powers reigned. The Kingdom of Glenbrook, through which runs the mighty Norzelia River, bringing flourishing trade. The Grand Duchy of Esfrost, a land of ice and snow beneath which slumbers rich veins of iron. And in the desert, the holy state of Hyzant, home to the lake from which is harvested the salt essential to life. With each nation controlling one vital resource, conflict between these three powers was all too common. Minor disputes and skirmishes gave rise to fierce battles, and before long, the realm was engulfed in a bloody conflict that would rage on for years. Many died in what came to be known as the Salt Iron War. Brought to their limits and facing their mutual demise, the three powers at last negotiated a truce. The Norzelia Consortium is formed, a neutral organization that oversees fair trade of iron and salt. Finally, peace came to the realm. Thirty years pass. Now, a new bond is set to be formed between the Grand Duchy of Esfrost and House Wolffort of Glenbrook, whose power in the kingdom is second only to that of the royal family itself. Lord Serenoa? Good morning! Congratulations, my lord. The future of Wolford is looking brighter than ever. Today's the day, is it not? We're all ready for the big moment. Thank you, everyone. Young Master. Lord Serenoa. So, you were here after all. Ah, Benedict. It would seem word has reached the people already. You can thank Eridor for that. He couldn't refrain from blabbing the news to anyone who would listen. I'll have a talk with him after. This is a momentous day, not merely for our domain, but for all of Glenbrook. I do not think it possible to keep it a secret. This is well and true, my lord, but you must consider your betrothed's lineage. I'm well aware of the situation, Benedict. I cannot say for sure what repercussions this may have. What I do know is that the people rejoice for us and harbor hope for the future. As the future Lord of House Woolfort, I must rise to the occasion. Fine resolve, my lord. As House Steward, I will do all in my power to assist. Thank you, Benedict. It is heartening to have the support of my father's right-hand man. Shall we head to the port then, my lord? So soon? I had thought we would have more time. The river's waters have risen with the heavy rainfall earlier this week. And given the wind, I think it likely that Esfrost's ship will arrive ahead of schedule. <laughs> you never cease to amaze. Very well then, let us be on our way.
I thank you for the escort. You are free to go. Lady Frederica, there is no one here to receive you. He will be along shortly, no doubt. If I have heard true, he is not the type to keep a lady waiting. By your leave, then. We wish you everlasting happiness, my lady. Thank you. I shall work hard, both for my new home and for my motherland. Please let brother, the Archduke, know that. As you command, my lady. We leave the rest to you, Gila. I shan't let you down. Phew, Glenbrook at last. Finally, we can take a moment of respite from our long journey. That said, it would seem we've arrived ahead of schedule. I much prefer it to being late. This is a momentous day for Esfrost, and for the entire realm. We cannot afford to make a bad first impression. I agree. Which is why we cannot have you looking so tense. Why don't we go for a bit of a stroll? A fine idea. After all, this may be the last time in a while that I am free to do as I please. Most are not inclined to grant liberty to one of Roselle heritage, such as me. You brought that pendant with you? Of course. It is the only memento I have of my mother. <laughs> Thank you kindly, little lady. Letting a whole boatload of guards go back home was a stroke of genius. We heard tell you'd be here, and we wanted to be the ones to welcome you. The winds of fortune are blowing today, aren't they, Pa? Brigands! Stand back, Frederica. I shan't let them have you. What do you intend to do with us? Make your little hostages all and ring every last coin out of the duchy and house Wolfort. what's with that pink hair though yeah rosellen and that lady looks like she's from high Zant. did we go after the wrong boat impossible the ship was full of as frosty soldiers enough i am without a doubt Have you bandits no shame? Attacking two innocent women? And just who in the hell are you? You two bear a striking resemblance. Might you be father and daughter? You got that right. This is Trish, my pride and joy. She's a chip off the old block, ain't she? <laughs> Minus the stench in the hairy arms, maybe. You wound me, girl! That was supposed to be a compliment. If you'd prefer, we'll leave you alone to settle your family dispute. You're the whole reason we're quarreling, you dolt! Exactly! You're about to pay for messing with Travis, the Bandit King! Our foe has lost their composure. Well done, my lord. Ah, enough of this! You'll regret ruining our plans! To arms, my lord. 
Stand back, the both of you. No, we fight together. I brought this upon us through my indiscretion. Pray allow me to help. My lady. I am a teacher of the arcane arts, and Frederica is a most apt pupil. I can assure you we shan't be a burden. Then I ask for your support from the back lines. And you shall have it. Why didn't you tell me you were having such fun? I would have joined you sooner. What are you doing here? Let us talk later. Now, I believe we have some lawless ruffians to rap. Wait, I know that face! That's the Wolfort Lordling! What's that you say? Wolfort? It can't be. What are they doing here so damn soon? This ain't what we planned for. Let's get out of here. For a bunch of no good thieves, at least they know when they're in over their heads. I would have preferred to apprehend them and see them atone for their crimes, but uh, so be it. Your bride to be is safe. Isn't that what matters? My bride to be? My sincerest apologies. I had no idea we were being trailed by bandits. But where are my manners? I am Frederica of the Grand Duchy of Esfrost. I have come to fulfill our agreement. I am honored to join you in marriage and to call House Walfort my new home. The honor and pleasure is mine, Lady Frederica. Hey, forgive me for not introducing myself sooner. <laughs> to think you'd fight each other's side in battle before exchanging your vows. Though, I dare say that it bodes well for Wolford that its new lord and lady makes a fine team. Your Highness! Here, here you are. Why, the entire Kingsguard has been scouring the land for you. Did you sneak out of the castle again, Roland? When I heard my best friend's betrothed was a right Lenbrook, I simply couldn't miss the occasion. While we appreciate the sentiment, perhaps you should have said something to the king. <laughs> I'm the least of my dear father's concerns. Though back to Huet will think otherwise. I suppose I'd best be on my way back. Rest easy, my fair lady Frederica. You are in good hands here. I look forward to celebrating your union. Till we meet again. His ring bore the insignia of Glenbrook's royal family. Could that have been... Prince Roland, King Regna's younger son. So a lord and a prince drove off a band of brigands by their own hand. What a fascinating nation we've come to, Frederica. This is Chila, my tutor and attendant. Famed is the martial prowess of the Wolforts. It was an honor to be able to witness it firsthand. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Sarah Noah of House Wolfort. And this is Benedict, trusted steward of my family. It is my honor to serve Lord Saranoa in any and all matters. On behalf of House Wolfort, I welcome you to our domain. You may think this is an odd question, my lord, but I ask it nonetheless. What does the color of my hair mean to you? I think it's nothing to be surprised about. We have Roselle living in our very domain. You are kind to say so. And yet, there are some who would say that this hair is proof of my ancestors' sins. 
and shun me for it. Rest assured that no one in House Wolfort would say such terrible things. There is nothing you need worry about here. Thank you, my lord. Lady Frederica, everyone awaits. Allow us to escort you back to Castle Wolfort. Thank you, Benedict. It would be my honor. Sarah Noah of Glenbrook's House Wolford and Frederica of Esfrost will unite in marriage to strengthen the ties between their two nations. In doing so, the newfound allies hope to hold their own in the face of Hyzant's salt monopoly, which continues even now, decades after the war. Who could have known that this was but a prelude to an uprising that would engulf all of Norzelia in the flames of war? Wherever did my fool brother run off to? I explicitly told him I wanted him here when we welcome our guests. It would seem Prince Roland shrugged off the King's Guard and went on a little excursion, as he's wont to do. I swear it's as if the boy exists to drive us mad. He is an embarrassment to our family. No matter. I will see to matters myself. Your honored guests have arrived, Your Highness. I see new faces among them. I trust you can tell me more, Claris. But of course, Your Highness. The imposing looking woman over there is General Avlora of Esfrost. Her prowess in battle is such that some say she is the second coming of Groma Ironfist, hero of the Salt Iron War. If the rumors of her strength are true, she is more likely to emerge victorious than any but the Dawn Spear himself. Over there is Minister Exham Marshall of the Holy State of Hyzant. He is the newest appointee to the Saintly Seven and has been placed in charge of the military and diplomatic affairs. It is a rise to prominence nigh unheard of for one so young. A general of the Grand Duchy and Hyzant's young home. I imagine this will not be the last I hear of them. I know this man, Source the End of Hyzant, yes. Just so, my lord. As you doubtless know, he is the Holy State's Minister of Salt. A prestigious position, though it is said he feels threatened by Minister Exham of late. So even the great monolith that is the Holy State is not immune to internal strife. Thank you, Clarus. I can see they were not wrong to tap you to lead the consortium. As the officially appointed bookmaker for the tournament, it would not do for me to be ignorant of the combatants. Your Highness, Lord Thallus and Lady Erica, brother and sister of the Archduke, have arrived. They will be joining the festivities in Archduke Gustadolf's stead. Word has it that Lord Thallus has been appointed Prime Minister, which would make him the second most influential individual in all of Esfrost. Archduke Gustadolf is said to prize freedom more than anything. It would seem that includes the freedom to put his own family above all. 
With all due respect, Your Highness, the decisions of another nation are their own. Do take care not to say anything that might offend our new allies. You need not remind me, Patriot. I know there is little to be gained from quarreling with Esfrost's ruling family. Honored guests, I am Franny, Crown Prince of Glenbrook. It is an honor to welcome you to our kingdom in my father's stead. I can assure you we have spared no effort in preparing for tomorrow's festivities. Let us ring in this new age of alliance together. Though I imagine some may be too occupied awing us with their prowess in the tourney to enjoy the revelry themselves, Allow me to escort you to Whiteholm Castle, where the ceremony will take place, whenever you're ready. Prince Roland, finally you return. At ease, you went. I trust all was well in my absence. Well enough. Another visit to the Woolfort Domain, was it? Indeed, on minor business. My apologies for leaving unannounced. Apologies indeed. You know full well that I am under strict orders from your father to accompany you on any excursions outside the castle. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Besides, no one would lose any sleep if something happened to me. Father and Franny, least of all. Even Cordelia would get along perfectly fine without her brother. Well, I would not. Or have you forgotten that you are my one and only sworn liege? You right. Forgive me, truly. It won't happen again. I should hope not. So it is true that you plan to fight in the tourney on the morrow, and alongside House Woolfort, no less. How did you...? His Grace told me, when he commanded me to keep you out of trouble. So Father knew all along. And so I have decided to fight at your side. You won't be slipping away on my watch this time. As you wish. Welcome back, the both of you. Were there any troubles while we were out? None to speak of, aside from Eridor here. But what else is new? Out with it, Benedict! I heard you were beset by brigands. Is the young lord safe? Lower your voice. Must you always shout so? Or can't you see that it was that big mouth of yours that invited trouble in the first place? There is no cause for concern, Eridor. Besides, I'm not a child anymore. Mayhap not, my lord. But I've known you since you were knee-high to a... Uh, never you mind. <sighs> and this must be the young lord's bride-to-be. I am Frederica. It is a pleasure and honor to meet you all. And I am Gila, her attendant. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Allow me to introduce those in service of House Woolfort. This is Arador, Master at Arms and Commander of our military forces. You'll be the Lady of House Woolfort. No harm will befall you as long as I'm around. And this is Anna, my right hand. If you require anything, just say the word. They may not be of my blood, 
but they are my family just the same. And from this day on, they are your family as well. I am aware that in all of Glenbrook, House Wolfort is second only to the royal family in power and influence. I will do my best not to disappoint you. A joyous day this is! The little lord grew up and found himself the perfect pride. Nigh brings a tear to my eye. His voice certainly does carry. Sorry, my lady, but you'll have to get used to it. <laughs> my lord, your father awaits you in his chambers. As for me, I must stay and discuss the preparations for tomorrow's festivities with Anna and Erador. Lady Frederica, pray come with me. Father is expecting us. As you are well aware, there are two events of utmost importance to be conducted before Lord Serenoa and his bride are wed. The ceremony to commemorate the joint mining venture. Still can't believe I'll be seeing the day when we break ground on a new mine right here in Glenbrook. And with the full support of Esfrost and Hyzant, no less. You can thank King Regna for that. It was by his most wise and generous proposal that the three nations of Norzelia now strive toward a common goal. Needless to say, delegates from each nation will be joining in the festivities. From the Grand Duchy of Esfrost, Lord Dragan Esfrost, who is overseeing the technical side of the mining operations. The Holy State of Hyzant will be represented by Minister Lila Viscraft of the Saintly Seven. And our own Lord Simon will serve as Glenbrook's delegate, meet with the two before the ceremony. Yes? Quite so. After that, it will be House Wolfort's responsibility to see that our honored guests feel welcome. Anna, I would trust you safeguarding both Lord Dragan and Minister Lila. Consider it done. Then once that stuffy ceremony is over, we can get to the real highlight of the day, the tourney. Ah, my blood's already rushing, just envisioning the greatest warriors from all the realm clashing swords. From Esfrost, the much-renowned general of Laura. And from Hyzant, Minister Exham Marshall. I have heard much of his prowess as well. Then, of course, there's our reigning victor, the pride of Glenbrook. Sir Maxwell the Dawnspear. Still, I wish him all the best of luck against their hosts. They'll need it to beat House Wolfort. On that matter, there are two things I should make clear. Prince Roland has expressed a desire to join the tourney as a member of House Wolfort's contingent. Why would the boy want to fight with us and not his own arms master? Apparently, he originally formally requested to do just that, but King Regna would not allow it. And so he came to the young lord in hopes of finding another way in. Well, it's more than welcome in my book. The royal family said we're free to put together our own contingent after all. I reckon his majesty would be beside himself with joy if we could deliver a beaten to Esfrost and Isand. Doubtless so. Very well. I shall inform the Prince that he is welcome in our ranks. Finally, there is the matter of Lord Simon's health? Indeed. Sadly, the Lord of the House is in no condition to participate in the tourney. Barring some miracle, I anticipate that Lord Saranoa will have to fight in his Lord Father's stead. Lord Simon. I suppose age takes its toll on even the mightiest of men. So be it then. You can leave watching over the young lord and Prince Roland to me. Good. I remind you that while this is a joyous occasion, all of our attendees have their own reasons for coming. 
let us not give them an opportunity to catch us unaware. Father, I bring to you my betrothed, the Lady Frederica. A pleasure to meet you, my lord. I am Frederica of House Esfrost. Ho oh, oh, ho, the pleasure is all mine. Were it not for the efforts of House Wolfort, the Salt Iron War would rage on still today. I do not deserve the honor of joining your esteemed family, but I will endeavor to serve you all the same. <laughs> there is no need for such formalities, my girl. You are tired from your journey, I am sure. Pray rest easy tonight. Thank you, my lord. I believe that in any journey, the first step is the most important. Before we go forward together, I should like to know why you chose to welcome one of Roselle in blood, such as I. Oh, ho! I'd heard you were a strong-willed one. Pray forgive my insolence. <sighs> And yet, I am set to marry into a mighty house of a foreign nation. I should like to know what you wish of me, that I might live up to your expectations. A most reasonable request. Both of you, listen well. Yes, Father. Your marriage was agreed upon by Glenbrook and S. Frost that the ties between our two nations might be strengthened. To give us more leverage against Tizant with their monopoly over salt. Precisely. With Glenbrook and Esfros consolidating their power, Tizant was left with little choice but to join the Alliance. And yet, while Lady Frederica is indeed the Archduke's sister, at the same time, she is the daughter of a Rosellan concubine. And House Walford, for all our military prowess, is no more than a bannerman of the king. If the aim was to forge the strongest bond we could between our two nations... It would be far more appropriate for my sister, Lady Erica, to wed the Crown Prince of Glenbrook. Just so, yet neither nation chose that. And do you know why? So that if relations between our two countries were to take a turn for the worse... We could be cast away like pawns. Precisely. Such are the schemes of those who rule nations. <sighs> I understand now. And yet... No matter how impure the intentions behind this arrangement may be, I will not bring dishonor to the Wolfort name. Well said, my son. If that is your decision, then... <gasps> Father! Lord Simon! <sighs> I am an old man, and my health is not what it once was. For this reason and more, I have made my decision. As of this day, I abdicate my position as Lord of House Woeful. You will serve in my stead from tomorrow forth, my son. But father, I am not ready to... My decision is not made lightly. You have already shown me, with your words and your deeds, that you are more than ready. Think always about what your subjects need from you. Weigh your choices carefully, then take action. Do so, and I have no doubt you will make a great lord. And trust in Benedict. He shall serve you as well as he did me. Thank you, Father. I will spare no effort that one day I may be as beloved by our people as you. Lady Frederica, 
Your fate is not a simple one. There are many who would try to use the both of you as pawns in their own schemes. Even so, I hope that you will be there to support my son through it all, as his wife, but also as your own person. This is House Wolfort's entreaty and the wish of a father. Of course, my lord. It was my intention from the moment I boarded the ship. Beg pardon, my lord, but Lord Jagan and Minister Lila have arrived. Very well. Presiding over tonight's banquet will be my final duty as Lord of the House. Tomorrow's ceremony will mark the beginning of yours, my son. And after that will be your wedding. Rest well tonight, both of you, for busy days lie ahead. <laughs> Thirty years after the salt iron raged across Norzelia, a vein of precious minerals was unearthed in the kingdom of Glenbrook. From east to west, joy swept the land. United at last in common cause, the kingdom of Glenbrook, the Grand Duchy of Esfrost, and the holy state of Hyzant endeavored to wrest this bounty from the earth, with each nation providing expertise and resources. This uneasy alliance between once bitter enemies will herald a new era of tranquility in this long embattled realm. One after another, dignitaries from each nation arrive in Glenbrook to solidify this accord and toast to its success, the first step on the road to peace. Among those who would forge this road is Sarah Noah Wolfford. Inheriting the title of Lord Wolfford from his father, Simon, he must decide what foundation he would lay for this new era. Welcome to Castle Wolford, Minister Lila. Allow me to express my gratitude to the Holy State. Were it not for your nation's generous efforts, this venture would never have come to fruition. You are too kind, Lord Simon. You too have served an invaluable role in this. Though I must admit, the news of the union between your son and Lady Frederica came as quite the surprise. None in Hyzant considered that a bannerman of Glenbrook would join with the ruling family of Esfrost. I hear that Lady Frederica is the Archduke's half-sister. I must ask, how did this arrangement come to be? Uh, your curiosity is only natural. This union was promised during the war, an arrangement made with the previous Archduke. Truth be told, I am surprised one as well-informed as yourself did not already know. And this is your son? As I recall. Sarah Noah Wilford, at your service, Minister. And I am Frederica Esfrost. My son still has much to learn, but I believe this marriage will herald a bright future for us all. For today, I intend to step down and leave House Wolfort in Sarah Noah's capable hands. You're abdicating your position? Surprising news comes in pairs, I see. Nonetheless, I am happy for you both. I imagine the lords and ladies at tonight's banquet will take great interest in the new Lord Wolfort, as will I. <laughs> Pray, go easy on the boy, my lady. 
I hear that young Lord Dragan of Esfrost shall also be in attendance? Indeed. He has been appointed to oversee operations at the Grand Norzellian Mines. I understand his star in Esfrost has seen a meteoric rise. Good. I would like to hear more of this new explosive substance he means to use to blast the tunnels. As a fellow scholar of sorts, if in a different field, I am always curious to learn how great discoveries are made. He should have arrived by now. Has anyone seen him? Dragan's gone to see the city. He was halfway there before the gangplank landed on the docks. Ah, he is your cousin, yes. I see we share an innate curiosity for new places. The banquet will begin soon. I shall seek him out and escort him there. Very good. Though I will host tonight's festivities, I want you to act as if you're already Lord of the House. Our guests are the most esteemed personages of their respective nations. Take care not to cause offense. Of course, Father. I thank you for your hospitality today, Lord Saranoa. Think nothing of it. Did you enjoy the city, Lord Dragan? Quite. Its people are full of life and love for their lord. That says all I need to know about House Wolfort. You honor us with your words. I am only being frank. Frederica is the sister of the Archduke, after all, and my cousin besides. I would not see her marry into an unworthy house. Suffice to say, my expectations were exceeded. I have heard much of your ingenious contributions to the mining efforts. I sense prosperous days are ahead of us. As do I. Finally, our nations enter into an age unfettered by war. With Esfrost's iron, Hyzant's salt, and Glenbrook's mediation, there is no limit to what we can achieve. We must regard each other as equals and forge mutually beneficial relationships. I sense skepticism in your words, Lord Dragan. Do you mean to imply our relations are not already mutually beneficial? I need not imply anything. The salt tax you claim makes my case more than clear. Bold words from one so young. Is that how peers speak to one another? Perhaps the young ones, yes. What do you think, Lord Saranoa? Dissatisfaction with the salt tax was one cause of the war, was it not? Salt is a divine boon, a gift from the goddess to her true believers. This is the foundation of the teachings that guide us in Hyzant. By allying with Esfrost, do you mean to gainsay our most fundamental beliefs? Of course not, Minister. We understand that the source is Norzelia's sole supply of salt, and we would not deny that it is the Holy State's right to harvest and tax it as you see fit. Thank you for acknowledging that, though it strikes me that your words are measured. You needn't be so non-committal, Lord Saranoa. It is only reasonable that the three of us have differing opinions on the matter. However, that is all the more reason for us to be open to frank discussion. Hmm. Honored guests, <laughs> pray forgive my son. We of House Wolfort are but simple warriors. <laughs> I'm afraid matters of finance and politics do not come to us naturally. This, however, I can say. We will fight injustice and tyranny wheresoever it may be. Of course, we do not enjoy conflict. Still, we will not hesitate to defend our land and our people should the need arise. No matter how mighty the threat, we will fight for home and kingdom. Yes, Lord Simone. Of that we are keenly aware. I apologize if I spoke out of turn. But the fact remains that as every winter passes, the tension between our nations grows, and salt is the cause. 
the common folk have all but forgotten its taste. I simply want to ease their suffering. The ministry I oversee is committed to the preservation of life. I personally believe that salt should not be a luxury reserved for the privileged few. All those who live require it. Not just those lucky enough to be born within the borders of our holy state. You agree with me then? How I feel matters little. In Hyzant, the word of the goddess, as conveyed to us from the lips of the Hierophant, is absolute. But perhaps this joint mining venture of yours may lead to the change you seek. Indeed, we must set our gazes to the future. All of us. I expect you will be the ones to usher us into a new era. Yes, Father. Father spoke not a single word to me today. Before long, I fear I might forget the sound of his voice. Please, sister, you weep and wail like a common girl. Show some composure. Father has a kingdom to rule, a kingdom engaged in a historic endeavor. He has more important duties than to pamper a spoiled child. I... yes. Of course, brother. You speak as if Father's duties include anything more than licking the boots of these dignitaries. It is inconceivable he cannot spare the time to break bread with his daughter. You speak out of insolence and ignorance, Roland. I speak only the truth. He leaves all the cumbersome tasks to the Wolforts and Minister Patria. A king's word is to be obeyed. And what of his subjects? Do they exist simply to bring him glory? To take the blame for his failures? They are to serve as he sees fit. The hell they are. Believe as you wish. Speaking of his subjects, it appears Lordship of House Wolfort will be passed down to young Serenoa. What? How fortunate for you to have a friend in the new lord. Best not take loyalty for granted, however. House Wolfort is obedient enough for now, but that can change as quickly as the wind. Use them well when you can, but be ready to bring down your fist if they dare to rise above their station. Don't speak of them like lapdogs. They're not servants. They're my friends. Do you really think to lead with such a soft heart? You are not fit to wear the royal signet. Oh, stop this fighting at once! You frighten me! Enough of this. Where are you going, brother? To train with Sir Maxwell. I would clear my head. There is a tourney on the morrow, after all. Brother! Your spear wavers, my prince. Something weighs on your mind. You've always been able to see through me. It's no great feat. Your heart lies ever on your sleeve. Do I hear disapproval in your voice? Not exactly, my prince. It can be a weakness, yes, but it can also be your strength. After all, sometimes a direct strike is most effective at piercing a formidable defense. I will take those words to heart, Sir Maxwell. Thank you for today. The pleasure was mine. I expect a good fight from you tomorrow. In the final match, no doubt. I take the field with House Wolfort. Together, I have no doubt we can emerge triumphant. Ah, that would explain your improvement. Young Saranoa is a worthy training partner. Even so, I have no doubt you've held your own against him. Tomorrow you shall show the realm what I already know. That you are a warrior worthy of your family's legacy. 
Professor Maxwell, I... Sometimes I wish I wasn't a prince. Sometimes I wish I'd been born your son instead. Surely you jest, your highness. Your father is a great king, and an even greater man. It is an honor to serve him as I do. Apologies. I forget myself. I must have taken quite a blow. Anyhow, I suppose I should rest till the morrow. Be well, Sir Maxwell. It cannot be easy being the youngest prince. To have others expect nothing from you, yet still shake their heads in disapproval. But you can rise above this, my prince. Seize your chance and lay everyone's doubts to rest once and for all. Now that's what I call a feast. You've landed quite the catch, Frederica. He is a good man. I can see it in his eyes. You are too kind, Lord Dragan. And humble as well. Are you impressed as I, Frederica? I can tell that your heart is pure and gentle, my lord. Lady Frederica... Forgive me if I caused offense. I thought only to return your sincerity and kind. No apologies are needed. I am happy to meet your approval. I... Thank you, my lord. <laughs> Words come so easily to the both of you. A, a perfect match. Forgive my curiosity. What sort of life did Lady Frederica lead in Esfrost? Her life? <laughs> Truth be told, my dear Serenoa, not a pleasant one. Those of Rosellen blood are looked down upon in Esfrost, <laughs> even if they are the daughter of the Archduke's concubine. Gustadolf's full siblings are the worst of the lot. They have not a shred of human compassion between them. They cruelly bully the girl endlessly, regardless of time or place. Is this... True? Of course it is! I know Frederica's suffering all too well. My own father lived ever in the shadow of his elder brother, the former Archduke. Our house, too, is met with sneers by those who consider themselves our betters. But no more! I shall show all those simpering fops that it is not birth that makes greatness, but deeds. And so I did my due research at the Archives, that my grand invention shall blast our way forward! <laughs> Again, please. I believe you've had enough to drink. <laughs> you can hardly blame me for availing myself of Glenbrook's finest libations, brought by traders from the realm over. Each cask more exotic than the last. <laughs> Why, do not partake would be an affront to our newfound allies. Just make sure your head is clear for tomorrow. Or have you forgotten you're meant to be representing your nation? Mm, oh, yes, a, a ceremony to usher in a new age of harmony and prosperity. I am too young to have known the war, so I... I see our three nations joining hands more as a matter of expedience. But what of you, my kin to be? How do you see our grand cooperative venture? It is impossible to understand each nation's motivations. I can't say whether this bodes well. 
Interesting. You are the first I've spoken to to express such skepticism, and yet, <laughs> you may see more clearly than most. Like as not, it is a baseless worry. It is a lord's place to worry. We may at last share a common goal, but our motivations differ. The future is murky, no matter how brightly some may try to paint it. My new cousin has the intuition of a leader, I see. <laughs> or perhaps you're simply a worrywart. <laughs> In any event, it is always good to have another perspective on matters. Let me tell you what I believe. I believe we're on the cusp of a great achievement. As always, it is the young who must bear the burden of building the future. Old shoulders are frail, old minds stubborn. Whatever lies in our future, those who make it will mark their names in history. And mine, mine will be written large for all to see! And I would write yours next to it, my dear cousin. Pray, come visit me at the mines once operations are underway, and I, I shall... Trigan, are you quite all right? Worry not, Frederica. I'm just a bit tipsy. Perhaps I should just lie. It would seem Lord Dragan has turned in for the night. Quite the passionate fellow, isn't he? He's never been one to hide his ambition, ever since we were little. Neither does he hide his disapproval of my brother and Trueborn siblings. Feelings which you share? I grant it would be satisfying to see the sneers of those who look down on me wiped from their faces. But I also agree with Lord Simon that we must set our gazes to the future. Though I know not yet how I might best serve in this new age, I would do what I can. We are of the same mind in that regard, my lady. Let us ease the weight of each other's burdens. Please, call me Frederica. We are to be husband and wife after all. Of course, my... <laughs> Frederica. Pray call me Sarah Noah as well. Uh, we should carry your cousin to his chambers. Will you help me, Frederica? Certainly, Sarah Noah. Let us take care not to wake him, lest he resume his prattle. Benedict, hmm. I thought I might find you here. My lord. Did you tell her? That Sarah Noah would soon be taking over as lord of our house. Forgive me, my lord. I did not think to... Save your apologies, Benedict. Doubtless she was overjoyed to hear it from you. Destra always did trust you above all her advisors. As do I. For 30 years, you have served my house better than I ever could have asked for. You honor me, my lord. My lord? <laughs> I suspect this will be the last night I will hear those. My lord, I will call for a healer at once. Uh, do not bother, Benedict. It will avail me not. You know as well as I how my heart now fails me. My lord. And so I entrust Sarah Noah to you. For our house. 
pray heed this old man's final order. Certainly. I will live to serve your son until I breathe my last. Did you hear that, Destra? Our boy is in good hands. My old dear friend, long have we stood together. I will not let you down, my lord. My beloved son, Serenoa, will oversee the matters of our house from this day forward. I expect you to serve him as dutifully as you served me. Of course, Lord Simon. I, my lord, our undying loyalty to House Wolford. My son, listen well. The Lord's judgment shapes the fates of his kin and subjects alike. Responsibility for their well-being now falls on your shoulders. You must lead them well. Yes, Father. I shall keep those words close to my heart. To that end, I require wise counsel. Together, you possess a wealth of experience. As Lord of House Wolfort, it is my duty to consider the best course from every perspective afforded me. I shirk not from this responsibility. At the same time, I would be a fool to not seek guidance from those more traveled than I. For my house and my people, I trust I can rely on you. Well spoken, my son. I dare say you are more than ready to receive this. The Scales of Conviction, a holy relic said to be blessed by the deities of old. It was gifted to our family by the King of Glenbrook. From this day on, I entrust it to you. However, it is of little use without these. Coins. Seven of them. Tokens of conviction, we call them. Give one each to only your most trusted retainers and allies. They will guide you when the path is darkest. Their words will illuminate the pitfalls ahead. Heed well the advice of your friends and subjects. And choose your steps carefully. Such has been the way of our house, and such you must see it always shall be. I will, Father. I treasure these gifts and make wise use of them in times of need. Very good. Now do your duty. We await your orders, my lord. We depart for the capital at once. May this ceremony be but the first of many joyous occasions ahead of us. And so the stewardship of House Wolfort passes from father to son. Lord Simon Wolfort, beloved throughout Glenbrook, entrusts the future to young Serenoa. With the ceremony to mark the beginning of the joint mining venture and a tourney on the horizon, the Wolfort set forth to the Crown City. With no heroic deeds yet to his name, the new Lord Wolfort sets his eyes on the proving grounds, eager to show his worthiness. Sir Lord Simon will step down. I suppose the time comes for us all to pass on the torch eventually. What wisdom has your father bestowed upon you? Hmm. He has told me what it means to be lord of a house. Very good. Sarah Noah of House Wolfort, Crown of Glenbrook now looks to you for loyal service and brotherhood. Yes, your majesty. I shall not disappoint.
I dare you to say that again, Thalys. Must you make me repeat myself? I am the Prime Minister of Esfrost. I and I alone am fit to represent our nation. Go push your papers in the shadows like the minor lordling's son you are. You would shame me. You, who would be nothing if not for your high birth. Your ineptitude is mocked by noble and commoner alike. Dragan, you forget yourself. You both forget yourself. Frederica? If you must bray at each other, then do so back home. Your bickering will bring shame upon our nation. Such strong words, sister. Do you think you're above us now that you're being wed to Mighty House Woolfort? Please, Erica. My apologies, but the ceremony will begin soon. I ask the delegates of each nation to make their preparations. And you must be Sarah Noah Woolfort. Well, I suppose we should bother the happy couple no longer. Well done, Frederica. I see you've inherited your mother's wiles. She always did have a way with men. Too bad you also inherited her hair. That sickly pink makes me want a wretch. Pray forgive my cousins, Lord Serenoa. And forgive me if I was out of line. Those two... they were... Phallus and Erika Esfrost. Full brother and sister to Archduke Gustadolf. And my half-siblings. I see. Well, I hope that we can all come together for the sake of our grand endeavor. My honored guests, I am pleased to announce that operations at the Grand Norzelian Mines have commenced in earnest. The Earth has yielded treasures more magnificent than even we had anticipated. May the mines endure for many years. It's a prosperity for all of our nations. Well said. With Hyzant's salt and capital, Esfrost's Udi, and Glenbrook's raw materials and manpower, our realm's future is bright indeed. It is a partnership on three pillars, each bearing equal weight. We owe a debt of gratitude to all who have supported this adventure. A particular note is Lord Dragan, whose knowledge has allowed us to so swiftly see our labor bear fruit. And House Wolfort, whose meeting has proved invaluable in forming this accord. May their deeds be forever remembered by history. Let us raise our cups and toast to their health and happiness. Huzzah! Huzzah! Lord Sarah Noah's smiling from ear to ear. Shame his parents couldn't be here to see this. Do not get too swept away in the moment, Erador. We have a job here, and the day has only begun. Now that the formalities are done with, let the festivities begin. Step forward, Sir Maxwell. So, is the one they call the Dawn Spear. Glenbrook's fiercest warrior. They say he is never in defeat. I would take the measure of this man. Now that the foundations for peace have been laid, let us be stifled by rigid formality no longer. There is a tourney to be had, after all. A much more attaining event than my endless speeches. <laughs> hear, 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 hear. Will any among you prove a match for our Sir Maxwell, the champion of our previous challenge? I very much look forward to finding out. Until then, help yourselves to our hospitality and our wine. Eat, drink, and be merry. It shall not be long until final preparations are complete. Our time is nigh, Sarah Noah. Ah, 
but I forget myself. Our time is nigh, Lord Wolfort. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you. But living up to the hill will be no easy task. You'll do your father proud, I'm sure. Unlike some of us. Have more faith in yourself, my friend. After all, you too shoulder the future of the kingdom. I wonder. I wonder if Glenbrook will truly flourish thanks to anything I do. Of course it It already has. Besides, House Wolfort is at your back. My apologies. And thank you. I shall strive to be worthy of your support. You two are quite the pair, aren't you? Fast friends from the day we met. And you are? Apologies for not introducing you sooner. This is Huet of the Kingsguard. I am tasked with keeping His Highness safe, though he often seems to resent it. Tis a pleasure to meet you, Lord Wolfwart. Ah, Prince Roland has told me much about you. I can see he is in good hands. I shall see that it is so, my lord. Now let us begin our preparations. Today we take the field, and today, Today, we claim victory. The combatants have arrived, and the stage has been set. Let us introduce the Dians, who will fight for the glory of their nations. Fighting for the honor of the Grand Duchy of Esfrost, General Avlora. Fighting for the honor of the Holy State of Hyzant, Minister Exham Marshall. Fighting for the honor of the Kingdom of Glenbrook, House Wolfort. And last but not least, the victor of our previous turn, Sir Maxwell the Donspear. Hurrah! Hurrah! The Wolfort Lordling is here in his father's stead, I see. Lord Simon's heroics on the battlefield are the stuff of legend. But they couldn't match swords with him today. You will match swords with me. I promise to make it every bit as exhilarating as father would. You have his spirit, if nothing else. Indeed. I look forward to crossing swords with you. The combatants have assembled. Now, let the battle begin! I shall announce our first pairing, as chosen by Locks. Minister Exham and Lord Walfort, make ready for combat! To think they'd get the better of us! Your father taught you well. Wield that great sword with skill beyond your years. Well fought. The day is yours. Victory goes to House Wolfort! Our next bout shall be between General Avlora and Sir Maxwell. May glory go to the victor. Stand back. This one is mine. <laughs> Very well. I accept your challenge. <laughs> Whoever taught you, they taught you well. Well, something tells you surpassed your teacher long ago. Your defense is formidable. As is yours. I yield.
Victory goes to Sir Maxwell. Ah, my hand. I can't feel it. <laughs> so that was General of Laura. I pray never to meet her, Elfield. There will be order given today, young lord of House Woolfort. I would expect nothing less. Huh? Where am I? Ah, you're awake. And none the worse for wear, considering the blow you took from Sir Maxwell. Uh, he was two straws in the end. Today, yes. But let us keep at our training. One day, the students will surpass their master. Let us work hard for that day, my friend. Sarah Noah and his stalwart allies prove their mettle against the realm's fiercest warriors before finally facing Sir Maxwell, victor of the previous tourney. After a hard-fought match, the Dawn Spear emerges victorious once more. Though beaten in the end, Sarah Noah's courageous display impresses itself upon all in attendance. Any doubts concerning House Woolfort's martial might are put to rest. Thus marks an end to the tourney and the festivities as a whole. With the spirit of harmony in their hearts, the delegates of each nation make preparations for their return voyages. Seeing our honored guests off shall be your last lordly duty this day. Now, I remind you. It is not to be taken lightly. Worry not, Benedict. They shall be sent off with all the pomp they deserve. You take to your new role well, Lord Serenoa. As I must now take to my own. Pray, visit me at the mines whenever you have the time. Well, Frederica, may we never meet again. Thank you for such a productive use of our valuable time. I do so love interminable speeches and watching brutes play at war. Truly, the spirit of Glenbrook was on display for all to see. <sighs> oh, but I should watch my tongue. Wouldn't want her to go whimpering to brother. Pay my fool cousin no mind. We work to do. Work more important than any he could hope to be trusted with. I apologize for those two. This was a fruitful day for all in attendance. I am glad to hear you say so, General of Laura. I can't believe we lost. I thought you were supposed to be one of High Greatest Warriors. Our foe was a worthy one. An honor to cross blades again someday. Thank you for your hospitality. Please give my regards to Lord Simon. Of course, Minister. It would soon is gathered. You'll find your boats are laden with a bounty of Glenbrook's finest wares and visuals. King Regna asks that you eat and drink your fill and toast.
to our three nations' newfound alliance. More of that swill you call wine? I suppose I could force myself to partake. Your king honors us with his generosity. We shall present these as offerings to the goddess of salt. The Hierophant, too, will no doubt be overjoyed. Lord Wood, I bring a message from King Regna. He would have you join our guests on their return voyage to serve as their envoy. This is a great honor, my lord. You would represent our nation and speak with the king's voice. If it is his majesty's wish, it is a duty I will gladly accept. But there are two vessels and only one of me. Did King Regna say which of our honored guests I should accompany? Would leave that decision to you, Lord Wilford. Lord Falks, as representative of another of Glenbrook's High Housel, board the ship you do not. And why was House Tellior not given this honor? Last I knew, our kingdom had three High Houses, not two. The mere fact that you whimper those words before us is handsome enough. <sighs> But show at the tourney, Lord Saranoa, you truly are your father's son. The king has seen fit to leave this decision in your hands, and I shall not say his wisdom. A lord must be world well as wise. I trust you will conduct yourself as befits the lord of a high house. Thank you, Sir Maxwell, Lord Folks. The king has entrusted this decision to you, my lord. I suppose you have an idea as to why. He means to test my judgment. He is waiting to see which I choose and for what re- Indeed. We are friendly with both nations now, so neither choice will earn his eye. That said, there is no telling how these relations may change going forward. No doubt, the choice you make will have an effect on our own house's relationship with the nation choose. I understand. This requires careful consideration. Benedict, gather the... Hear their opinions on the matter. Then we consult the scales of conviction. At once, my lord. It seems your first test as Lord has come. Tis no small matter either. Indeed, but I needn't face it alone. I would ask each of you where you think we should go and why. State your case before the scales of conviction. Then we shall decide our destination. We take a vote and the consensus determines our action. Is that it? That is correct. So long as my allies walk by my side, their opinions carry equal weight to mine. Such is the way of House Wolfort. As Lord, I shall bear the weight of consequence for the scale's decision, whatsoever they may be. You are more serious than usual, my friend. He understands what it means to be Lord of his house. Well, I hope you have room for a stowaway, because I'm going to. In secret, of course. I trust the new Lord Wolfort will handle the ponderous negotiations and diplomacy with grace. Your Highness, you cannot be... You may stay ashore if you wish, Hewitt. You know I cannot allow that. If you insist on going, then I shall attend you. Well then, it would seem the matter is settled. There is exactly one coin for each of us. It seems fate has conspired to bring balance to our proceedings. How curious. Curious? I see it as a sign that the heavens approve of my joining you. You are ever the optimist, my friend. Shall we, my lord, one coin, one vote. 
Very well. I would hear each of your thoughts on the matter in turn. Then you'll place your coin upon the scales of conviction and illuminate the road ahead. We have decided. We set sail for Esfrost. Whether or not it proves to be the right choice will depend on our actions. I trust in you all. We are ready to set sail, Lord Patriot. Very good, my lord. When you pay respects to the Archduke, remember that you do so on behalf of our king. Archduke Gustadoff will be pleased that you chose to honor him with a visit. I'm sure he is eager to get to know his new brother-in-law as well. The feeling is mutual, I assure you. Does this mean she is coming back to feel myself getting sick already? That swill they call wine will taste more vile now, I fear. My late, are you sure you wouldn't prefer to stay at Castle Woolfort? Nonsense. I am coming with you. Zara Noah, acting as King Regna's envoy, charts a course down the Norzelia River for the Duchy of Esfrost. Ere long, Serenoa and crew arrive at a massive gate, itself dwarfed by the snow-covered mountains that lie beyond. Awaiting them at Twins Gate, as it is known, is Farag Est, second in power and influence only to the Archduke. Laura, Erica, Thallus, welcome home. I trust the ceremony a fruitful one. Twas my duty as minister to be present. Thank you for having us in your domain, Uncle. The crags are lovely as ever. Hmm. Lord Varog, I present to you Lord Serenoa Wolfort. Come on behalf of King Regna. Ah, the Woolfort boy. Frederica's betrothed, yes? The very same, my lord. I thank you for the warm welcome. The honor is mine, Lord Serenoa. Svarag est at your service. I watch over Twinsgate, the front door of our duchy. Lord Svarag is father to Dragan, and uncle to the Archduke and myself. We did not expect to see you again so soon, Frederica. But I understand wanting to show off your handsome groom-to-be. Uncle, please. You embarrass me. <laughs> Good to see you're still not afraid to your mind. A word of advice, Ed. You do well not to anger her. I shall take your words to heart. It is quite the burden you're undertaking, my friend. Prince Roland, I did not expect you'd be in attendance. It's been quite some time, Lord Svarog, but today I come as an attendant to House Wolfort. A secret visit, then. Say no more. King Regna thanks Lord Dragan for all he has done for the mining effort. His engineering prowess has proved indispensable. As his boasting has no doubt proved intolerable. Forgive the boy, my lord. That said, Rest assured, his goals are sincere. He truly does wish to lead us into a new era. I pray you'll lend him the strength to see that it becomes reality. You have my word. You expect great things from him, then? Against my better instincts, perhaps. 
but such is my lot as the boy's father. But forgive me. No doubt you are weary from your journey. I shall keep you no longer. Archduke Gustadolf awaits you at Ironstone. Then we shall take our leave. Thank you, Lord Svarog. Brother? Where is Roland? I've yet to see him today. And you shan't, for he has left. Took it upon himself to join the mission abroad. He did? I... I see. Again, prioritizing his personal wishes above his station. Is there no end to his selfishness? You haven't any love for him, have you? Love? I would rather think of him as little as humanly possible. How can you say that? He's family. Royal family, and our duty is to the crown above all. Do not look to Roland for inspiration if you wish to carry yourself in a manner befitting your station, dear Cordelia. Archduke of Esfrost, allow me to personally welcome you to my nation. I hear I am addressing the new Lord of House Wolfort, yes? Sarah Noah Wolfort, Your Grace. It is an honor to have an audience with you. On behalf of King Regna and all of Glenbrook, you have our sincere gratitude for your generous contributions to the mining effort. Consider your gratitude accepted. Avlora informs me that you fought well in the tourney. I would much like to see for myself how the legendary Simon's son carries himself in battle. I train twice as hard, yet am not half the warrior he is. It is good that you such effort. I would expect no less for my brother-in-law to be. Norzelia is changing. The time when matters were settled by Blade draws to a close. In the spirit of this age of diplomacy, I would hear your honest thoughts on the Mining Accord. I cannot shake the fear that our visions do not align, and this fragile alliance may not hold. Oh, not the ants expecting from a young lordling on his first journey abroad, but an interesting one, didn't you? Yes, Your Grace. Of course, I do not believe the Accord is doomed to failure. But we must be honest about our differences and use them to push each other forward. Just so. One cannot lead a nation living in a world of naive dream platitudes. I too believe that rivalry is important in order to secure prosperity for all. And rest assured, that I make a formidable rival. Frederica, do not lose sight of your role in all of this. Stand by Serenoa Ops and represent Esfrost with pride and grace. I shall, brother. Prince Roland, as you have come in secret, I will dispense with formalities. I appreciate the consideration, your grace. That said, does King Regna not worry that his younger son visits a foreign land on his own? I am no longer a child, and it is a prince's duty to be worldly. A fine outlook. In that case, I would show you to the archives. It holds countless tomes, from the ancient to the new. I dare say it rivals that of Hyzant's Ministry of Medicine. An intriguing offer, and one I gladly accept. Lord Wolfold, you and your men are free to join us as well. Truly, Your Grace? 
I understand the archives hold many a closely guarded secret. And rest assured, I have no intention of giving those away. But now that we are allies, through mining and marriage alike, a brief tour is more than in order. Beg your pardon, but I heard this is where the salt flows cheap like. Not here it doesn't. Go bother someone else. I'm not asking for my health. Here's an advance. How much do you need? As much as you can spare. I'm good for ten times what I gave you. I'm not to sell you now. Come back tonight, money in hand, to the spot marked here. And I know your face, so don't try anything stupid. You have my word. That looks like the spot on the map, just there. Right then, Sikris, I've got the location for you. This is where they do their dirty work. I knew you were the man for the job. Excellent work, Rudolph. My name's cleared then, yeah? I'll be pardoned? You have my word. That said, our forces are stretched quite thin this evening. We'll need you to assist in apprehending them as well. Risk my life in exchange for a pardon? Are you mad? We need you. These fiends are swindling the poor. Selling them impure salt mixed with all manner of unsavory things. They must be jailed at all costs. Fine. I'll help you bring him in. Glad to hear it. You're too good a man to be branded a criminal. Don't you flatter me after all this. You saw him, didn't you? They don't work alone. An operation like this ain't run by one man. And last I checked, we're only two. We'll assemble reinforcements. What an astounding collection of tomes. The sum of Norzelia's knowledge including volumes thought lost or banned outright in other nations. I did not expect to see so many people in a facility so important. Each one is a scholar conducting important research in their field of expertise. Scholars? All of them? Brother gives no thought to bound gender or social status during the selection process. All in Esfrost are given equal opportunity, provided they show desire and aptitude. Of course, we prize ability above all else. So long as use results, they are free to research as they please. Most open-minded approach. Indeed. I see now how Esfrost arrives at its marvels of engineering. This portion contains the collected writings on metallurgy and our nation's rich history with iron. Our ancestors were but a tribe of impoverished hunters until the man who would become our first Archduke discovered iron. Iron changed our lives. It transformed the way we worked, farmed, built, and fought. The history of iron is the history of Esfrost. It is our pride and joy, the engine that drives us. My father told us that Esfros is made of iron. That neither its people nor weapons would bend. <laughs> Just so, Prince Roland. Your Grace. Forgive me the interruption. I have unfortunate news regarding the issue of which we spoke. 
So you require reinforcements. Say no more. Then there was the matter of the pardon. On which my thinking has not changed. We will speak no more of this. Understood. Honored guests, I would consult with you on an important matter. This is Sikris, commander of Esros Constabulary. Has something happened? We have discovered an illicit salt trade operating within our borders. Yet we lack, at the moment, the manpower to address it. Might we have your assistance in apprehending the scoff laws? Why, I would... Lord Saranoa, matters of salt are fraught. I advise you not to engage without a clear strategy. I understand it is a complex issue. Needless to say, I would not force this upon you. Uh, sounds simple to me. Just bringing some criminals to justice, yeah? I say aye, my lord. I concur. What better way to thank his grace for a tour of the archives? Then it is settled. We shall help you. I could not be more thankful. Sikris, brief our friends on the situation. Of course, Your Grace. Come, I shall show you to the garrison. I'm honored to have House Wolford fight at our side. As I am happy to be of service. Now then, what is the situation? Eisen's successive salt taxes have given rise to an illicit trade that plagues the duchy. I have heard tell that the tariffs are exorbitant, but I have not heard a price. Let it suffice to say that the cost of a single handful of salt could feed a family for a month. Good heavens. As such, demand for salt, even impure or stolen, is nigh on infinite. A crime, to be sure, but a necessary evil for the poor. Tight regulation risks drawing their ire. Perhaps we should not have agreed to this so readily. Indeed, the Archduke has sharp mind and a silver tongue. My brother may appear generous and open-minded, but one should never feel too safe around him. I was too eager, my lord. And for that, apologize. I was the one who agreed. Fraud as the matter is, I could not refuse the Archduke to his face. Illicit salt trade would threaten the salt revenue on which the duchy depends. Thus, they feel they must be, correct? Precisely. We understand the plight of the people without question. On matters of maintaining order, however, we cannot waver, lest seams in the social fabric be rent asunder. I understand the circumstances and wish to reiterate that you have our support. How would you employ us? Our spy has already discovered where the smugglers operate. A transaction is to occur tonight. We shall make a move once our spy lures the smugglers into the open. Understood. Then we shall familiarize ourselves with the town by nightfall. That's the bell at Ironstone. It's midnight. The exchange is about to take place. We'll make ourselves known once the smugglers have assembled. Might be one of the smugglers there. No, that's Rudolph, a spy of ours. He helped us uncover this operation. A reformed salt smuggler himself. Whom you now employ as an informant. Few would understand the landscape better than someone on the inside. Most genius. That was part of my reasoning. But there is more to it. His intentions were noble even as his actions broke the law. He's not 
At his core, an evil man, I say that as an officer whose instincts were honed over many an arrest. Which is why I personally selected him to be my eyes and ears. Hmm. The smugglers are here, and they come in numbers. As frosty soldiers? What are they doing here? Corrupted by the siren song of money in the black salt market, no doubt. Would it were not so. But my eyes do not deceive me. The fight will not be easy. How shall we proceed? This cannot be allowed to continue. If that means bloodshed, then so be it. Understood. Then we make our move. Who are you? This is the constabulary. Lay down your arms and come quietly if you value your lives. A trap! Kill them all! Fell the soldiers and give chase. Let them escape. Rudolph, you're to follow his orders. And just who is he exactly? Sereno Wolford of Glenbrook. The Archduke personally requested my help. What? The young lord of House Wolford? Look, I'm grateful for the help. But don't muck it up, yeah? My good name hangs in the balance. We're in your debt. We may never have apprehended the smugglers if not for you. Aye, that's another worry off your back. And a criminal charge off mine, yeah? His Grace has granted your pardon. On the condition of your exile. If he can't have me in jail, he wants me out of Asfrost. Is that it? Forgive me. It's not the choice I would have made. But the Archduke is a stubborn man. Don't worry. The feeling's mutual. Never had any love for this place, even if it's all I've known. Got nowhere to go either, mind you. But I'll find my way somewhere. Well, if you've truly nowhere to go, what would you say to serving House Wolfort? Hmm? You're the lord of your house, aren't you? And you'd just welcome a criminal like me into your ranks? You've been pardoned, have you not? That makes you as worthy as any other. Your wit and muscle would be a boon to the house, and I would be grateful for you, sir. What more could you ask for, Rudolph? You can make a new life for yourself at House Wolford. I'm sure of it. Aye, I'm sure I can. Right then, Lord Saranoa, I thank you for your kindness. Welcome to House Wolford, Rudolph. Thallus, how does Dragan fare? As blustery and boastful as ever, brother. He is simply beside himself that his contributions to the mine have been recognized. So he has achieved a measure of success. Perhaps I underestimated him. What concern is he of ours? He is Farag's son and of thinner blood. We are not Glenbrook or Hyzant, Thallus. In Esfrost, a man is judged for his deeds, not his pedigree. And yet you have appointed me Prime Minister, have you not? I have given you an opportunity, brother. Do not be mistaken. If you wish to keep your position, prove to me you are deserving of it. Understood, brother mine. Dear brother, do with Thallus as you please, but I bid you be wary of Dragan and Svarog. I've reason to believe they've designs on higher seats. If they mean to overthrow me, then let them try. I shall relish the opportunity to crush them.
I bid you safe passage home, Lord Wolford. Many thanks for the send-off. Pray relay my gratitude to the Archduke as well. I shall. And do take care of our friend Rudolph here, who I trust will not be causing you any trouble. Treating me like a naughty child right to the end. Anyhow, you take care of yourself, Sikris. <sighs> and with that, I must be off till we meet again. We should be on our way as well. No one's left anything behind. Not I. I even purchased a souvenir or two to bring home. That's all well and good. But once we reach home, it'll be wedding preparations for you. Indeed. The ceremony fast approaches. Truth be told, I'm more than nervous. Oh dear. Is that so? And how are you feeling, Lord Serenoa? bit nervous too, of course, but that is easily outweighed by my excitement. <laughs> as well it should be. It shall be a celebration for the ages. Isn't that right, Benedict? Uh, yes, of course. What troubles you, Benedict? You sound distracted. Nothing about the ceremony, I assure you. This journey has simply proven a sobering reminder that salt remains a complex issue in our realm. And yet despite it, we make strides toward peace. The Binding Accord is proof enough of that. Roland is right. We can only do what we can to ease tensions and resolve matters peacefully. A duty which requires constant vigilance. His diplomatic visit as Lord of the House complete, Serenoa returns to the Wolfort Domain. Safely within Glenbrook, Roland and Huet retire to Whiteholm in the Crown City. Alas, there is no time for rest in House Wolfort, as Serenoa soon finds himself swept up in preparations for his wedding to Frederica. Dragan, meanwhile, presides over the blasting of a new tunnel at the Grand Norzellian Mines. That should be the end of that bothersome bedrock. Investigate it at once. What in the name of iron? What is it? Do we require more explosives? No, Lord Dragan. You best come see for yourself. What the? It couldn't be. That settles the wedding program, then. We still must decide upon the wedding dress, however. Not we, Benedict. Surely the lady herself must decide. What do you desire, Frederica? I... Well... Hadn't you mentioned wanting to dress in the Roselle custom for the ceremony? Then you'd best ask the Roselle about that. There's a Roselle villa in the domain. I'm sure they'd make you a dress, if you asked. But what of the other nations in attendance? 
Surely Hyzant would not look kindly upon it. Lord Simon, is it true that you assisted the Rizal who fled Hyzant during the war, and that you then granted them asylum here? Aye, that is how the Roselle came to live within our domain. It was a source of great tension, but in the end, Lord Simon's perseverance prevailed, and a group of Roselle found new homes here. To this day, the Holy State demands they be returned to Hyzant, citing their goddess's teachings as justification. The roots of the conflict run. Nevertheless, it is our duty to protect those who we want to take under our wing. Should you choose to dress in the Rosellan custom, we shall stand behind you every step of the way. Is that so? I see not how I could refuse such a kindness. I shall accompany you to the village. To tell that I have never been there myself. It would be a good opportunity to get to know them to strengthen our bonds. As is your duty, my son. Roselle and custom it is, then. Let us at once to make the request. Aye, all of us. Ooh, I can't wait to see what they come up with. Greetings and welcome, Lord Serenoa and Lady Frederica. My name. I bid you welcome on behalf of Roselle. And congratulations on your engagement, as well as assuming lordship of your house. You have my gratitude. We hope you will continue to lend your support to House Wolfort. You have my word. I owe your Lord Father a great debt. Though, even were that not the case, you are engaged to one of our own and Lady Frederica. Few things could bring us more joy. We shall make the finest dress you have ever seen. On that subject, I have one humble request. I would like to incorporate this pendant into the design. The pendant you are never without. Tis one of a kind, left to me by my late mother. She was one of the Rosellan refugees who fled Hyzant during the war and found her way to Asfrost. In a twist of fate, she fell in love with former Archduke, and thus was I born. In crit, of course. After I was born, she was sent back to Hyzant, where she met her end. I see why it never leaves you. Pray fashion the dress in this pendant's image. It shall be done, my lord. Let us delay no further. Lady Frederica, please step inside, that we may take your measurements. Thank you kindly. The measurements may take some time, Lord Serenoa. Perhaps you'd care to take a stroll and see the village while you wait. I'd very much like that. Thank you. Do you understand just how dangerous it is for a young prince to go gallivanting off on a whim? Punish me if you will. But if I hadn't gone gallivanting, I never would have learned the state of things outside our own kingdom. Oh? Well, if you are so interested in international affairs, then I have a fitting role for you to play. You will oversee the Grand Norzelian Mines. Father! It would be a privilege. I fear that punishment would provoke no reflection, and so I would rather put your energies to work for the kingdom. I shan't let you down, father. I am not blind to your feelings, my son. I understand that my methods are you. Nevertheless, I ask that you stay out of harm's way and give me no reason to worry. Of course. 
Mining is grueling, thankless work. Show the miners the appreciation they deserve. I shall. You have my word. The necessary provisions have been arranged, Your Highness. You are to deliver them to Dragan. Father, may I bring Sarah, rather, Lord Wolfort? It is his job to oversee the operation, after all. And his closeness with Dragan may engender goodwill. I know you trust him a great deal, Roland. But I would remind you that his betrothal now binds him to Esfrost. You would do well to be wary of any move he or his house might make. So you share Franny's views on the matter. Nevertheless, Sarah Noah is a friend I could never hope to replace. A friend I trust no matter your opinion of him. Concerning words, Your Highness, House Wolford must be sub the same scrutiny as any other. <sighs> Roland. Bring these tidings to Gustadolf at once. Is that everyone? Good. I have important news for all of you. What you see before you is to be seized by the Duchy of Esfrost. You shall not speak of this beyond those in present company. Any who do will be punished to the fullest extent of the law. But... Lord Dragan... Are not the resources we mine destined to be shared among nations? This matter is not up for debate. A discovery of this magnitude could reshape all of Norzelia. And so I ask this of you. Stand with me, as I lead this great realm into a new era. You are not giving us these orders. I shall do exactly as you say. I thank you. I have already sent the Archduke a letter informing him of our find. When I am appointed Prime Minister, I promise to reward you all handsomely for delivering me such a boon. You are to be Prime Minister? Or Ambassador to Glenbrook, perhaps. Time will tell. Either way, with this I shall make mark and do what neither father nor Gustadolf ever could. What news from Dragan, dear brother? I never dreamt our hypothesis would prove true. So you take him at his word? I have no choice. The spy I sent to shadow him corroborates his report. And? What are his demands? He wishes to be named Prime Minister in exchange for secreting it away to Esfrost. Negotiations with Glenbrook are in the offing, should I refuse. So he means to threaten you? He is stronger than I believed him to be. Certainly what he has uncovered is worth the price he asks. What would you do, were you me? Keep the secret safe, naturally. Did you not send a spy for this very reason? Surely expected this would happen. I did, and they have been issued emergency orders. Then leave the rest to me. I shall depart at once. How fortunate I am to have a brother who knows me so well. Ah, Dragan. You will rue the day you dared place Glenbrook beside me on the scales of your feeble judgment. I hand down the orders. Yield or be crushed beneath my heel. The dress measurements are finished at last. I applaud your patience. Is it exactly as you hoped? It is indeed. I can hardly wait to see it finished. I am glad to hear it. There you are. 
Prince Roland. And Huet, besides, what brings you here? We were looking for you. We inquired around Castle Wolfort and heard you all had come here. Has something happened? Father has asked me to keep watch over the mines. Won't you join me? You scarcely need to ask, of course. A wise course of action, seeing as you will be overseeing the mining operations. And we can present Dragan with the gifts we procured abroad. A fine opportunity to get to know the man better. He is quite talented, is he not? He is a man with grand visions for the future, that much is certain. I shall tell you more along the way. Then let us waste not one moment more. To the mines! I'll have the dress ready in time for the ceremony, my lord. You have my thanks, Jerome. Sarah Noah and Frederica journey to the Rosellen village so she may be fitted for her wedding gown. The young lord gains an unexpected moment of quietude while he waits. However, Roland soon arrives with orders from King Regna to inspect the Grand Norzellian Mines, where Dragan has made great progress. How will Gusadolf respond to my offer? I should think there's but one logical answer. Should he refuse for some reason, I will need Father's aid. I must apprise him of the situation. Lord Dragan, Prince Roland is here. Crown City. What's this? Prince Roland and my friends of House Wart. To what do I owe the honor? Apologies for the sudden nature of our visit, Dragan. I have come on Father's order for our sincere gratitude, as well as to observe the mining operation. Splendid! The miners will no doubt be heartened by Your Highness's presence. Does the mining continue apace? Indeed it does. There are no problems to report. And what of your trip abroad, Lord Saranoa? It was most enlightening indeed. We even brought something for you. I do hope it's to your liking. Authentic as frosty cheese. One of my favorites. We thought you might be in need of a taste of your homeland after so much time away. I have visions of this cheese in my sleep. You have no idea how happy this makes me. It is enough to see you happy. I am glad our deliberations were not in vain. Dragan. I believe it was you who said the future is in the hands of the ardent youth. We are of like mind. Let us shape the future together. Indeed, that future is close at hand. I suspect we will reach across the border and ask for your cooperation in due course. And I shall gladly assent. Yes, we eagerly await your offer. Now then, I was thinking I might examine the quarry. Wait, your highness! One of the tunnels caved in but a few days ago. I would advise against entering just now. Did you not assure us moments ago that the mining continues apace? The miners are working to repair the damage as we speak. It is simply too soon to allow you inside. Was it caused by a blast? It was, in fact. We were perhaps a bit overzealous in attempting to remove some of the bedrock. I'd no idea your explosives were so powerful. How do you make them, anyway? I would love to tell you, Your Highness, but I'm afraid we must keep some of our secrets. What I can say is that salt is a vital ingredient. Surely you jest. I thought you'd be surprised. I could scarcely believe it myself at first. A gargantuan tome in the archives opened my eyes to the many uses for salt beyond seasoning our daily dishes. And now I pass what I've learned to you, Lord Zeranoa, as a token of my gratitude for your visit.
The power of salt. Tis a compendium of my research on the uses of salt. I encourage you to peruse it at your leisure. I most certainly shall. Tis a most valuable gift. Fascinating indeed. I too would like to read it when you are through, my lord. I look forward to hearing your impressions. At any rate, I see the sun hangs low. Shall we save a tour of the mine for the morrow? Yes, perhaps that would be best. Yes, of course. I shall prepare entertainment and lodgings for your party at once. No word from below, you say? They haven't tried to flee, have they? No, sir. I've not seen a single soul emerge from the mine. Very well, then. I shall make contact with them myself. Was that? It came from within. What is the meaning of this? This frosty soldiers. Why are they at the mines? No. Did he see through my plot? Clear the mine. Leave no survivors. So this is how they respond. Those dogs! What is the meaning of this? Why is Esfrost attacking the mines? Are they gonna melt down their own forges next? Incomprehensible. The miners have all been slain. How? How did it come to this? Lord Dragan, you know something of this, do you not? You've nothing left to hide. Talk. I underestimated him. I never thought he would go this far. Dragan! No! There are survivors. How dare you! Ugh. Stay with me, Trigan. Be strong. Forgive me. Had I but spoken the truth, it would not have come to this. I thought, at last, I could step out of their shadow. That I had the upper hand. Father. Father. Forgive me. Trigan! No! What in the world is happening? We can do not to set this right, my lord. Let us inform the king at once. Hail! Is Prince Roland among you? I have a message. Speak it now. Whitehome Castle is under attack, your highness. Tis the Esfrosty army. What in the... Damn it all! The hell is going on? Control yourself. At any rate, we must confirm exactly what has happened. Let us return to the kingdom. Frederica, my heart aches for you, but... We've no time. I know. I am with you. Would this did not fall to you, but alas. See to it the Dragan receives a proper burial. Yes, my lord. Take care. The army has the Crown City surrounded. Ah, a survivor. Kill him. There you are, fair Dragan. What a pity that your dreams of being Prime Minister shall be nothing more than that. Tell me, does it pain you? <laughs>
Lord Thallus, a word. The entire regiment of assassins have fallen as well. This bodes ill. It matters not, so long as the miners have been slaughtered. Saves us the trouble of having to silence them. But, my lord... Enough. Dispose of our dead and be done with it. My brother will wish to hear that we did. Aye, my lord. Shall we bury Lord Dragan as well? No. Leave him to rot, or fill the belly of some mangy cur. That night, Esfrost invades Glenbrook without warning. The attack is all the more shocking coming on the eve of the two nations' grand new mining venture. The duchy easily rushes into the Crown City, taking advantage of Glenbrook's unprepared defenses. Caught unawares by the sudden assault, Glenbrook's scattered forces can do nothing to fend off the invaders. Sarah Noah and his retinue rush from the mines to King Regna's aid, slipping past the siege into Whiteholm Castle via the secret passage known only to Prince Roland. march against us. This is a flagrant breach of the treaty. Levy a complaint against Archduke Gustadolf immediately. I fear we're past the time for formal complaints, Your Highness. We can hold them no longer. We must inform His Majesty at once. Of course. My father and Cordelia must be protected at all costs. invaded the Crown City by night! Preposterous! Gustadolf, what is that bastard scheming? Lord Simo, I bring word from King Regna. He says, should the Crown fall, Glenbrook is in your hands. Your Majesty. Fetch my armor! I march to the Crown's aid! Please, my lord. At least wait for Lord Serano and his retinue to return. Out of my way! I pledge my loyalty to his majesty, and it's a vow I intend to... No. Oh. Uh. Your heart, my lord! Summon a healer, quickly! Damn it! Death cannot take me yet! Serano, Benedict! Crown City is under attack? By whom? Estrost, it appears. They say the Archduke himself leads the charge. Gustadolf, then this will be no mere skirmish. What shall we do, my lord? Protecting the royal family is House Warfort's duty. Let's bide our time and see how they fare. You would not make for the capital, my lord? Our kingdom's very fate hangs in the balance. Which is all the more reason why we must not act rashly. 
Estros is too strong a foe for House Teliar to face on our own. For now, tighten our defenses and bring me what information you can. Yes, my lord. Secret tunnels beneath the castle. Who'd have thought? None but the royal family knew of this secret. They were built as a last resort, should the worst come to pass. Doesn't appear anyone else has been down here before us. Father must still be within the castle. Along with a host of enemy soldiers, they appear to have breached the gates. It truly is Esfrost. But I do not understand why. We will seek understanding later. For now, we must protect His Majesty and the Royal Family. Aye. We'll smuggle them to safety one way or another. We must take care. The castle has fallen into our enemy's hands. Enemy soldiers! We've been seen. It's Prince Roland. The Archduke himself ordered us to kill all with royal blood. You ain't getting out of here alive. The Archduke ordered what? My brother would order no such thing. Glenbrook and Esfrost were to be allies. Why does the Archduke betray us? That's rich. Coming from a bunch of traitor bastards. Glenbrook broke the treaty first. We've every right to seek retribution. What? We didn't know such thing. That's right. I've heard enough of your lies. Brace yourselves for battle, my friends. has already been here. Damn them! Please, please let my family be safe. What was that? It came from the throne room. They must have broken down the doors. We must hurry. Why, brother? Why are you doing this? Frost's forces have breached the once proud walls of Whiteholm, and now overrun its majestic halls, leaving only death and destruction in their wake. Like bloodthirsty beasts, they search, eager to carry out Archduke Gustadolf's orders to kill any member of the royal family on sight. With the very future of the kingdom hanging in the balance, Serenoa hurries to the throne room as fast as his legs can carry him. such thing, my princess. Not so long as I draw breath. Cease the vainglorious theatrics. The city is mine now. 
and not a soul loyal to his grace still lives. You are all that remains. Not even the Dawn Spear can hope to triumph against such odds. You talk and talk, but do you have the courage to test your words? This is folly, Gustadolf. What madness has possessed you? Is this how you would take revenge for what befell your father? Nothing so petty as that, Ragna. The war and all its atrocities should remain buried in the past. Then what drives you to commit new ones? To tear down the future we labored so long to achieve? Do you think Hyzant will stand idly by while Glenbrook burns? I shudder to think what ends you hope to achieve by such vile means. <laughs> you always did lack imagination. However, not even I foresaw the opportunity this foolish partnership would afford me. As for Hyzant, she shall meet the same fate as your beloved kingdom before long. Whatever your aims may be, you'll never... Father! Are you hurt? Roland? Brother? You imbecile! Why do you return? Be grateful to see me for once. I wasn't about to leave you to these wolves. You stone-headed brat. If it isn't my dear Frederica and her newly betrothed, and you've brought friends. Stand down at once. On the honor of House Wolfort, we shall not let the royal family come to harm. Sarah Noah of House Wolfort, was it? Or is it Lord Wolfort now? Clearly you take after your father. It was no small task to make it this far. And you must be Archduke Gustadolf. Brother, what is the meaning of this? I am sorry for forcing this unpleasant scene upon you, Frederica. I had to take action. Sooner than anticipated. Action? What do you... Listen well. I, Gustadolf Esfrost, do hereby condemn the King of Glenbrook and his agents for their treacherous deeds. Scheming to claim the riches of the Grand Norzellian Mines as their own, they slaughtered my dear cousin Dragan in cold blood. For this most heinous crime, and for shattering the trust between our nations out of malice, I declare their punishment must be swift and final. So this is the lie you would weave. What mummery is this? Dragan was killed by... Silence, my lord. Benedict? I commend you for delivering the traitorous Prince Roland to me. He too must answer for his crimes. Hand him over, and House Wolfort may yet see itself through this unscathed. You are my dear sister's husband-to-be. Bend the knee, and no harm shall befall you. I will do no such thing. We won't be party to your treachery. Your father was ever a thorn in my side. You seem intent on repeating that history. However, I fear you will not live long enough to accomplish it. General of Laura, kill them all. Yes, my lord. Stop! I won't let you! Sir Maxwell, leave me! Take Roland to safety! <sighs> yes, my lord. My prince, with me! I can't leave them! Step aside, Sir Maxwell! My lord, we must flee at once! But his grace... Roland! Lord Wolfhart! There is no saving me. The future of Glenbrook lies in your hands now. Father! My prince, follow us! But I... Damn it all! After them. You would once again see Norzelia bathed in blood, Gustadolf? Truly, you are lost. This land has long been lost, Regna. But it need be no longer. This is where Sir Maxwell would have us wait. He is readying the boat for our escape as we speak. A wise decision. No doubt the river is our only hope of getting out of the city alive. 
The streets are overrun with S. Frosty soldiers. Our foe no doubt searches for us on the other side of this very gate. Then we wait here and pray for Sir Maxwell's swift return. Father. Frenny. Cordelia. And what is she doing with us? She's with the enemy! What? No! I, I had no idea! Lies! It was your own brother that attacked the city! If I had any idea he was planning such atrocities, I would have stopped him. He's... I know not what's possessed him. My lady speaks the truth. We are as shocked and torn by this turn of events as you. Enough, Hewitt! We can't be clawing at each other's throats with the S. Frosty army looking to hunt us down like dogs. My emotions got the better of me for a moment. Forgive me. Hewitt means no ill, my lady. Her fellow members of the King's Guard were slain before her eyes. For now, let us focus on the present. Prince Roland's safety and escape are our main concerns. Of course. These are trying times, but we mustn't let emotions cloud our judgment. Benedict, you stopped me from speaking the truth of Dragan's death. To what end? Gustadolf would frame Glenbrook for Lord Dragan's murder and claim it as pretext for his invasion. If he knew we witnessed the truth, our heads would already be on pikes. It would seem he still intends to put them there because you spat in the face of his demands. What we know could expose his claims as the treacherous lies they are. If it came to light that Gusadolf orchestrated his own cousin's murder, no one would dare stand by his side. Indeed, however, words have little substance on their own, especially when weighed against the power and influence the Archduke commands. Your truth would be taken as the pathetic ramblings of a desperate man. Once again, your wisdom makes me feel the fool. No, we are all fumbling through these dark times. You spoke and acted as the Lord of House Wolfort, and did so admirably. And yet my actions have put everyone in danger. Father would have known better. Let us look forward, my lord, not back. There are truths yet cloaked in the shadows. We must survive and see them brought to light, for these truths shall be the weapons by which we lay S. Frost low. Thank you, Benedict. I promise to do all in my power to see us through this safely, every last one of us. I know you will, my lord. Let us await Sir Maxwell's arrival. My lord, please reconsider. S. Frost's numbers are overwhelming. We would only be sending our men to their doom. I will not stand idly by as the capital burns. Move, you fool. I'll go by myself if I must. Make that bastard Gustadolf remember how true my aim is. It's too late, my lord. Whiteholm has fallen and the capital has been taken. Damn it all. Do His Majesty and the royal family still live? There is no news, my lord. Heavens be good. A dream of peace so soon dashed asunder. And under my watch. Your Majesty, pray live long enough that I might atone for my failure in person. My lord, I fear there are other concerns. The S. Frosty army may not stop at the capital. Yes, the three high houses might still unite against them. We must prepare for the worst. Raise the alarm. It's time to muster our defenses. House Fox will not surrender without a fight. My prince, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. I've managed to procure a boat for our escape. It should arrive anon. Thank you, Sir Maxwell. Would that I could have done more. 
You did well to stand against Gustadolf. Your father would have been proud to see it. Let's save the pleasantries until we're through the gate, huh? Everyone ready? We are. Open the gates, Arador. Whatever you say, my lord. Here's hoping we can make it through without those bastards on the shore noticing. Over there! Ah, there's too many of them. We need to turn back. Give it up! There's nowhere to run! Damn it! They shut us in! Is this it? If this is where I fall, I'm taking these S Frosty bastards with me! Don't be so quick to throw your life away, my prince. Yes, we haven't lost hope yet. The boat will arrive shortly. We only need to fend them off till then. Can we do that? I fail to see why not, if you lend us your strength, that is. As if I would do aught else. Form around the prince. Protect him. The prince is on the bridge! Seize him! They pour from the castle like rats. I shall defend the rear. The boat arrives. Come, with speed. Prince Roland, will you leave your brother unavenged? You! Go. Leave this place. The Archduke will be content with your father's head. Never. S. Ross will answer for its crimes today. Your Highness! A shame. You might have lived a long life. So long as I stand, you'll do him no harm. Sir Maxwell! My prince, you are responsible for more than just your own life now. You are a leader, and must be the beacon others look to when the night is darkest. My friends of House Wolfort, I leave Prince Roland in your care. Let me go! Release him to me, and there may be mercy for you yet, Maxwell. Tis you who should be seeking mercy. Must you do this? Very well. Shows what they can do when the stakes are so trifling. I could not have said it better myself. How do you still stand? You were this realm's fiercest warrior, Dawn Spear. But today your sun sets, and a new age begins.
And so it was that the once proud kingdom of Glenbrook did fall. Esfrost seized control of the Crown City, threatening to bring the surrounding domains under its iron yoke. Now the Archduke's army marches upon House Walford's stronghold, where Prince Roland is being sheltered by his loyal friends and allies. Your most honorable siblings, Lord Thallus and Lady Erica, have arrived, my lord. Thank you for the escort. You may go now. If there is anything else that you require, anything at all, you need but say the word. In that case, I would have a bottle of the realm's finest wine and a serving of fresh fruit delivered to my quarters. But of course, milady, I shall have the servants fetch it at once. Ever eager to please, isn't he? I believe the word you're looking for is... sycophant. Congratulations on bringing Glenbrook to its knees, brother. It's a thing of beauty, what you've accomplished. I trust you're already seeing to that fuss outside the castle walls? Of course. The other domains are putting up little in the way of resistance. Lord Tellior trembles in his seat within the stronghold, and Lord Fox was oblivious to what was happening until it was far too late. How easily the three high houses of Glenbrook break under your iron boot, brother. Wolford is the last to hold out. But a Vlora will deal with them. Prince Roland will be in our hands before long. <sighs> Speaking of royalty, brother, I would have thought Cordelia would be dead or rotting in jail. Yet here she sits on the throne. She looks less a vanquished princess and more a queen. That is precisely what I would have her be. Whatever do you mean? Once things have calmed, I shall assume guardianship over her, and have her crowned. <gasps> A few days hence, Regna will be executed. I've already informed Patriot as much. So the wise and benevolent King Regna meets his end at last. <laughs> Father! Subjects of Glenbrook, I am Gustadolf, Archduke and High Commander of the Grand Duchy of Esfrost. Hear my words. The sins King Regna has committed against us, and against you, his own people, are grievous indeed. What has he done to us? <sighs> Three decades have passed since the end of the war. In the years since, we have all done what we can to rebuild our nations. The opening of the Grand Norzelian Mines was to be the dawn of a new age. An age where our three nations would work together for the peace and prosperity of all. But King Regna spat in the face of that glorious dream. As our engineers worked tirelessly to put success within reach, your King Regna schemed in the shadows to seize control of the mine for his own profit. And when Dragan Esfrost, my dear cousin, and the man tasked with overseeing the mine's operations became aware of this plot, King Regna had him assassinated in cold blood. In doing so, he betrayed not only my own nation and the holy state of Hyzant, but you as well. 
the very people who were to share in the wealth the mine would bring. And so we were left with no choice but to march on Whiteholm Castle and put an end to Regna's treachery by force. Our actions were born of a righteous duty to avenge Dragan's murder and this odious betrayal of this historic accord between our nations. What say you, King Regna? Do you deny these charges against you? <sighs> I do not. But I beg of you, spare my children. Subjects of Glenbrook, your traitor king admits his guilt before you. The punishment for these crimes is death. Off with his head! Roland, Cordelia. The future of our kingdom is in your hands now. Just days after the fall of the Crown City, King Regna of Glenbrook is beheaded before his subjects. The death of this kind and benevolent monarch plunges the realm into confusion and chaos. With the king perishes an all-too-short-lived era of peace, and in its place, one of bloodshed and turmoil. Minister Sorsley. What is it this time, Booker? We've just received word that S. Frost has launched a surprise invasion of Glenbrook. Whiteholm burns as we speak. What's this? The Crown City has fallen. King Regna was beheaded, and it is said Crown Prince Franny also perished in the fray. Prince Roland has fled to the domain of House Woolfort, with the Grand Duchy's army in close pursuit. Goddess forbid. What could the Archduke be plotting? And what did the others think of the manor? At any rate, I must speak with the Hierophant at once. Minister, if I may assuage you, I propose that perhaps this situation may yet play to House End's benefit. Our benefit, you say? Indeed. Indeed, you may have the right of it. My dear Booker, whatever would House End do without you? Send a bird to the palace. Tell them that the Holy One's faithful servant Sorsley would humbly beg an audience. At once, Master. Your Majesty, House Fox has failed you. I have failed you! Hi, House! Damn it all! When you needed us most, we were not there to answer the call. How did we not see what they were plotting? How did we not know to go to your aid? Cursing our fate will not bring you back to us. We must focus our efforts on the one who might yet save Glenbrook from downfall. We must protect Prince Roland with our lives. <sighs> Whatever is House Telior to do, with King Regna gone, we must find a way to preserve ourselves. Landroy, that proud fool. 
will no doubt fight to the bitter end. But House Fox alone is no match for the Grand Duchy. Uh, yet if House Wolford were to fight at their side, they say Prince Roland is in Wolford's charge. If this is true, there's a good chance they will join the fray. Or will they? The Wolforts may choose to ransom the Prince to Esfrost in return for amnesty for their own domain. If it comes to that, Esfrost will either kill the Prince and Princess, or use them as their pawns, and Glenbrook will fall. Bending the knee to Esfrost may be our only hope if we are to live to see tomorrow. It would seem things have calmed outside the castle walls. What is to become of us now? Word has it the Kingsguard's been slaughtered to the last man. We must flee while we have our lives. If they meant to kill ordinary folk like us, wouldn't they have done so already? Even as frosty dogs have some honor then. Who'd have thought? Anyway... There's no point fighting. What'll be, will be. Our people seem less resentful of Esfrost than I would have expected. No doubt due to the Archduke's decision to focus their attack on the castle and leave the town itself unscathed. So, the common folk won't be a problem. That just leaves the matter of the royal family. His Grace and the Crown Prince have been dealt with, and Princess Cordelia has been brought to heel. Prince Roland is the only one unaccounted for, but the men I arranged for hunt him down as we speak. Word has it there's also a sizable bounty on his head. No, he'll not last long. I knew Gustadolf to be a shrewd man, but his attention to detail is nothing short of astonishing. I have seen all I would. Let us return. Lord Serenoa, thank the heavens you're safe. It is good to be home. Castle Wolfort is the most impregnable stronghold in all the kingdom. You will be safe here, your highness. Thank you. I can only hope Father and Sir Maxwell are safe as well. Benedict, there is news. What's the matter, Benedict? You look as if you've seen a ghost. Your Highness, my lord, pray try to remain calm. His grace was beheaded at the Crown City not bells ago. Father... No! Say it is not so! Roland... I can only imagine what you're feeling now, Your Highness. But I fear we have not the luxury of grieving. As the last living heir to the throne, there is no doubt that the Archduke will target you next. Indeed. We must move quickly. I would seek Father's counsel. About Lord Simon. Hmm? What is it? Has something befallen Father? Father! Lord Simon, what is the meaning of this? He collapsed when he heard the news from the Crown City, and has not opened his eyes since. You must be mad! The man was stronger than an ox! We cannot afford to lose Lord Simon. Not now, of all times. Father, be strong, Father. This realm still needs you. 
I still need you, Father. Father. Saranoa. Is there any chance he will recover? Our healers are doing everything they can, but none can say. Very well. Do not give up hope, Saranoa. The malady will not take your father easily. Forgive me, Roland. I can only imagine what you feel now. I must stay strong. I cannot allow father's death to be in vain. You too must remain composed. For Lord Simon. And for those who now look to you for guidance in his stead. I will try. Pardon me, my lord. I come bearing a message. From whom? The scout we had sent in search of Sir Maxwell returned with this. Sir Maxwell's mask. Reports have it that it was found near Whiteholm Bridge. Blood. No, it cannot be. This mask was all that was found, you say? The bridge was all but overflowing with the bodies of the fallen. It was not possible to ascertain all of their identities, and the swift course of the river thwarted any efforts to search further. I see. Thank you for the report. Get some rest. You have earned it. Yes, my lord. Sir Maxwell. You, too, abandon me now? <sighs> at Gustadolf's command, S-Frost musters its forces at Whiteholm Castle and commences a march on the Wolfort Domain. Their aim? to seize in their clutches Prince Roland, the unwilling heir to Glenbrook's throne. My lord, the Esprosti army advances on us as we speak. A missive has arrived from Lord Gustadolf. It says they will stand down on the condition that we surrender Prince Roland to them at once. We've not much time before they're on our doorstep, my lord. Word has it that General Avlora herself heads the vanguard. Gustadolf's not taken any chances. The scheming bastard. <sighs> Summon the War Council at once. We must take swift action. You cannot be serious about this. It's all right, Frederica. Please continue, Benedict. Thank you. Once more, I would ask you plainly. Do we or don't we relinquish Prince Roland to Esfrost? I say we refuse. We owe Sir Maxwell that much. Precisely. Sir Maxwell entrusted us with keeping his highness safe, and we accepted. There's no place in the realm more sheltered by the terrain than this castle. He is safer here than anywhere. And yet... If the Archduke were to march on us with an army as great as the one that took the Crown City... ...or, heaven forbid, a greater one... The natural fortifications of this land would work against us. Our shelter would become our jail. So you propose that we just abandon him? That we sacrifice his life for our own protection? Better my life than any of yours. 
This is my battle. I would not see the blood of my friends spilt in my name. But see, Your Highness, that's where you're wrong. House Wolfort's the sword and shield of the crown. You go to battle, we go with you. So it's always been. Enough! I will leave before I see your domain ravaged by fighting. It is the only way. Surely you see this, yes? I refuse to believe sacrificing any of us is the correct path. My lord, we cannot allow war to come to the Wolfort domain. Your highest priority must be to your loyal subjects. You must decide. I cannot render a decision here and now. There must be some solution. I understand how you must feel. My brother has put House Wolfort in an impossible position. I cannot begin to apologize. No, you are not to blame. Forgive me, I should not have spoken so. As the master of this domain, you and no other must decide how we proceed. I understand that, Benedict. Prepare the scales of conviction. I would hear everyone's thoughts on the matter. The judgment is made. The scales tip, and our path is chosen. We must steel ourselves for the battle that lies ahead. Very well. Then I will do all in my power to see that it proves the right one. I fight with you, my friend. Prepare the defenses. We will hold our own against the army of Esfrost. After consulting the scales and reaching a consensus, House Wolfort resolved to shelter Prince Roland. Not long after, they find themselves besieged by an elite subset of Esfrost's forces. Commanding the Duchy's armies is none other than General of Laura, the deadly warrior who claimed the lives of Prince Franny and Sir Maxwell with her own hands. Pardon the intrusion, Your Grace. A bird has arrived from House Wolfort. Concerning Prince Roland, no doubt. Hmm. So they refuse to relinquish him to us. How intriguing. They will remain loyal to the royal family even if it means their demise. Very well. Send a bird to General of Laura. Tell her to make for the Wolfort Domain at once, and that she is to return with the Prince, or not at all. Yes, Your Excellency. You are aware that Prince Roland fled to the Wolfert Domain after the Crown City fell. Esfrost demanded that His Highness be relinquished to their custody immediately. We have just received word that Wolfert refused. A most admirable display of loyalty to Glenbrook's royal family if ever I have seen one. And they are not the only ones who shall remain true. In the name of King Regna, House Fox II will take up arms against those Esfrosty bastards! 
for we are one of the three high houses of Glenbrook. We will live up to that name and fight for our homeland with our lives! Aye! May your shields be strong and your sword strike true, my countrymen. For Glenbrook! Ah, Lord Tellior, there you are. Yes, what is it? Tidings from Whiteholm, my lord. House Wolfort shelters Prince Roland within their domain and refuses to acquiesce to Esfrost's demands. What's this? Those fools would stand in defiance against the duchy. The Archduke's forces move against the Wolforts as we speak. They intend to capture Prince Roland and bring down House Wolfort in one fell swoop. Hmm. House Wolfort is strong. Not strong enough for a full-on attack from the Duchy's forces. <sighs> and yet, there is always the chance, however slim, that they will prevail. <sighs> Best wait and see how the situation unfolds. Yes, there is no need to rush into anything. We must consider carefully what will afford us the best chance of survival. Continue to keep your eye on the other domains. I must know of any movement among the wolf forts and the fox, no matter how inconsequential. Yes, my lord. So they would rather die than bend the knee? Wolfort truly is a house of fools. At least Avlora will have the chance to prove herself on the battlefield. That's why we took her in, no? She'll prove useful yet. For her own sake, I would hope so. Once we bring down the highest of the three high houses, what do you suppose will become of the other two? <laughs> I should think the answer obvious, dear sister. The cowardly Tellyors will be at our beck and call. The Falks, too stubbornly loyal for their own good, will not. House Falks presides over bountiful lands. Now, do you suppose Brother will pass up the chance to claim such a tantalizing prize? Indeed not, Brother dear. Avlora? Are you certain? Yes. We are surrounded by the Archduke's main forces, led by General Avlora herself. She killed my brother and my master. I must avenge them, even if it means my life. Your Highness, your life is far too important to so blithely throw away. I know that, and yet... Facing the Esfrosty forces head-on is a fool's errand. They will drive us back with ease. Let us consider another strategy. As a matter of fact, there is more to this town than meets the eye. It is a secret which, under normal circumstances, would be divulged to a new lord only after their succession is made official. But desperate times. I sent a man just now to make preparations. Come with me. We haven't much time. I would hear more of your plan, Benedict. They say Castle Wolfort was built into a mountainside. 
Am I to believe there are yet more secrets concealed in its construction? Just so. As it happens, a contrivance of sorts was installed in the town to be used only in cases of dire emergency. What manner of contrivance? I've never heard such a thing. You wouldn't have. The information is divulged only to the Lord of the House and his closest advisors. It is a secret, one that embodies this town's true worth. I see. Then what, pray tell, is this town's true worth? The towering walls that rise up in all directions, the network of sloped waterways. This town appears as any other to my eye. But perhaps my gaze is untrained. It is the canals we will use. We shall pour flaming oil into them from above and burn our enemy out. What in the... Benedict, have you gone mad? Do you see those hawk sculptures located throughout the town? I do. They are the means by which the weapon may be activated, I presume. Indeed. Tearing them down will trigger a barrier to rise around the canals. After that, no one will be able to get in or out until the blaze subsides. You would burn people's homes. No, the very town itself, along with our foes. But just think of the lives that may be sacrificed. This is the path we have chosen. There's little choice left to us if we wish to survive. We must win, whatever the cost. Prepare for battle. How fare you, Benedict? My preparations are complete. I trust you're ready as well, my lord? As ready as I shall ever be. We have given ourselves every advantage that we can, my lord. Indeed we have. I only hope that it is enough. My lord! The Esfrosty forces are on the move! And so it begins. Our foe advances. Take up your positions, everyone, and be ready for the signal. Shall we, my lord? Yes, it is time. The battlefield is no place for children. I will have vengeance for my family and for my master. Prepare to die! Empty threats from a pampered prince. You will see what true might is. All's in place, my lord. Ready when you are. Very good. Now, to lure them where we want them and initiate the device. You are aware of what will happen next, yes? Yes. And I am prepared to make the sacrifice. With me, everyone. All companies, advance! Leave no survivors! Ugh, they are strong. This is more than simply the advantage of terrain. Retreat! All companies, fall back at once! <laughs> Look at him turn tail and run! And we didn't even need that damn contraption! Indeed. I am thankful we kept any damage to the town at a minimum. You have my gratitude. All of you.
Though both sides suffer great losses on the battlefield, in the end, it is House Wolfort that triumphs. The vanquished General of Vlora is forced to retreat to Castle Whiteholm, his frosty army in tow. I have no words to excuse my failure, Your Grace. I underestimated the Woolfort army. It will not happen again. Indeed, it will not. I will accept no apology for your incompetence, save victory. The Woolforts may have gotten the better of us this time, but it came at a cost. We must strike again before they can regroup. Rest yourself of Laura. I will have need of you yet, and soon. I shall not disappoint you again, Your Grace. You have my word. And you will keep it. Nothing and no one will stand in my way. I bring good news, my lord. As Frost Army marched on Castle Walford in an attempt to seize the prince, but they were roundly defeated by House Walford's forces and retreat to the Crown City as we speak. Joyous tidings indeed. I knew the Wolforts wouldn't let us down. I'm also pleased to report that Prince Roland is unscathed. It would seem young Sarah Noah is more than capable of carrying on Lord Simon's legacy. Triumph as they did, they still suffered considerable casualties in the battle. It is more than likely that Esfrost is already preparing for a second attack. Very well. Take stock of our own forces and determine how many men we can send to House Wolfert's aid while retaining enough for our own protection. Yes, my lord. It is time to take a stand. If the three high houses come together as one, I am certain we will prevail. House Warford triumphed? Yes, my lord. The Archduke's army has already withdrawn to the Crown City. That said, it would seem the Wolfort army suffered significant casualties. Did it now? It is not as if I entirely failed to consider the possibility of an Esfrasi defeat. And yet, it is hardly an ideal development. Whatever are we to do now? Wolfort may have won the battle. But, can they win the war? Hmm. My lord? Ready a bird. I have a missive that needs sending. As you command. To be quite frank, I underestimated House Wolfort's strength. To think they were capable of driving off the S. Frosty army forces like that. I suspect the outcome came as a surprise to the Archduke as well. And yet, something tells me Wolfort's victory is more than a fluke. I shall keep that in mind. Still, this development is to our advantage. This will only make it easier to carry out our plans. Just so, Your Excellency. Everything is proceeding as you anticipated. Yes. We shall have our way. It is but a matter of time. I shall see to the wounded. I will help as well. My hawk can assist with clearing the rubble. My thanks to you both. Your aid is most welcome. I am ready. Go safely, Anna. 
and give my best to the others. We take a risk in entreating a powerful nation for aid. I need you to determine to what extent we can rely on them, if at all. Leave it to me. I've sent Anna to the holy state of Hyzant. Our alliance may not be what it once was, but we must seek help wherever it may be found. In a perfect world, we would be able to count on the cooperation of our neighbors here. Indeed, unity within Glenbrook is of the utmost priority, especially now that we've ensured Prince Roland's safety. And yet, we cannot count on houses Tellior and Falks to act in our best interests. We must prepare ourselves for every contingency. You are right as always, Benedict. We've taken the first step down our chosen path, but there is no telling what awaits us. Do you have a moment, Your Highness? Oh, it's you. As silly as it may sound, I've never truly understood what it meant to be royalty. Does my life carry more weight simply because of the blood in my veins? So much so that the lives of others must be sacrificed in my name? You need not worry about that, Roland. Lord Wolfort speaks true. The scales of conviction guided us, but this decision was ours. We have chosen to walk this path with you. I was born the second prince. No one expected great things of me. And yet, simply because I had the good luck to survive, my very existence now necessitates all these sacrifices. If I may be so bold, it was not luck, your highness. We protected you. <laughs> I know this, of course. That's what makes this so hard. You all fought and continue to fight for me. And I can scarcely take care of myself. I need to become stronger. I must. For my own sake and for yours. House Wolford prevails against General Avlora's army and drives them out of Glenbrook. Though victorious, Roland sobs quietly, saddened by the sacrifices made in his name. Glenbrook is powerless, but knows they must keep the royal bloodline alive. Thus, the conspiracies and power struggles around the noble blood in Roland's veins continue to stain the land crimson. Father, please open your eyes. There is so much I wish to ask you. Lord Serenoa. I cannot let Father hear how weak I've become. I must be strong. Lord Serenoa, Master Benedict, you have a visitor. Who is it? Lord Silvio Tellior. He wishes for an audience with Lord Serenoa. What business would the Lord of House Tellior have with me? Tell him we will be there shortly. Yes, sir. Every day is busier than the last. We haven't had a moment to catch our breath. You are doing a fine job as head of House Woolfort, Lord Serenoa. Your father would be proud if he could see you now. I could not do it without you, Benedict. 
Thank you. In short, you wish for the three high houses to join hands and fight the duchy. Is that correct, Lord Silvio? Indeed. I believe it our duty to fight. Some are frozen in fear, trembling at the mere thought of the duchy's power. I feel that joining the three high houses under a single flag is the only way to unite them. My men ready themselves for war as we speak. Come to Telior, and we can strike at Esfras together. Prince Roland will be safe with us, of course. It's as good a plan as any. You have my thanks for getting the preparations underway. I wonder if Lord Landroy would agree. I doubt House Falks would refuse a fight. Their devotion to the Crown knows no bounds. But of course, they reaped great rewards from the bountiful lands won during the war. You propose reuniting the three high houses who led the Salt Iron War to its end. It is heartening to know you would once again lend us your strength. We certainly could use all the help we can get. Though I wish we could resolve matters peacefully. You speak as though your brother is not at fault for all this. My bride-to-be bears no blame for the Duchy's actions. Uh, my apologies. Forgive me for my outburst. But we haven't much time. I would have your answer now. Shall we accept Lord Silvio's proposal, my lord? Fetch the scales, Benedict. We shall decide our path together. Are you mad? You would stand idly by while our kingdom is in grave danger. This is the path we have chosen. I hope you understand. I do not. You must reconsider. Or else House Telior too will face Esfros wrath. And why would that be our concern? <sighs> we are in no condition to fight, Lord Silvio. It is as simple as that. Then I pray something more than death awaits us both. Lord Silvio of Tellior offers the solitary House Wolfort an ally, and a place of protection for Roland. But Serenoa chooses to walk his own path, even if he must do so alone. Silvio leaves with a disquieting look in his eyes. I beg you! That's enough, Rufus. You call these men soldiers, Silvio? They haven't got any spine. Save your anger for House Wolfort. He will strike at their castle soon enough. Ha! Sounds like they saw straight through your stupid plan. Ah, what could a lowly bounty hunter know of a lord's struggles? Without Roland, my house is doomed. They call you heroes, Bane, right? That is all you need do. And do it I shall. The only one you need alive is the Prince, right? The Tellior army has entered our domain? Yes. The Vanguard is nearing Castle Wolfort as we speak. It will not be long until the rest arrive. 
I knew his intentions were not as pure as he made them seem. But to think he would attack so soon after proposing an alliance. According to our spies, Lord Silvio has been in contact with Esfrost. There is a reason he is known as an opportunist. This was all a plan to destroy us. So he wished to secure Prince Roland to use as leverage with Esfrost. I was also told that House Tellior has hired a man named Rufus as a bodyguard. What do you know about this man? He's a bounty hunter known as Hero's Bane, whose only loyalty is to coin. That said, he's claimed the lives of countless famed warriors. It would be wise not to underestimate him. To think Lord Sylvia would hire such a man. It means he's serious. We must plan accordingly. Understood. Gather the others. We have much to discuss. So Silvio has betrayed us. I suppose he has come here for me. You are correct. He most likely wishes to use you to curry favor with Esfrost. That bastard! To think he would throw his own countrymen underfoot. We haven't time to get emotional, Eridor. They are on their way here. I beg to differ. There's no better time. I'm trembling with rage. As am I. We'll teach those traitorous bastards a lesson. Yet more bloodshed for my sake. Prince Roland, we have no choice but to act. And the enemy is our former compatriots. They may well know about the traps below. We may have to face them head on at the gates. We need all the help we can get. Please fight with us. This is no time to waver. We must stand together if we wish to survive. Yes. Together we can overcome this. To arms! My lord, House Telior's betrayal has been confirmed. It appears Lord Silvio plans to launch a surprise attack on House Wolford. This is absolute madness. To think I would see the day three high houses fight each other. The glorious Glenbrook of the past is no longer. The dark days of war are upon us once more. My lord, the Esfrosty army has entered our domain. They demand our surrender. Ready your bows. It is time they witness the true valor of the High Houses. How regrettable we should meet again like this, Lord Silvio. Agreed, Lord Serenoa. I beg you to reconsider and entrust Prince Roland to us. If you do, I promise to put in a good word with the Archduke. I cannot do that. We follow the path we believe in, no matter how treacherous the road. Unlike a certain opportunist. Your lofty convictions will not change reality. If you lose, nothing remains. Not house nor loyalty. Not even your silly beliefs or your life. Then we will defeat you, Lord Silvio and hold fast to our beliefs until the end. Try as you might, you will never prevail. Now, Rufus. Let me show you how Hero's Bane earned his name. I can't remember the last time I fought someone so formidable. Uh, how is it you can still stand and fight? It is as you said. If we lose here, nothing will remain. What are you boasting about? Even if you kill me, Esros is still the victor. I withstood humiliation to preserve the name of the High Houses. And even so, 
you ingrate treat me like this? Enough excuses. They are not excuses. House Wolford has single-handedly brought ruin upon us. As long as I live, so shall the High Houses! Get back here, Silvio! You still owe me my due! Shall I pursue him? No. He has no reason nor army to strike at us again. True. And I would rather not harm one of our own could we avoid it. At the end of the battle against House Wolford, Lord Silvio of Tellior leaves the field defeated. The victors, however, do not go by unscathed, repeated battles taking their toll on the soldiers. All goes according to Gustadolf's plan to weaken both houses. Landroy Falks. Lord of the Third of Glenbrook's High Houses, faces off against General of Laura. I must survive. Somehow, I must survive! Gah! Escaping all on your own, I see. Rufus, what are you doing here? I came to collect my reward. Reward? Since when were losers ever rewarded? I remember our deal differently. As do I. I was promised an invincible executioner. You are nothing but a fraud. A sheep in wolf's clothing. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? I have a new deal for you. Pay me what I'm owed or die. I, I cannot give you what I do not possess. And if you kill me now, you will have lost to Wolfwart with nothing to show for it. Hmm. Go on. If you let me live, on the other hand, I will find the coin to pay you. What do you say? You have a deal? Fine. But if I don't get that money, consider your life forfeit. Far too much blood has been spilled. I know how loyal you were to the late King Regna. We may be enemies, but you still have my respect. I would invite you to join our ranks. You would dishonor me so. I prefer it to your death. Save your pity for someone who needs it. Your master will never have our loyalty, even if it means the end of the three high houses. <sighs> Your Majesty, I serve you even in death. His plot foiled and bested in battle by House Wolford, Silvio Tellior flees, leaving everything behind.
House Falks fights valiantly, but ultimately loses to General of Laura's army and joins their late king in death. Of Glenbrook's three high houses, Wolfort, Tellior, and Falks, two are felled by the iron hammer of Esfrost. House Wolfort now stands alone, in more peril than ever. So, two of Glenbrook's three high houses have fallen. Esfrost's invasion took me by surprise at first, but this is quite the interesting turn. Now Wolfort stands alone, having lost both the crown and its allies. There is no better time for us to act. Then let us set the trap, brimming with bait enough to lure them in and keep them there. As you command, the famed High House of the Salt Iron War will soon be under your thumb, my lord. Having control of their land will make our deliveries that much easier. Indeed, and House End will prosper more than ever. <laughs> Brute strength is not the only path to victory. A truly wise man can win without ever drawing his sword. My lord, a bird from Sorsley End of Hyzant has arrived. He has offered to send us provisions and funds in light of our situation. A most welcome offer, to be sure, but... Why would he extend a helping hand to us now? Could he be after something? Undoubtedly, there are regrettably none so altruistic amongst the saintly seven. Seeing as Minister Sorsley has never shown much interest in other nations, I can only surmise this is a ploy to put House Wolfort in his debt. As I suspected. But our people and soldiers need all the help they can get. Let us accept his proposal. We can deal with whatever ulterior motives he may have once we are back on our feet. Understood. We shall discuss our countermeasures at another time. Congratulations on your victory in the Falk's Domain, General. Thank you, sir. They were proud warriors. And Lord Landroy a formidable foe, despite his age. I imagine he was content to breathe his last on his beloved fields. Thirty years have passed since the Salt Iron War. It was time he was put to rest beside that bygone era. Avlora, it is time you had a rest as well. What do you mean by that, Your Grace? Your soldiers have fought long and hard. Any longer, and their morale may suffer for it. But what of House Wolfort? Prince Roland is still with them. Is that not cause for concern? There are no lords left worth worrying about. House Wolfort stands alone after Roland's uprising. Even so, we would do well not to underestimate them. Even standing alone, they once changed the course of the Salt Iron War. House Wolfort is no longer the hunter, but the hunted. Or do you believe you understand something that I do not, General? No. Forgive me, Your Grace. You wish to speak to me, Your Highness? I wish to leave the Wolfort Domain. And you want me to persuade Lord Serenoa? 
Yes. Though I doubt he will welcome the conversation after the scales have spoken. But the people are tired. Their expressions grim. And this castle is no different. Even so, the decision was made together. Yes. But I think we all know that I am at the source of our troubles. The responsibility ultimately falls to me. If you truly wish to take responsibility, then I do have an idea. And I would hear it. Give me that ring. But this is proof that I belong to the royal family. What would you do with it? Have you die for your people? Hey boss, come take a look at this. The poor soul. Or maybe not so poor judging by these clothes. Hey, Pa! Remember what I said about that reward money? Of course I do. This might just be him. Pa, take a look at this! A shiny ring, huh? Is that uh, the royal emblem? This has got to be Prince Roland! The corpse is regrettably too damaged to identify, but the royal signet is unmistakable. Aside from Cordelia, there is only one who would wear the royal family's ring. There can be no doubt, this is Prince Roland. S -s Excuse me, your grace, uh, but about that reward... Thallus. Give them their coin. Yes, brother. Thank you kindly for your generosity, Your Grace. What a waste. Is this truly how the Kingdom of Glenbrook meets its end? House Wolfort are no fools. Their friend was only a liability. They have spared themselves by forsaking the prince. They may have escaped, but there are none who would help them. There is no reason for us to concern ourselves with House Wolfort any longer. A shame. Your poor brother, betrayed by his most trusted friend, of Prince Roland's death spreads across the land like wildfire. With his demise, seemingly comes the end of the Kingdom of Glenbrook. But only days later, a proclamation is made that would bind Esfrost and Glenbrook. Bearer of the Royal Signet and last heir to the throne of Glenbrook, Cordelia is to ascend as Queen. and wed Archduke Gustadolf. Princess Cordelia is to wed the Archduke? What is the meaning of this? Gustadolf is the very one who invaded Glenbrook. 
But King Regna is to blame for trying to monopolize the mines. What does it matter who the princess weds as long as Glenbrook lives on? It damn well matters to me. My people, our days of late have been dark and filled with strife. Both Glenbrook and Esfros have suffered countless losses, and we have lost both of our beloved princes. For that, I offer you my deepest condolences. May they all rest in peace. As you all know, my father was sentenced to death for his role in this tragic event. But how do we come to grips with our sorrow and anger? How do we atone for our mistakes? Esfrost does not deserve your forgiveness! Do not submit to Gustadolf's will! Let us recognize our sins as such and move forward. Archduke Gustadolf has magnanimously given us another chance. A chance to see Glenbrook to a fair and free future. As the queen of this kingdom, I, Cordelia of House Glenbrook, do hereby accept the warmth and governance of Esfrost, and swear to do everything in my power to usher in an age of peace with the Archduke. With all due respect, sir, I do not believe Queen Cordelia to be fit for ruling Glenbrook. She does not need to be. She is to be our figurehead, a place for the people to focus both their hope and discontent. And while the poor people of Glenbrook stumble in the dark, we shall establish a new government, one based in freedom. Once the people have had a taste of true freedom Esfrost would offer them, there will be no turning back. By the time Cordelia births an heir, both this kingdom and its people will belong solely to Esfrost. I would be loath to stand upon a political battlefield. It is far more heartless than those of war. I am simply breathing new life into a kingdom of tired traditions. The people will thank me for it in time. Father. My brothers, I swear to avenge you. Prince Roland, have you heard about the address at the capital? I have. I won't forgive them for making Her Highness say such horrible things. Enough, Huet. They lied about the king's death. They made it seem like Gustadoff was justified. Say no more. If Cordelia can endure this, so can we. And as long as she lives, that is enough for me. Forgive me, your highness. We all understand how you feel, Prince Froland. No, I apologize. I lost control. Thinking about it will do us no good. We must rise to action. Indeed we must. Everyone knows of your death now. That means we are free to make our next move. Listen, my friends. Prince Roland of Glenbrook is dead. I am now merely Roland, a warrior who fled a fallen kingdom. I humbly ask for your support until the sun shines upon our royal line once again. Is that Sir Maxwell's? That mask. You look just like Sir Maxwell. This is a secret that shall stay within House Wolford. Master, grant me the strength to free our home from Esfrost's clutches.
How is he doing? Better than before. He groans in pain from time to time, though. I see. I wish I could tell Father about our situation now, but... Lord Serenoa, if your father were awake, I am certain he would praise you for safeguarding Wolfort. <sighs> Sad to say, the real trouble is only just beginning. I'll be damned if House End's protection comes for free. No doubt the longer we stay, the steeper the price. Precisely. Minister Sorsley is not an altruistic soul. If you were in his shoes, what would you do? I would squeeze us dry, then look for an opportunity to. But we won't let that happen. Of course not. Anna is already on the move. It is our duty to protect and guide this house. This heart ain't changed since the day Lord Simone took me in, lad. I'm ready to put my life on the line for this house. We'll get past this, one way or another. You'll see. Thank you so much, both of you. Lord Svarok, the body of Lord Dragan is... So my son has finally returned home. I will be there soon. Is something the matter? I think it better not to look, my lord. And... And why is that? His face. There is no vestige of the handsome lad he once was. Oh. Oh, my son. I understand. You are dismissed. I am so sorry, my boy. Please forgive your pitiful excuse for a father. I will find the one who did this to you. I swear it. To work! You aren't the only one who's thirsty. No setbacks, I presume? None, sir. We are already well ahead of schedule. Splendid. The ledger, if you would. Yes, sir. I would hate for there to be a problem with our numbers. I will hold on to this for now. Of course, sir. Water! Put the poor thing out of its misery, Booker. <laughs> you must be firm with the Roselle. Show them the slightest mercy and they'll think they deserve more. Yes, sir! I see. So there is an illicit salt trade held outside the auspices of the Norzelia Consortium. In this business, you cannot avoid rumors even if you try. They say sneaking under the Consortium's nose is well worth the risk, but I am not so bold. And who is behind all this? I wish I could say. I am not asking you to tell me for free. How generous of you. 
It's but a rumor, of course, but... They say none other than Minister End in Hyzant is pulling the strings. And some free advice for you, my friend? You'd do well not to get involved. Why? I'm afraid that will cost a separate fee. <laughs> Why, thank you. Saranoa, do you have a moment? I was hoping to talk to you about our marriage. Now that Glenbrook has been brought to ruin by Esfrost, is there any meaning to our union? <sighs> My brother may have been planning this from the start, and yet I came to Wolfort with the intent of marrying you completely unaware of it. It's always like this. Nothing ever goes as I would wish it. The course of my life has always been at the mercy of others. As has mine. Almost nothing happens the way I thought it would. But you have a home. Somewhere you can return to someday. You are surrounded by people who care about you. As do you, as a member of House Wolfort. Your place is with us now. Saranoa. And though this may sound pretentious, this is a time for you to think about your future and what you must do, Frederica. Just as I am. I suppose you are right. What must I do? Here you are. Master Benedict has been searching for you both. Understood. Let him know we will return at once. You said we received a delivery from Minister Sorsley. Yes, mostly food and materials, plus a considerable amount of coin. That is... quite kind of him. House End is a wealthy one, even by Hyzant's standards. This would barely put a dent in their coffers. We have distributed the resources as needed. We've even managed to restock our reserves. Wish I could be happy for the help. But I can't say I am. Agreed. Relying on them comes at a price. They will be looking for recompense. I believe that to be their true aim. But this is the path we chose to walk together. Indeed. And as long as we stay the course, the winds of favor will someday be at our backs. A missive from Minister Sorsley has arrived. I see he wastes no time. What absurd request could he possibly have in store for us? Nothing good, that's for sure. Yet another problem has arisen, as we anticipated. I would like to ask everyone what they think. Benedict, if you would. Yes, my lord. We have just received a request from Minister Sorsley. We are to deliver his cargo to Esfrost. Cargo? A load of salt that bypasses the consortium. He is asking us to be an accomplice to his illegal dealings. The nerve of him! Asking the Honorable House Wolfort to do such a filthy job. No way we'd agree to that. But consider this. Agreeing would secure us proof of his unlawful business. Are you suggesting we report him to Hyzant? I am saying it is an option. You got a point. We have a duty to speak up when something's not right. That's the honorable thing to do. We might even earn the Holy One's trust. Have you all forgotten? Minister Sorsley is one of Hyzan's saintly seven. His connections run far deeper than ours. We must tread carefully. 
then we need solid evidence to convict him. I should think the salt he wishes us to transport would suffice. But we are the only ones that know it. And it is indistinguishable from the salt that is legally distributed. Far from the solid evidence we need. Regrettably so. One false move and we lose both Minister Sorsley's support and Hyzant's trust. Without proof, we have no choice but to go to Esfrost. If only we had evidence of his misdeeds. It comes as no surprise to see our opinions differ. But a decision must be made. To report Minister Sorsley's illegal dealings to Hyzant, or become a silent accomplice. Bring the scales. It is time to make our choice. We have our path. We shall minister Sorcelay asks and deliver the salt to Esfrost. Now that we have a heading, we need only move forward. Let us make haste. Indeed. No matter how perilous the road ahead may be, we must not falter. Anna, begin the preparations. As you wish. No good deed is the product of selflessness, and Minister Sorsley's intervention on the Woolfort's behalf is no exception. In exchange for their livelihoods, Serenoa and his entourage must transport Sorsley's illicit salt across their borders. With no pride left to bolster them, they have little choice but to obey. Preparations for the journey are a somber affair. The cart's ready, my lord. As are the disguises. None will suspect us to be aught but common merchants. Good. Then let us prepare for our departure. Oh, just look at what we've been reduced to. Skullduggery and deceit. Whatever honor we had is losing its luster by the day. Everyone has boarded the cart, my lord. We await your orders. We cannot use the main road. This journey will not be an easy one. I suspect not. Minister Sorsley's instructions were clear. We are to secure a new route through our domain that will not draw unwanted attention. We've drawn up a rough map. It passes through uncharted wilderness and treacherous mountains, places which no common travelers would dare traverse. My scouts have also reported rumors that the area is inhabited by bandits and beasts alike. To make no mention of the dismal weather on the horizon. Regardless, we must depart. We have an appointment to keep after all. So, I am queen. What should I do? You should listen to the Archduke and obey. Is that all the Archduke wants? An obedient wife? And here I thought the Esfrosti valued freedom. So long as you must look to others, you do not deserve freedom. <gasps> freedom is a privilege, and only those with the strength to see their will realized are deserving of it. It is not given, it is taken. And it is not often taken easily. This I know. I see. Thank you. Next time you think to ask that question, answer it yourself. Brother, father, look over me until I find the strength I require.
What is Gustadolf thinking to marry a sniveling brat? No glory is worth her dismal company. It is unacceptable. He should have let me deal with those obstinate boars in Glenbrook. <laughs> Under the cover of rainfall, House Wolfort leads a cart full of salt northward through the treacherous mountain passes where few dare to tread. However, the rain quickly turns from help to hindrance as it batters down on the riders, making the ground treacherous and the path ahead clouded in mist. The party stops to wait out the weather and determine their next course of action. There's nobody here. It should make a perfect spot for camp. Are you... certain, my lord? Do you lack faith in our scouts? Uh, of course not, my lord. I just mean... it is hardly a place for a Prince of Glenbrook to sleep. Are we to crouch in range rent shadows in the pursuit of clandestine dealings? Need I remind you? I am Prince no longer. We must take such shelter as we can find. But even so, that is no reason to forget who you were. Is aught amiss? Nothing at all. However, I believe I found a place for us to set camp. The road ahead is treacherous, and we would do well to rest and wait out the rain. I am in agreement, my lord. Pushing further in this weather would be unwise. Very well. Let's inspect the surroundings before setting camp. Can't you sleep, Saranoa? We have a long day ahead of us. Thank you, but I'm fine. Why are you still awake? The rain. Will it ever end? No storm lasts forever. The sun will greet us in the morning, I'm sure. I can only hope. Optimism is sorely needed in these troubled times. However, it will be prudent to plan for the worst. No need to lecture, my lord. He was just comforting his dear bride-to-be. No, Jilai's right. If the ring continues, we shall have to find another way around. Regardless of the path we take, our destination remains the same. Stifling swamps clogged with insects and worse. I suppose it is fitting, considering the state of our honor as of late. I understand your misgivings. All the more reason for us to win Minister Sorcelay's trust. And what is his trust worth? He relishes in dangling accolades in front of those foolish enough to grasp for them. I won't let that bastard toy with us. Doubtless he feels the same about us. The salt is gone. How in the blazes did that happen? Bandits. They've made off with everything in our cart. All without stirring a soul. I apologize. Mountain clans are generally not known for their skill at stealth. What's done is done. They can't have gone far. Find them. You! You're the bandits that waylaid us before. I was just pondering whether you were brave or foolish to be using these roads. Seems I have my answer. Brought your lordly friends to help you take revenge, have ya? I believe you stole our cargo. We'll be taking that back if you don't mind. Your lords always have such big mouths. You traipse into our home and demand tribute? Your titles mean less than not here. It's you who should be begging for mercy. Shut your damn mouths! We ain't listening to the demands of rabid beasts. Beasts? You got some nerve when it's you who's growing fat with your ill-gotten salt. 
We aren't daft. If you had permission to sell this cargo of yours, then we wouldn't have had the good fortune to meet you in this forsaken wilderness. <sighs> Nothing to say to that, huh? <laughs> well, if you'd mind, we'll be taking the salt as payment for your lodgings. And if you have any objections, then you're welcome to take them up with us. I'd heard the wolf forts had fallen on hard times, but it seems that just made them tougher. I don't feel like dying today. We'd best run. We won't forget this. House Wolfort owes us a debt, and we'll come to collect before long. Charming company. How unfortunate that they've left us. Now then, what were we talking about before we were interrupted? I think we've had enough discussion for the night. We've recovered the salt, and I'm sure they won't be so bold as to attack again so soon. Let us rest our injuries. Tomorrow shall bring a new day. We must ever look forward to what it contains. Do you have any objections to that much? None at all. Let us make camp. I shall pray that more bandits do not greet us when the sun rises. House Walford fights back the bandits, escaping through the treacherous mountain pass with nary an injury but to their pride. Disguised as common merchants, they cross the border into Esfrost. Should be just up ahead, but I can scarce keep track of my own head in these mists. We may be walking into an ambush. Anna, scout ahead and... It's too late for that. Don't move. It won't go easy for you if you do. Of course. You'll have no quarrel from us. What? That hair? As I thought, Frederica! That means your companions must be the Warforts. What in the world has brought you to this desolate place? With no choice but to acquiesce to Sorsley's demands, House Wolfort loads a merchant's cart with contraband salt and sets off across their own homeland in disguise. Through benighted forests and desolate mountains, they forge a path, staving off the assault of thievish bandits and finally reaching Esfrost. Upon crossing into new territory, they find themselves surrounded by soldiers clad in black. Expecting yet another skirmish, the Wolfort steal themselves for combat. However, the warriors lower their weapons. Through the mists, an unexpected figure appears, Svarog Esfrost, Lord of Twinsgate and Keeper of his country's borders. This is quite the development. My very uncle, buying salt outside of the Consortium's perfume. The lion's share of the surprise is mine, I assure you. Who would be aiding me in this illicit endeavor but the noble Wolforts? Circumstances have caused us to set aside pride for the sake of survival. Of course, I understand. Oft we must travel the only road available to us. And what road has brought you here, uncle? I cannot imagine you have come with Gustadolf's blessing. What road indeed? 
My own circumstances have caused me to look outside my humble station to find the means I require. A reckoning is at hand, and I must needs be ready for it. Hmm. To that end, I must ask. And pray do not waste my time with mistruths. Do you know who murdered my son? No. I'm sorry. I see. Gustadov would have me believe that an agent of Glenbrook dealt the fatal blow. That's impossible. Is it? You speak as if you were there, Frederica. She was. As was I. We were with Dragan during his... during his final moments. You were? And yet, you do not know who killed him. I will ask once more, and once more only. Who murdered my son? We were the only representatives from Glenbrook at the mines that day. The arrow that killed your son was loosed by an Esfrosty soldier. We were attacked and fought back the assault, but they did not flee without a parting gift. Hmm. Your story is convenient, but that alone is no reason to discount it. Besides, it does offer an interesting perspective on the matter. Let us say you have the truth of the matter. That would mean... Gustadov has been lying through his teeth. That would come as a shock to many, I'm sure. Regardless, nightfall is come. Camp within our gates tonight. Do you believe us? What is there to believe? This meeting never occurred. Now follow me. So, that's how it went, eh? Glad you came back to us with your head on your shoulders. Given the lies he's been fed, it couldn't have been easy for Svarog to keep his composure. Still, it will be no easy task to assuage his doubts. I fear it may not be long until he gives into his desire for revenge, justified or not. Perhaps. But I very much had the sense that his opinion of Gustadolf was less than favorable. So long as we share the same enemy, there's a chance to build faith between us. I had the same intuition. Would that we could lend weight to our claims. There must be something that can sway him. Perhaps a secret will suffice. We have one of great value to the right person. Huh? What are you on about? No. You can't mean... None would rather see the Archduke laid low, more I. As Farag knew I still lived, we might find common cause. With the Prince of Glo behind him, his opposition would be justified. The enemy of our enemy, eh? Wish we had more than a feeling to go on. Once this secret is revealed, there will be no turning back. It is a gamble, yes. However, this may be our best and only option to gain support from within Esfrost. There is much to consider. I would hear everyone's thoughts on the matter. Do we keep Roland's secret our secret? Or do we trade it for a potential ally? It is decided. Svarog shall know the truth of Roland's identity. Benedict, I would ask that you arrange an audience as quickly as possible. Of course, my lord. Prince Roland of Glenbrook lives. It is a powerful secret that could sway the decisions of the other nations. Knowing this, 
House Wolford asks for an audience with Svarog in hopes of divulging that very information and gaining his trust. You must have something of import to tell me. Whatever it is, know that my guard stays. There is something we wish to show you, Lord Svarog, in hopes of earning your trust. <sighs> Prince Roland? They said you perished. Indeed they did. And the rumors will stay that way as long as Gustadolf draws breath. Surely you understand the meaning of this revelation. Indeed I do. Give me time to think it over. Hmm. Constable, a bird has arrived from our spy at Twinsgate. I've discovered a secret ledger in Svarag's quarters. An unscheduled merchant company has arrived. Cargo uncertain. I shall continue my investigation. It may be an illicit shipment of salt. If we can get our hands on both the salt and the ledger, we can expose their crimes. But we cannot be sure of that just yet, sir. Perhaps we should wait for the next report. No. If we simply sit still, we may lose our only chance of getting that evidence. But Lord Svarog is a powerful man. Even our own formidable forces cannot afford to make a mistake. And it is precisely because he is so powerful that we cannot let these misdeeds go unpunished. I shall assume responsibility for whatever happens. Now, we make for Twinsgate. Yes, sir. Leave us. Yes, sir. My apologies for summoning you at this hour. I see now the resolve of House Woolfort. I think it best we both speak frankly. We have decided to stand against Gustadolf, just as you have. I. The only reason I purchase illicit salt is to amass the power I need to oppose the Archduke. Gustadolf pursues his ideals and his alone. He even curtailed the might of my house as if we were not family. I see. That explains Lord Dragan's efforts at the mines. I remember Lord Dragan's words. The future is in the hands of the ardent youth. I... he was off to say that. He was always asking how long I intended to leave Gustadov to his own devices. But just who would kill my boy? And why? As we said, we unfortunately do not know who did it. But neither Glenbrook nor Woolfort stood to gain anything from it. Even if there were something to be gained, we would not have acted without preparing for retaliation. But, as you can see from the current state of Glenbrook... The capital was easily taken while merrymaking over the mines. A fair point. But there is someone who could use your son's death for his own purposes. To put the crown within his reach. Gustadolf. You there! Explain yourself! We found this man eavesdropping on your conversation. You're the guard from earlier. A spy! <sighs> he knows who I am. We shall give chase. Huet, alert the others.
There he is! You won't get away! Dead. I wonder who he was working for. My apologies. This was the only way to stop him, for sure. You needn't apologize, Huet. You there, don't move! Lord Sarah Noah, what are you doing here? Sir Secret. Constable, one of ours has been found dead. How unfortunate. I shall be taking you lot in for questioning. Throw down your weapons. You there, remove your mask. <clears throat> I am sorry, but we cannot comply. And you leave me no choice but to have you all arrested. These people are my guests. I will not tolerate such disrespect, even from you, Sikris. I received a report of suspicious movement in the area. It seems the report was correct. I will have to investigate Twinsgate inside and out. I know not who raised the issue, but that makes it no less dire. I shall have the investigation myself. I simply cannot allow it. This responsibility was given to me by the Archduke himself. You dog! Did the Archduke also deem me unworthy of your trust? C Constable! Do not falter, men! We shall enter Twins Gate by force if we must! Sikris, some unfortunate news has just come to my attention. It appears the soldier over there was illegally selling our fortress's resources. He might be the man you were looking for. Take him with you for questioning. What do you expect me to glean from a corpse? More than you think. Dragan has taught me plenty. Hmm. This transgression was born of my negligence. Give the Archduke my sincerest apologies. Understood, Sikris? Yes, sir. Let us ensure that such misdeeds do not happen again. <sighs> Thank you for your help earlier. Think nothing of it. We walk the same path now. And together, we shall bring down Gustadolf. It seems we've managed to dispel any doubts you had in us. I do not know what happened in the mines that day. But your words and Gustadolf's do not align. And I cannot bring myself to believe that Gustadolf did not have a hand in Dragan's death. He has always been willing to do whatever necessary to see his ambitions through. Indeed. We've investigated the spy's quarters. It appears he was working for Sikris. And his forces are directly under the Archduke's command, meaning the man behind the curtain is without a doubt Gustadolf. This may be yet another ploy to destroy me, just like my son's murder. Lord Dragan was vital in our plans for peace. Yet he did not bother to hide his ambition before Gustadolf. Perhaps he inherited that senseless pride from me, a child of Concubine. What a fool I am, bringing death upon my own son. Uncle. But no matter how I despair, my son will not return. So I must fulfill his wishes in his stead. Agreed. I must defeat Gustadolf for my family.
I shall fight by your side. Take this as repayment for the cargo. This is far too much, Lord Svarog. The remainder is for your army. Use it when the time comes. We cannot thank you enough. These tough times are not over yet. We could not win against Gustadolf if we fought him now. Indeed. But if we can learn about what he's plotting, we may stand a chance. I will continue to be vigilant. May our houses grow ever stronger until then. Serenoa delivers the salt to Svarog, a powerful minister of Esfrost who secretly wishes for Gustadolf's defeat. After learning of Roland's identity, Svarog swears to fight beside House Wolfort to bring down their common enemy. Gustadolf's power grows greater by the day, but House Wolfort is not idle in the meantime. They look to strengthen their own forces, slowly but surely. After seeing the illicit salt to Esfrost, Serenoa makes haste to Hyzant. The Holy One has invited both them and Sorslay End to the palace. Sarah Noah Wolfort. We are pleased to have you in the capital. Lamet, are you attendant to the Holy One? I do have that honor, yes. I am afraid preparations for your audience are still underway. Pray wait a while longer. Very well. There is no rush. Your patience is appreciated. We shall find you once we are ready. We should take chance to see the city. We still do not know why we were summoned. Rumors, fickle as they may be, may help us steel ourselves for what is ahead. Somehow, I doubt that the commoners are privy to the thoughts of the goddess. Still, it would do us well to acquaint ourselves with her subjects. For the sake of our budding relationship with Hyzant, if nothing else. I agree. Now shall we split up to cover the most ground? I have a mind to visit the source. As you wish. Once we have finished, let us return here to share what we have learned. This country is quite pleasant, isn't it? Not a dour face in sight. Quite the opposite, in fact. To see their smiles, you would think that inequity, envy, and jealousy were things of fairy tales. A well-governed populace is a happy populace. Or so they say. Tis an example we could learn from, methinks. If I may speak plainly, I find it somewhat unsettling. Unsettling? How so? Smiles do not always show joy. Is it truly possible to sate the wishes of every woman and man? Are you implying something nefarious is behind all this? Not necessarily. However, I was taught that for every laugh, somewhere a tear is shed. This country was not built without its share of sacrifice. Of that, I am certain. I understand your hesitation, Anna, but I think it is unfounded. A country who cares for its citizens is cared for in turn. It needn't be any more complex than that. So, did you discover Audib value? We did. 
The rumor on everyone's lips is that Minister Sorsley has brought House Wolfort to heal. <sighs> News travels faster than I would expect. That may very well be the reason for our audience. If so, then the time may soon be upon us to decide if we are loyal to Hyzant or otherwise. I will wander the city a little longer. I shall return soon. It's as we feared, milady. None but Hyzantians can enter the source. I see. I would have liked to see where my mother was raised, and where she spent her final days. Her final days? She died here? Many years ago. I know little else of the circumstances of her passing. I thought she escaped this thrice forsaken place. She did. She fled during the chaos of a Rosellan uprising in the midst of the Salt Iron War. It was then that she met my father, the former Archduke. And from their union I was born, a daughter of Esfrost. Then how'd she... No. Was she captured? In a way, yes. Esfrost was forced to surrender her, or take responsibility for the war's outbreak. And then... well... What a damned farce. I was lonely and heartbroken, but the pendant she left me shone the way through my darkest days. Can't tell you how sorry I am. And dark days there were. Esfrost was her home, but there were those who would not let her forget her ancestry. That she was able to ignore her detractors speaks to the strength of her character. That she excelled in her studies does even more so. You flatter me, Gila. I would never presume to do such a thing. My lord, I better have safe for you. Thank you, Eridor. Did you learn aught of interest? We did. It seems all members of the Saintly Seven have gathered at the palace. All of them? Could that have something to do with us? Perhaps, though it certainly bodes ill. In any case, it is clear that we are expected to honor the Hierophant's request for an audience. Demand may be a bet to use. Then perhaps we should return before the attendant comes to seek... House Wolford has not a single heroic deed to their name, yet the Hierophant grants them audience? As if they are worthy to stand by my side before the Holy One. What is the meaning of this? Perhaps there is no need to take offense. Perhaps you are being honored. You did bring a formidable ally into the flock, after all. That is... A curious interpretation. <laughs> the others in the Order are breathless with jealousy at your achievement. They have spoke of naught else since the news arrived. Twas no great feat. The Wolfers were lost, sniveling, begging for a hand to guide them. The others needn't know that, however. Soon you will have the ear of the goddess. You will be the envy of Hyzant. It is well past time for that decrepit Edor to relinquish his position. The future belongs to House End. At last. I shall see that you have a place in it, Denebris. What a gullible fool. I, Sorsley End, have brought Serenoa Wolfort to answer the summons of the Holy One.
Very good. Then let us begin forthwith. In the name of the Holy One and the Goddess, I shall begin her inquiry into the misappropriation of our nation's salt. Huh? An inquiry? Serenoa Woolfort shall be questioned first. Sorsley End stands accused of forsaking the Goddess's blessing, of abuse his station to indulge his own insatiable appetites. You, Serenoa Woolfort, stand accused of aiding his plot, of sullying your own hands by transporting his ill-begotten wares. I stand accused? On what grounds, Edor? Minister Sorsley, I would advise you to temper your words in the presence of the Holy One. You would dare chastise me? For generations, the Goddess has entrusted House End with her salt the lifeblood of our nation. I have treated my duty only with the utmost respect. Just hearing these outrageous charges makes my stomach churn. Really? Then I shudder to imagine your condition whilst you pen these ledgers, delivered to us by one of the soldiers from the source. I thought the numbers were quite odd, and when I compared them to the ledger at headquarters, I quickly understood why. Forgive me, Minister Sorsley. Staying silent would have meant my death. Your death? How swiftly your underlings betray you under the slightest pressure. Now, if you are very well finished, let us continue. Lord Serenoa, did you aid Sorsley in these crimes? Answer with the understanding that falsehoods will be treated as affronts to the goddess's mercy and punished accordingly. I understand. It is true. We helped Sorsley peddle his salt. Saranoa, you cur! On behalf of all Hyzant, I thank you for helping us excise this rot from our nation. Be that as it may, the fact remains you bear some responsibility in allowing that rot to fester. Such misdeeds must be answered for. You should have come to us immediately upon finding out his true nature. You had ample opportunity. I admit the fault is ours, but it was not a judgment made lightly. We had to act to protect our home and our people. It was the only way to prevent the loss of both. Night has not fallen on deaf ears. However, a crime committed under duress is still a crime. For that, I have no words. Only hope. Hope that you will find mercy for us. For my people, I beg of you. Allow our house to enter the protection of the Holy One. You love your subjects deeply, that is plain to see. Very well. I shall stake your case to the Holy One on your behalf. Saranoa Wolfort, heed well the words of the Holy One. Your house safeguards the very heart of Nozelia and the Woolfort name is known near and far for its fierceness and uphold duty. The Holy One believes it would be a great loss if your home were to fall victim to his frost session. The Saintly Seven has just recently bid farewell to one of its members. His position would be yours if you would take it. My lords. However, there is the matter the Roselle that dwell within your borders. 
the Holy One would see them returned to the flock where they belong. <laughs> Their home is in the source, our Holy Land. They are descendants of criminals and worse. Their lot is to offer themselves to the goddess so that the sins of their forebears may be cleansed. The Holy One would see all Roselle serve her in penitence, such as her will. You would have us betray the Roselle under our protection? Such mortal judgments are not her concern. The goddess has spoken. Saranoa, will you surrender the Roselle to Hyzant? I don't know. As you are doubtless aware, Lady Frederica, the vow of Lord Simon himself binds us to protect them. Alas, our house is not what it once was. Is that a reason to cast aside its honor? My father as well likely had a hand in orchestrating their protection. Ah, my friends, I apologize that we once again meet under dire circumstances. You face a difficulty, one I do not envy. Have you decided? Not yet. We will, you can be sure. They've got us by the small ones, and they know it. They made this request full aware of our history. Lest you misunderstand, allow me to illuminate your position. You are not the noble hawks you think yourselves to be. You are vultures, feeding off the scrap sorcery's corpse. You've got some nerve. I speak from experience when I say that the title of saint is not to be worn lightly. Are you prepared? Prepared? For what? Doubtless you are aching to break free of your fetters, to take wing and soar. To do that, blood must be spilled. The blood of enemy friend and silk. Your freedom lies at the end of a trail of dead. If you are not prepared to make that journey, to endure that sacrifice, then cast aside your pretensions and grovel. <sighs> grovel or bleed. Poor options both. In his time, Lord Simon protected the Roselle who fled Hyzant, and the village they established within the Wolfort Domain. Thirty years have passed since then. The Hierophant uses the illegal salt trade incident as leverage to demand those Roselle be sent to the source, where Hyzantian faith dictates they must reside. To secure the Hierophant's goodwill and the subsequent protection of House Wolfort, Saranoa has no other choice but to acquiesce. Thus, with House End ruined and a vacant position among the saintly seven to be filled, rumors of House Wolfort's ascendancy start sounding more credible than ever to the people of Hyzant. Lord Saranoa, I believe it may be in our best interest to turn over the Roselle after all. But they fought so hard to escape, Hyzant. They would never agree to return. It would be a show of good faith to the Saintly Seven and secure House Wolfort's safety. If the situation calls for force, well, we must be prepared to borrow Minister Exham's words. I... I see. Give me time to think over the matter. Where is Frederica? Oh, she... She left for the source with Prince Roland. She said she wanted to see where the Roselle lived for herself. Ah. Indeed, Byzantine law requires all Roselle to make their home at the source. 
She is most troubled over this, Lord Saranoa. Please, if you could... I understand. I will make for the source at once. Silvio Tellior, I presume? Who might you be? Someone who brings good tidings. An offer you may wish to consider. I am ruined. Who would want to offer me anything? It is Minister Edor's wish. Will you hear me out? One of the saintly seven? Then you are Hyzantian. My master is eager for your assistance, as you are quite close to House Woolfort. Thallus, thank you for making the necessary arrangements. No need to thank me. I am your Prime Minister, after all. I have made sure those with any power in Glenbrook understand their place. They will do as we command. Then everything is in place. It is time. Is there nothing I might do to aid you, brother? If there were, I would tell you. Hmm. And the Consortium, Thallus? Oh, I expect we shan't have any trouble from them. I have promised them a considerable sum to stay out of our way. Good. Now it is just a waiting game. I wonder how long the Hyzantians will last. Please, I'd only like to glimpse the goddess's sacred grounds for myself. It won't take but a moment. That may be, but outsiders are not permitted into the source for such frivolities. And you are Rizelin. You ought to understand the teachings better than anyone. <sighs> Frederica. Saranoa, forgive my impulsive behavior. There's nothing to forgive. I, too, wish to learn more of the Roselle and Hyzant. Not knowing would make my decision easier, but still I feel I must. Saranoa? From House Walfort? The very same. Lord Saranoa Walfort. The one who will assume control of the salt trade in short order, as House End once did. To that end, we are here today for a preliminary inspection of the grounds. So the rumors were true. Well, are you refusing the newest addition to the Saintly Seven entry into the source? Uh, of course not. Please, right this way. Alright, you Rosellan wretches! Time for worship! Minister Edor of the Saintly Seven himself will be giving the sermon today. You should be thankful. Heed his word, and your sins shall be cleansed. Roselle! Do you know why you are imprisoned at the Source, condemned to toil? It is because your ancestors committed the most heinous of sins long, long ago. They schemed to seize control of the salt that the Goddess bequeathed to the people of Norzelia. They seized the Source for themselves, wresting every last grain of salt from other peoples desperate for the resource. Using the salt they hoarded as a shield, they terrorized the land, 
destroying any who stood against them in their thirst for domination. Fanned by their greed, the flames of war long ravaged our land. Countless innocents lost their lives. What a terrible, arrogant people. Their cursed souls dwell within you, their progeny, to this very day. Indeed, the proof is in the very color of your hair. The same red as the blood that flowed from their countless victims. Our people sinned against the goddess. We are a detestable blight upon Norzelia. Oh, goddess of salt, please forgive us our sins. Forgive us. Do not despair, for the goddess of salt is ever merciful and kind. She grants even the worst of sinners, even you, a chance to atone. That atonement will only come through hard work here at the Source. By quenching this earth with your sweat, by giving your lives to this labor, your cursed souls will be cleansed and welcomed back to the goddess's side. Only then, when your sins have been washed away, can you hope to be reborn into a pure body and once again walk upon Norzelia. People of the Roselle, surrender your lives to the Source and give your thanks to the great goddess. O oh, goddess of salt, for you I give myself, stained with sin as I am, to the Source. Thank you for granting us the chance to atone. Thank you. Thank you. That is enough. Now take that gratitude and turn it toward your work. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. This is atonement? And the Rizal accept it as a fitting punishment? Even if that story Edor told is true, no sin warrants this kind of cruel retribution. Hyzant maintains control over Salt now. Are they then not guilty of the same crime? You are right. But this is as the Goddess of Salt commands, is it not? This is more awful than I imagined. Will you still send any Roselle in the Wolfort Domain here? Force them into a life like this? I... It isn't right. It isn't just. I don't care that it would ensure our own safety. Indeed. It would be unforgivable. What is just is constantly in flux depending on the circumstances. That said, protecting people is always the right thing to do. Wouldn't you agree, Saranoa? I feel the same as you both, but... <sighs> My apologies. I didn't mean to place all the blame on you. Still, we... we continue stumbling on the path before us. Sarah Noah and his retinue return to their domain, their every step weighed down by the heavy task Hyzant has placed upon them. Elsewhere, the newly restored kingdom of Glenbrook begins to take action under Queen Cordelia's leadership. The kingdom issues a joint proclamation with Esfrost against Hyzant, halting all trade and severing diplomatic ties with the Holy State. Esfrost and Glenbrook signed an agreement denouncing Hyzant. Word only just arrived, and it is no mere rumor. They've issued a formal proclamation. Preposterous! Usadolf must have forced Cordelia's hand. This is sure to make Hyzant cease salt shipments to the Consortium. All this denouncement will do is hamstring Esfrost and Glenbrook both. My breath. Gustadolf does not fight battles he cannot win. 
I'm certain this is part of some greater ploy. I feel all of Norzelia stands on the precipice, but of what I cannot say. Each nation is making its move. We too must take action to secure our position before it's too late. By which you mean expelling the Roselle? To protect the Wolfort domain and its people, no one would dare hold such actions against you. Lord Serenoa, you must make a decision. <sighs> I saw what it is truly like at the source. The Rosellen are forced into back-breaking labor. No decent man would condemn another to such a fate. But if we refuse the Hierophant, we will face the same dire consequences as House End. Should that happen, the Roselle would still be lost, would they not? Then you think it is right to sacrifice the Roselle to save Wolfort? No one is saying it is right, but a decision must be made. We must prioritize our own survival. That much should be clear. And survive we shall, if we can secure Hyzant's aid. Unless you know of another way? <sighs> Saranoa, I beseech you, not as one with Roselle blood in her veins, but as a person, as a Wolfort. You cannot give up the Roselle to Hyzant. I appreciate each of your arguments. But we cannot debate this forever. It is time to decide. Once more to the scales of conviction. I suspected it would come to this. We have chosen our path, and now we must see it through. <sighs> we will refuse to hand over the Roselle to Hyzant. Saranoa and company move to protect the Rosellan settlement. Noble as it may be, such an act of defiance toward Hyzant risks inviting the destruction of House Wolfort itself. Hyzant will no doubt wish to ask questions of us. We can draw out the negotiations and buy some time. Time enough to find a way to break them. We have to inform the Roselle of the situation here. I'll send an envoy and have them sheltered in Castle Wolfort. Lord Serenoa, come at once. An army marches on the Rosellan village. You can't be serious. Whose banner do they fly? We know not. And it matters not. We ride to their aid. Prepare for battle. Why? Why attack our village? Hierophant's orders were to return you to Hyzant. Ha! <laughs> Over my dead body! Did Silvio accept our offer? Indeed he did. One glimpse of the reward set him on his way to the Wolfort Domain. Then all is in order. Care to wager how House Wolfort will respond? Why bother? If they comply, we make use of them. If they resist, we crush them. Either way, we endure. How ruthless of you. Come quietly and you'll live. Keep struggling and I'll slaughter you right here. What'll it be? I'll never submit to the likes of you. Cease your assault at once. Lord Saranoa! Well, well. Tell me, Saranoa, 
What do you hope to gain by protecting the Roselle? How about you tell us what you're doing here, Silvio? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Mind your manners, Erador. I stand before you as an emissary of the Saintly Seven. So Hyzant owns you, is that it? In so many words, yes. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have some Roselle to repatriate. You'll do no such thing. House Wolford shall protect these people. So, you admit your betrayal of Hyzant. Get these traitors out of my sight, Rufus. Kill every last one if you must. I wouldn't even spare them if you asked. Stand back, everyone. Allow me to stay and fight for our freedom. Very well, but keep your wits about you. Wait, I beg you. Would you truly kill me, your ally, just to protect the Roselle? The Roselle are a tainted people. Your efforts shall bear no fruit. How dare you insult my people! Ah! How could you? Ah, I lose too many employers this way. I'd best make myself scarce. As if we'd let you get away. Word of this can't get out. Too late. Silvio sent word of your betrayal eons ago. Expect Hyzant's army on the morrow. They'll finish the job then. And so, we've bought no time at all. Lord Serenoa, I cannot thank you enough for coming to our aid. Allow us to show our gratitude with a feast. I'm afraid we haven't the time for such levity. We must tend to the wounded, of course. But fight or flee, surely we have time enough to catch our breath and fill our stomachs. Let us not spurn their kindness. The young lord's right. Steal that belly of yours. Hmm. What are you doing here, dear Roland? Jerome is a young man of formidable convictions. Indeed. He took the fate of his people in his hands and fought for their freedom. Just as you have done. I did what any lord would do to protect the sovereignty of their land, nothing more. I will not see the Roselle stripped of their humanity and treated as objects. Hyzant's goddess has always seen them as such. History has ever seen the strong rule the weak, but that does not mean it must always be so. I do not mean to excuse it. Rather, I see now that this village and all of House Wolfort suffers because of the royal family's impotence. That's not... I speak the truth and you know it. Cordelia and the people of Glenbrook cry for aid as we speak, yet here I sit, cowering behind a mask and a false name. Who would dare call me a leader? Serenoa making a valiant stand in defense of the Roselin village slays Silvio Tellior. Word of their disobedience reaches the Holy One, who sends an army to conquer the heretics. With the enemy only a day's march from their doorstep, House Wolfort and the Roselle scramble to mount one last stand. Time is of the essence.
So that's the size of it. House Wolfort has gone to such great lengths for us. It was our decision and ours alone. Your people brought nothing upon us. It is as Saranoa says. We are happy to do all that we can to protect you. Forgive me, Lady Frederica, but your mother was Lady Orlea, was she not? You came to our rescue just as she did. I cannot help but feel it was fated to be so. You knew my mother? Where did you hear of this, Jerome? I've told you not a whit about her. I overheard whispers between my mother and father long ago. Why would the elders labor to keep such information secret? Ah, uh, well, truth be told, we feared being persecuted anew. And so your greatest fears have come true. Pray, hide no longer, and tell Lady Frederica what you know. You know the history of Hyzant's oppression of the Rizal, yes? Then you know of the Rizalan revolt that occurred 30 years ago. Your mother, Lady Orlea, led that uprising at the source. She led us to freedom from Hyzant's rule, here to the Wolfort Domain. She was a woman of great courage. She even left a sizable gash upon the goddess's statue as we departed. The statue that stands tall in the source. I've never heard tell of this gash. I reckon not. Hyzant would never admit to such a thing. But we, Roselle, know the truth. I had no idea my mother was involved with the revolt, let alone led it. And it was my father who gave them this land to settle. That he did. Lady Orlea, for her part, vowed to fight on, to liberate those who remained in Hyzant. The rest of us, battered and bruised in the escape, parted ways with her and remained here to live out our days in peace. And so she eventually found her way to Esfrost, where she was taken in. I thank you for sharing such a wonderful chapter of my mother's history. I hear she rallied the people to her cause with these words. The Holy State's teachings are false. The Goddess's blessing spread across all Norzelia. The blessing of the true Goddess. The blessing that shall be the key to the chains that bind our people. How much of this have you heard? Hold. I beg you, recite those words once more. The Holy State's teachings are false. The Goddess's blessings spread across all Norzelia. The blessing of the true Goddess. The blessing that shall be the key to the chains that bind our people. So there exists a key that gives the lie to the Goddess's teachings. With that in hand, we can yet confront Hyzant. Pray tell, good elder. What might it look like? Alas! I fear I do not know. I know not to what they were referring, but my parents always said Lady Orlea left it in this village. Then the key is here. Jerome, please. We would speak with your parents at once. I'm afraid that's not possible. They both passed many moons ago. We must find this key, Lord Serenoa. I know it sounds like a fool's errand, but I feel we have no other choice. I agree. Tis a slight hope, but hope nonetheless. Let the search begin. <sighs> Elder, for the sake of the Roselle, I've come to speak with you about the key. Lord Serenoa, I am not one to speak in metaphor and code. I bid you tell me precisely what it is you seek. Might this pink pelt be the key? Ah, uh, the pelt of a pink boar. I suppose you haven't encountered them near the castle or the harbor, but they are all around us here. Ah, my mistake. 
I am just an old man, Lord Serena. I assure you, I know nothing of this key. So that wasn't the key. Perhaps I should ask the Elder about something else. Do you think this pink mirror could be the key? My word. The pink pattern suggests this mirror is quite old. Might it be an item mentioned in Rosellen legend? I never thought I'd see this again. It was a gift from my late wife. I scarcely recognized it without all the rust. Might this be the key? No, I can't say it is. But you'll never know how grateful I am that you found it. So that wasn't the key. Perhaps I should ask the Elder about something else. Could this pink rock be the key? Where did you find that? So it is the key. What do you know of it? Clearly I can deceive you no longer. I shall tell you everything. What is this strange pink rock? A simple taste shall tell you all you need to know. My word, it, it tastes of salt. No, it, it is salt. Truly, a rock of salt. Indeed, it is. And the story behind it is a long one. This crystal before you was brought here by Lady Olair. My mother brought this? And you knew of this the whole time, Elder? Yes, but the seeds of conflict ought not to be left in the sun where they are apt to grow. That was our decision. Are there any other crystals like this? There are. Lady Orlea spoke of a repository rife with salt, hidden somewhere in Norzelia. And where might that somewhere be? Unfortunately, I do not know. And I fear the knowledge passed with Lady Orlea herself. Do you know anything about this, Lady Frederica? Anything at all? Did your mother ever mention these crystals to you before? It is imperative that you remember. I apologize, but this is my first time hearing of them as well. Calm yourself, Benedict. You're scaring the lass. Calm myself? The very existence of this crystal changes the nature of our realm as we know it. If you have ever wondered why Hazat oppresses the Roselle or confines them to the source, this is your answer. So they did it all to hide the existence of the repository and monopolize salt. And not just that, anyone who finds that repository could reign over all Norzelia. Would it really have so great an influence? Salt is a divine boon, a gift from the goddess to her true believers. It is one of Hyzant's fundamental beliefs, one that due to their monopoly on both salt and the source, has appeared true all these years. But no longer. With this crystal alone, we can prove their doctrine false. Revealing their absolute teachings to be mere fabrications would shake Hyzant to its very core. There may be hope for us yet. A report, my lord. Hyzant's army is on the horizon. Lord Serenoa, if you would, I should like to be the one to speak to them. Of course, Benedict. I leave the matter in your capable hands.
Lord Saranoa, how unfortunate it is for us to meet under such circumstances. But for disobeying the Holy One's order, I must strike you down. Before that, Minister Exham, there is something we wish to show you. It is a mere fragment of something we have discovered in this village. It is a crystal made entirely of salt. What madness is this you speak? This is salt indeed. But how is this possible? It appears to have been passed down among the Roselle, and in a quantity large enough to rival the source. Unbelievable. Perhaps so, but we have proof. Salt can be found in places other than the sacred grounds beneath the goddess's feet. I am certain the implications do not escape you. What is it that you want? An audience with the Holy One. And a guarantee of safety for us and everyone in this village. It would be a waste to dispose of both the crystal and House Wolford here. Very well then. I shall secure you an audience with the Holy One. And you have my word that the village will be safe from harm. Thank you, Minister. Oh, how I wish I could see the Holy One's face contorted so. We owe our lives to this. A crystal of salt. Or salt crystal, shall we call it? The Holy State's teachings are false. The Goddess's blessings spread across all Norsalia. The blessings of the true goddess. The blessing that shall be the key to the chains that bind our people. Can you imagine if crystals like this were hidden beneath the surface of Norzelia? I cannot imagine Hyzant being blind to their existence. Salt is the lifeblood of their nation. Agreed. Which leads me to believe that they have relentlessly oppressed the Roselle to hide it. You intend to negotiate with the Holy One then? Correct. This time, we shan't fail. Not with this salt crystal in our hands. Hyzant will swear its support to us. If their teachings are truly false, could you not ask them to free the Rizal at the source? That is a risk we cannot afford to take. Our first priority is rebuilding Woolfort. Without it, we cannot even hope to protect our own Rosellan village. I do hope you understand. I see. I suppose you are right. What will you do once granted those privileges, Benedict? What will I do? I tire of being made to decide like this time and time again. Don't you, Saranoa? I do. Our choices grow ever harder, each time piercing me deeper. It's time we decide what to do for ourselves. I wish to reclaim Glenbrook. With Hyzant beside us, we can defeat Asfrost. So when we meet, I will ask the Holy State to go to war with us. House Wolford protects the Roselle in defiance of the Holy One's orders. Hyzant sends an army to punish Wolford for their disobedience. Cornered though they may be, Serenoa and his comrades discover a crystal of salt hidden in the Rosellan village. Benedict leverages its very existence in negotiations with the opposing General Exum and succeeds. The crystal holds the power to change not only Hyzant, but the entire land of Norzelia. With it in hand, Sarah Noah goes to meet the Holy One. We granted you an audience because of Mr. Exham's petition, but I did not expect you to show us this. 
A crystal made of salt. How very fascinating. It certainly does contradict the doctrine here in our blessed land. Or it would, were it real. Have you any proof that this was not created by magic or technology? Well... With all due respect, Minister, I have a question for you in return. What do you think of Asfrost and Glenbrook's decree to stop trade with Hyzant? I think it nothing more than a threat. Neither would last very long without our salt. Gustadoff is no fool. Such an edict would not come without proper countermeasures in place. Countermeasures such as another source of salt, for example. Having their own salt would make Hyzant's redundant at best, and your nation would soon find itself in dire straits without the salt tax's revenue. What is it you want from us? Your full support. Lend us your strength, and together we can defeat Esfrost, and Hyzant's ties to all nations will remain intact. You mean to start a war. The Kingdom of Glenbrook may be naught but a puppet now, but it was once your homeland. You understand this, yes? We do. Even so, my people do not wish for war. We must try to resolve this peacefully first. Do you think Gustadolf can be reasoned with? Need I remind you that it was he who invaded Glenbrook? He is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Be that as it may, neither my people nor soldiers will accept it as a reason to go to war. Then I shall give you one. For I am the second son of King Regna. Roland Glenbrook. You live. There is no mistaking that face. Huh. So the prince lives to slay his kingdom's invader. We could not ask for a better reason. If you need a just cause to go to war, let it be me. We must stop Gustadolf. <laughs> it all makes sense now. Oh, Holy One, have you heard? Pray, tell me what you would have us do. It shall be done. Wolfort, Prince Roland, heed the words of the Holy One. The Holy State of Hyzant stands with you. The Holy One would see you defeat Esfrost and restore peace to Norzelia. Our nation shall spare no effort in your fight against Gustadolf. From this day forth, we support Prince Roland as our commander and Lord Serenoa as one of the saintly seven. Me? A saint? We are brethren now. We ride to war together. Well, you look at that. We secured Hyzant's support, and you even got yourself named one of the Saintly Seven. We also received a signed document stating the Roselle and Wolford are left in our care. Good going, lad. Oh, it is Benedict and Roland to whom we owe this victory. Everyone here has suffered so much on my behalf. My weakness and worthlessness have brought pain and misfortune to you all. And for that, I must apologize. You've got nothing to apologize for. I already told you. House Wolfort's the sword and shield of the crown. I've decided that I must press forward. Even if it means crawling forth on my hands and knees. I ask for your support as always. I know I will need it. And you shall have it. I am with you every step of the way, my lord. <sighs> Is something the matter, Frederica? No. My apologies for worrying you. Now, to battle! 
We take back Glenbrook with our own hands. Did you know about this salt crystal, Exan? No. Neither did I know of Prince Roland's survival. I thought he had perished. Likewise, what did you make of the Holy One's decree? Hyzant is a grand nation, but unfortunately not one blessed with a bountiful harvest of anything other than salt. Were we not able to trade, there is no doubt our nation would wither to naught. We have relied solely on salt for much too long, and that reality was made painfully clear to us. <laughs> Harsh words, but true nonetheless. Do you think we can triumph over Esfrost? Mark my words, Minister Camso. There is no fight Exham Marshal cannot win. The Holy One has ordered for us to deliver our Elfric to House Wolfort. And here I thought your research results to be top secret. What a curious turn of events. Perhaps the Hierophant determined it a good chance to test them in the field. They could easily sink in as frosty ship or two. And yet I see not a trace of a smile on you. I never wanted to build weapons for war. <laughs> yet you don't think twice about toying with human life. How ironic. How dare you! Have a wonderful day. The audacity of Edor's dog. Are you certain it's wise to return to Esfrost alone, Your Grace? You are needed here. If Sikris's missive is to be believed, I am afraid matters are far too grave to be left to anyone else. Svarog's deception is nearing its climax. His ill-gotten profits are being used to build a weapon of untold destructive power. Our anonymous source from the manufactory hinted at as much. Svarog is bold to have carried out his plan this far. Death Snell? What's that? Let the adult speak, my dear. If we're to be wed, then there should be trust between us. How long do you intend on treating me like a child? Very well. Tell her, Thallus. If you insist, brother. This weapon combines the powerful explosives developed by Dragan with Esfrost's mastery of steelcraft. Although yet to be tested, this cannon is said to have the power to breach even Hyzant's walls. The goddess's shield would buckle under a single blast. But the shield is impregnable. I have heard nothing of this. Do you think so little of your general? A general is to win me victory, as and when I command it. Svarog's intent isn't to bring Hyzant to heal, however. He means to use the cannon against Brother. But the fool was so blinded by ambition that he never saw the strings guiding his every deed. Fool that he may be, he served his purpose well. The cannon could not have been made without his engineers and Dragan's research. He will die secure in the knowledge that his bloodline contributed to the glory of Esfrost. Sadly. He shall not live to see his work completed. With it, we shall do what our forebears could not. The goddess's shield shall yield before Esfrost's might and ingenuity. If we can even approach the walls, brother, the trade embargo will ensure that Hyzant is especially wary of our actions. On the contrary, their focus will turn inward. With not else to leverage their influence with, they will take measures to see that none of their precious salt escapes their borders. 
There may be some gnashing of teeth, to be sure, but it will only be in an attempt to hide their inner turmoil. Erika, muster a force and march to the Hierophant's palace at once. Deliver to Hyzant my final demands. As you wish, brother. I shall gather what news I can of the Saintly Seven's machinations. Thallus, you will remain in Glenbrook. Conduct yourself as if I had never left. You hardly need to ask, brother. That is all. Now go. Even his own flesh and blood are but tools to be used and then discarded when their purpose is served. He has faith only in himself. Such has ever been his way. Esfrost and Glenbrook remained strong after declaring a trade stop with Hyzant. Gustadolf sends Erika to Hyzant to deliver his ultimatum, and dispatches an army to Glenbrook to increase the pressure on the Holy State. Hyzant, under the banner of Prince Roland, sends Minister Serenoa Wolfort of the Saintly Seven to prepare for retaliation. Softly but surely, Norzelia descends into war once more. Those are the Archduke's wishes. I implore you not to forget that this is his final offer. Come to think of it, I heard that Wolfort was added to your saintly ranks. Where might he be? I'm afraid I cannot answer that. The dealings of the Saintly Seven are our business and ours alone. How disappointing. I had hoped to congratulate him on his promotion. That wretched woman. Those are hardly wishes. Esfrost all but demands us open the source to restore our diplomatic relations. The duchy fears neither a lack of salt nor the goddess's shield. We can assume they have a plan in mind. Then this was no more than a ploy to stall for time. We had best expedite House Wolford's plans to take the capital. Minister Exam, send word to Minister Saranoa. lend us Hyzant's new weapon. Yes, it was a directive from the Holy One. The weapon is one Minister Lila developed in secret. I compressed a vast quantity of magic into crystal form. We call this weapon Elfric. The blast crystals have yet to be perfected, but they can decimate a castle wall easily enough. We thank you for your support. Be forewarned that their power makes him unwieldy in an average battle. They are not meant to be used on people. Furthermore, we are only giving you a single blast crystal. Regardless, I am certain it will come in handy while recapturing Whiteholm Castle. Its incomplete nature makes it regrettably tricky to use, but Milo should be able to take care of that for you. Use them both wisely. I am Milo. A dancer by trade, but assistant to the Saintly Seven on occasion. 
I shall serve you, Minister Saranoa, until we reclaim the capital. You sure you'll be okay? You needn't worry. It isn't my first time flirting with danger. Mm. A Hyzantian spy? Very likely. The blast of the Elfric should help you catch the enemy unawares. Both my army and Minister Camsells will join in the attack. Can we entrust command to you, Minister Cerebro? Most certainly. And the crystal will be key in our plan to reclaim Glenbrook. You have made a grave error in allowing thieves to raid the Archives, Constable Sigris. Forgive me. My guards gave chase as soon as they noticed intruders, but they'd already fled beyond our reach. What did they take? Luckily, they were unable to gain intro. We keep our more sensitive texts. All they were able to make off with was a single book penned by the late Lady Orlea. Orlea? She left behind a message of sorts? She'd better be passed on to Lady Frederica when she came of age, but it seems those wishes were forgotten. Thalos or Erica must have hidden it from her. They derived no greater pleasure than from tormenting her. Do we know what was written in this book? No. Storage records indicate it was protected by some arcane seal. It must be of some significance. If she would go to such lengths to protect it from prying eyes. Perhaps something to do with the Rosellan liberation, for which she fought so fiercely. Or perhaps it is not but a mother complaining to her daughter of what she they both despise. I shall send a party to hunt down the thieves at once. No need. Such ruffians are unlikely to be in the employ of our foe. No doubt they were simply looking to loot us to fill their purses. It is more important that we dispose of Svarog and finish the Nell with all haste. Dispatch your soldiers there. By your grace. Benedict asked me to scout out Teliorn where the Esfrosty soldiers are stationed. But I hardly see any around. Why did he ask me to come here in the first place? I doubt it would matter in reclaiming the capital. But orders are orders. I should report back. Ah, tidings from Erica. She says Hyzant refused our final offer. You seem surprised. There was no way Hyzant would agree to open the source. I know that, but the negotiations were meant to buy us time. Yet it seems their soldiers are already on the move. Damn it all! This wasn't supposed to happen. If you play with fire, you get burned. Now we have no recourse but to meet them in battle without the Archduke. So it has come to war, then? Hmm. We just have to beat them at their own game. Their newest saint is heading the vanguard. You must be delighted that a former retainer to the crown is coming to visit. Right, Cordelia? Enough, Thallus. I won't allow such impudence toward the queen. Queen? This child is nothing more than a puppet. And I believe the impotent one here is you, Avlora. A general has no right telling the Prime Minister what to do. I had no idea the Prime Minister's job was to torment the weak. Enough, General Avlora. I will answer the Prime Minister. As the Queen of Glenbrook, I shall protect my kingdom until my dying breath no matter who may stand against me. 
It appears your impudence is contagious, Avalora. Your charge knows not how powerless she is. Worry not, Your Majesty. I shall protect you. Because I am to wed the Archduke? Because you are a warrior. One who does not give up, even if she must fight her battles alone. I was an orphan. I never knew my parents. I entered the army to make a place for myself. So I know better than anyone the pain of having to do everything on your own. Allow me to bear my heart to you as well, General of Laura. As the last heir to the throne of Glenbrook, I do not intend to let Kustudolf have his way. You mean to strike down the Archduke? But I lack the power to do so. Have you heard of the Royalists? The aristocrats who were aid to my father? I have. I also heard they secretly indulged in bribes and the like for personal gain. That man Patriot was cozying up to the Archduke not seconds after King Regna's beheading. Their kind knows no loyalty. Indeed. But Gustadolf has not given any of them a position in his court, so they have fallen on hard times. I want to ask Patriot and the other royalists for their help. Are you mad? No doubt they would wholeheartedly embrace you as their symbol, but only for their own purposes. I understand that. But their years in service to the Crown have earned them great influence in politics. I must have their support if I'm to reclaim Glenbrook. Is it possible for you to rein them in? Not alone. But with you, General of Laura, I can. They lack military might. If you accompany me, I could sway them to my cause. Please, General, lend me your strength. As an Esfrosty general, I simply cannot turn a deaf ear to what you have told me. Did you not think I would tell the Archduke of your plans? Of course I did. But... I refused to stand idly by as a mere decoration. So if it meant earning your trust... I was willing to show you that I wish to protect Glenbrook by any means necessary. You took a gamble. I had to. For it is not status or reward that moves you. <laughs> so you bet on my honor, and refusal would sully my name forever. However, safeguarding the kingdom comes first. Fighting at your side will have to wait. General of Laura! A word of advice, Your Majesty. Both Hyzant and the Archduke are veterans of war. The fight will not be an easy one, and may rage on for many years. Even so, I will not falter. I must do this for my father and brothers. An admirable resolve. One which I will see fulfilled. I shall be your sword and shield. My queen. Thank you, General of Laura. I apologize, but are you suggesting we destroy the dam around Telior Reservoir to start a flood? The capital city was built on the banks of the Norzelia River. Breaking the dam surrounding Lake Telior upstream will allow us to submerge a majority of the city. Flooding the town will throw their army into disarray, which should allow us to take the place by storm. Lake Telior is a man-made reservoir. You'll be able to brew with a blast crystal. Huet scouted the area earlier and reported seeing very few sentries. 
proof enough this is outside the Archduke's calculations? No. The damage will be too great. The means would not justify the end, Benedict. We can't afford to lose. I agree with Roland. There is already far too much blood on our hands. Perhaps it's worth speaking with the people and gaining their understanding. Unless we reclaim, it's unlikely they'll understand or support our actions. We must take the capital and show our strength and resolve first. So that means you stand by Benedict then. If we have a sure shot at winning, we need to take it. No matter the consequences. We can't lose the war. We just can't. Teleor Reservoir is the kingdom's water source. The dam was constructed to protect the people from floods. I doubt they would ever forgive us should we choose to destroy it for war. Glenbrook thrives because of that water. And to use it otherwise is inexcusable. Brute strength isn't the only way to reclaim the city. We can strike at night and defeat their commanding officers. There are ways to slip into the castle unseen. If you have used it before, there is a chance it has been sealed off since. There is more than one route. You needn't worry. So you mean not to use the Blast Crystal? No, I do. After we sneak in, we can sink Esfrost's warship. It would close off their escape route. Our first priority should be ensuring the people's safety. We cannot allow them to be taken hostage. It would restrict our options as well. She's got a point. But how do we take the capital back after that? We could use the Blast Crystal to destroy the bridge connecting the town and the castle. The enemies would be stuck within the walls. That would certainly mitigate the damages to the citizens. If we encircle the castle, we could negotiate with them. We could ask them to yield, free Glenbrook, and re-establish the trade between our nations. I am certain we can find a way to make both parties agree. Negotiate? I understand your sin, the wishes held therein. Allow me to ask once more. Shall we shatter the dam around Lake Telior and flood the town? Sneak in under the guise of night, sink their ships and slay their commanding officers? Or destroy the bridge, safeguard the people, and negotiate with the enemy? Fetch the scales. It is time we decide our path. You will steal into the castle and defeat their commanding office. I see. So Wolfort chooses to walk a wicked path. That makes you no different than Esfrost. We do not regret the choice we have made. Then it is time to see it done. It may very well be our best chance at victory. I must return to Hyzant and see Minister Camsell. Next we meet, you will have both of our armies at your backs. You have my thanks. We cannot afford to lose this fight. For Norzelia. I thought this battle was for Glenbrook. This is not a simple struggle for power, Minister Snow. The Goddess, the Source, Iron. The War of Thirty Years Ago comes back to haunt us because the old cling to relics of the past. Norzelia needs to be born anew. Right now. The people of every nation are searching for a young standard bearer to guide them. A standard bearer? Yes, people like you and me. This war is a fine opportunity for us to show our worth to Norzelia. <laughs> House Wolfort and Hyzant join forces and begin planning Glenbrook's recapture. But Norzelia River and the Esfrosti armies in their way, retaking the capital will be no easy feat.
Roland proposes they infiltrate Whiteholm Castle and take out the enemy commanders. Though a risky game, it is well worth it if they can destroy them all in one fell swoop. Serenoa and the others agree to the plan. In support of House Wolford, Hyzant's great army marches forth for the first time since the Salt Iron War. Prince Roland, there is something I'd like to ask you before our mission. The Nasket. Why do you really want to infiltrate Whiteholm Castle? To prevent needless harm to the capital, of course. And to exact revenge with my own hands. Is that it? Roland, you know you can confide in me. I... I want to save Cordelia. She's bound to get caught up in the violence if we launch a full-scale attack. But if we can sneak into the castle, we might be able to get her out. I know this is a war to reclaim our kingdom, but I cannot rid myself of such selfish desires. Contemptuous, is it not? I understand the burden of leadership. Perhaps it would be easier if we could but purge ourselves of our hearts. But as your vassal, nay, as your friend, I would not want the company of one so void of emotion. We will save Queen Cordelia. Together. My friend, I cannot thank you enough. There's but a single longship docked? It would take one blast crystal to destroy and their escape route with it. Heard Hyzant send in a massive army. Are we gonna be all right without the Archduke? I wouldn't worry. Not with General Avlora on our side. Her I trust. Thallus and Erica on the other hand. <laughs> Not so loud. Who knows what they'd do to you if they heard that. So Gustadoff isn't here, but Avlora, Thallus, and Erika are. Minister Saranoa, Minister Camsell, and myself, what troops we could muster. I am grateful for the reinforcements. As you should be. Hyzat hasn't mobilized this large of a force in 30 years. There's no need for delicacy with this many soldiers at your disposal. We could fell the enemy with a frontal assault. Though it seems you have some other eyes in mind. We do. The city and its people will suffer greatly should we brute force our way in. Instead, we will infiltrate Whiteholm and take out the Asfrosti commanding officers. And how do you plan to do that? Via some secret passage none but your own? Just so. The same way we snuck into the castle when the capital fell. An effective strategy, I'm sure. Though recent intelligence, Gustadolf has returned to his homeland. In which case, we shall target Prime Minister Thallus and Erika, and General Avlora. We'll have Milo destroy their ship with the Blast Crystal to prevent them from escaping. <sighs> what a devious trick. My favorite kind. 
The castle will be easy to take with those three disposed of. Very well then. We shall do it your way. We would like the two of you to distract the Asfrosti forces with your armies. When their attention shifts to the front, we will slip into the... Very well. May fortune smile upon us all. Hyzant's forces have entered Castle Woolfort. It won't be long until House Woolfort makes their move. Meaning they're coming here? It's hard to believe they'll soon be in the capital again. My queen, I must advise against considering them allies. Lord Serenoa is now one of Hyzant's saintly seven. Not to mention they're raising arms against the seat of their former sovereign. They want justice. They want the royal blood that runs through your veins. So you seek to make a puppet of me as well? I do. But you needn't worry. They will not breach this castle so long as I protect it. Indeed. A battle is upon us, but fear not. I shall protect you. General of Lore speaks true. Yet I still want to believe in House Wolfort. Brother, give me strength. Hyzant and Wolfort begin to put their strategies into action. To draw the eye of the Asfrosti forces, the Hyzantian army encircles the crown city of Glenbrook. Meanwhile, Serenoa and his retinue, Elfric in hand, will steal into Whiteholm Castle. Hyzant's forces are on the move! They're coming for the capital! To your stations! Minister Exham's created quite the distraction for us. Let's make for the harbor first. Anna says there's only one longship there. We can use the blast crystal to sink it and cut off their retreat. There are fewer soldiers than I expected. They want us to load up art and jewels from the merchants? What nonsense is this? Lady Erica commanded it. I'd wager she plans to cut and run if things get ugly. It's ridiculous, I know, but imagine what she'd do to us if she found out Bade. Gah, fine, fine. Get the bloody merchants. Perfect. I'll disguise myself as a merchant and search the ship. Once I find out where they've stationed soldiers, we can get Milo aboard. Let me go. They won't look twice at me. I would rather you not take that risk, my lord. You and Eridor have too much gravitas, and I'm best suited for the task. And what about me? The task I need you for won't come until later. I understand. Good luck, then. Hide yourselves. We'll find each other after. That man will stop at nothing to win he. Consider me charmed. How are things progressing with the ship? We've learnt the enemy's position. If we can draw their attention, we should be able to get Milo aboard. Hey! You there, merchant! Sorry about this. I'll inform my commander you'll need reparations. What the... Who are you? Damn! Intruders! 
Sound the alarm! Damn, we were careless. How's Wolfart? How did they get past our defenses? Thallus. Of course you would side with them, Frederica. <laughs> this is Cordelia's doing, isn't it? She will answer for this when I bring her your heads! How thoughtful he saved us the trouble of looking for him. We can sink him along with the ship and continue as planned. Indeed. Let's find a way in and get that blast crystal in place. That takes care of that. I'll set up the blast crystal. Erica. Thallus. They've killed us if we hadn't acted to protect ourselves. It had to be done. Benedict's right. It's no more than they deserved for destroying so many lives to get their way. You mean the same way we destroy any enemies who oppose us? <sighs> A fair point. What does it matter? We won. Everything is ready. You need only say the word. Detonate the crystal at once. With the enemy distracted by the explosion, we'll go after Avalor. Do it, Milo. How I wish there had been another way. I'm sorry. I know how you hated how soft I could get, Erica. Farewell. This frosty army's in chaos. Seems our plan went off without a hitch. Minister Exham was to withdraw his troops the moment the ship exploded. Even supposing Avlor was out on the battlefield, I expect she'll be returning to the castle. Then let's go take her down. Queen Cordelia will be with Avlora, I'm sure of it. We must rescue her. There's a good chance the enemy will use the queen as a shield. We could be Her Majesty in grave danger. Hmm. That is a risk we have to take. Yes, my lord. After infiltrating Whitehorn Castle under Roland's guidance, House Wolfort defeats Erica and Thallus and blows up the ship that was the enemy's only means of escape. Now, all that stands in their way of recapturing the Crown City is General Avlora. Serenoa and his retinue proceed through the castle in search of her. There they are. Cordelia! House Woolfort, I cannot say I am surprised. General of Laura, release Queen Cordelia and surrender yourself to us. Thallus and Erica are dead. Your ship is destroyed. There is no one coming to your aid. Nowhere for you to run. Maxwell! I knew you were alive! What soldier worth her salt would forfeit her position without a fight? And even if he was a fool, Thallus was our Prime Minister. I am obligated to avenge him. Then draw your weapon. Wait! General of Laura is not an enemy to the Kingdom. She has sworn herself to my service and to Glenbrook's protection. So she can manipulate you to her own ends, no doubt. No. The oath she spoke to me was true. 
Queen Cordelia. Please, lay down your arms. All of you. I will not. Have you forgotten who forswore this kingdom and its royal family in the first place? Who invaded the Crown City and killed the King and Franny? Who exploited Glenbrook with no regard for its people? We of Esfrost. Tell me what you would call that if not evil. And I suppose thieving into the Crown City and attacking without forewarning is justice. I do not make such claims. And I know I cannot. Until victory has been won. <laughs> Pretty words. So the winner takes it all. The castle, the queen, the right to claim justice. Is that what you desire? That is all I have ever desired. We have won. You are finished, General of Laura. How have I failed? Stop! Please, you've already won! No, not yet. We cannot stand before the people and declare victory while our enemy yet lives. This is the reality of war, Queen Cordelia. Do me the honor of witnessing my final moments. General! Glenbrook demands justice. Step aside, your majesty. Then I beg you, as Queen of Glenbrook, do not do this. Spare her, please. I cannot bear this cruelty. As you wish. Let us end this war and spill no further blood in its name. But the names of our murdered kin still cry out for vengeance. For them, I will see her dead. Wait! Is that...? Roland, is that you? Roland Glenbrook. Back from the dead. Let us settle this once and for all, Avlora. What are you saying, Prince Roland? There is no need for you to take such a risk. No, but indulge me this one last time. Allow me to finish it on my terms. <sighs> Very well. <laughs> so you wish to duel me before the throne? Fine. I accept your challenge. Not here. Come. This is where I defeated Maxwell. <laughs> you have a penchant for poetic justice, I see. Mock me for being sentimental if you wish. I care not. No, Princeling. It is not something I hold in contempt. But your sentimentality will not save you from the same fate as your master. Victory is mine. You fight well. Well enough to protect her. To protect Cordelia in my stead. <clears throat> General of Laura!
Roland casts off his mask and defeats Avlora in a duel, though her body falls into the Norzelia River and is lost. After a momentary withdrawal, the Hyzantian forces attack the Crown City again when word of General Avlora's demise reaches them. The Asfrosti army folds quickly without anyone to lead them. House Wolfort defeats the remaining guards and seizes control of the castle. They secure the Crown City just as dawn breaks, though the battle has not left the city or its people unscathed. It is finished. But the road ahead is long and arduous. Glenbrook's wounds run deep. So deep it makes me wonder if the kingdom will ever recover. We will make sure it does. There is nothing the combined might of the Glenbrook royal line and House Wolfort cannot achieve. Right you are. How glad I am to have you by my side, old friend. Overwhelmed by the forces of House Wolfort, Esfrost's troops are scattered and driven from the Crown City. Glenbrook, at last, is free. Several days after this fateful battle, Queen Cordelia announces her intent to abdicate the throne and make way for another. Roland Glenbrook, his face no longer hidden from the world, will take his rightful place at the seat of power. With the prince's friends having only just finished grieving his death, and his enemies having only just finished toasting to it, this news shocks the foundations not only of Glenbrook, but of Norzelia itself. Prince Roland has proven his pedigree by storming the walls of Whiteholm and routing his enemies, delivering his sister to safety in the process. The prince becomes king and condemns the schemes of Gustadolf, making known Esfrost's plot to usurp the throne. However, the people's reaction to this news is not quite a chorus of approval. It is plain that the ravages of war and the shame of subjugation have left an indelible mark on the once prosperous nation. Although the battle for Glenbrook is behind them, Serenoa and the rest of the city's liberators must make ready for a struggle of an entirely different sort. Congratulations on returning to your rightful throne, King Roland. Ah, you returned. My friend, a word. Yes. I am honored to have had you by my side on this journey. To be able to call you friend. As am I, Roland. Your Majesty. Representatives from Hyzant have arrived. We shan't make undue demands of your time, King Roland. We've simply come to say farewell. Without your aid, my people would still be under Esfrost's iron rule. Glenbrook owes you a debt of gratitude. Consider the debt paid. The knowledge we gleaned of Elfric's capabilities was more than worth our troubles. Indeed, it surpassed my every expectation. 
The Holy One is sure to be pleased with the results. Your Majesty, can we trust you to lift the embargo and keep Esfrost subdued? Of course. Lord Wolfort has promised his full cooperation in that regard. Your Majesty, lest you misunderstand your friend's position, allow me to make one matter abundantly clear. Minister Saranoa is of the Saintly Seven. He is not to serve at your whims, but by the grace of the Hierophant. I understand, but he is also a Lord of Glenbrook. More importantly, he is my friend. As such, I would ask for his assistance in the days ahead, as I have in days past. Your Majesty, it is plain that the friendship between you two runs deep. However, the rules of politics are old and immutable. And what does the Lord himself think of his new position? Of course, I am grateful for the honor Hyzant has bestowed upon me. I will do all in my power to serve both the Hierophant and King Roland with all faithfulness. In other words, the Hierophant does not have your full loyalty. Well, I... Glenbrook and Hyzant are to be two nations united in purpose. Surely it is reasonable that Lord Saranoa acts in service to both? Perhaps King Roland and the Hierophant should discuss my lord's role together. You are right, of course. It is not our place to assume the goddess's intent. Very well. I hope to meet with the Holy One as soon as my duties allow. I expect busy days ahead for you, Saranoa. Be prepared. Certainly, Your Majesty. Milo shall stay in Glenbrook for the time being. If there is aught she can assist you with, consider her at your complete disposal. Remember, Milo, that you are the symbol of friendship between our two nations. <laughs> but of course, I live to serve, Minister. And with that, we shall take our leave. May we meet again soon. They leave us with a spy. It seems we still haven't won their trust entirely. Whatever secrets they uncover will only attest to our commitment to the friendship between us. Still, their actions speak volumes. Their aid has not come without expectation of just recompense. Already they seek to make Lord Saranoa their puppet. But we need Hyzant's aid to crush Esfrost. By the same token, we cannot resist Hyzant without Esfrost's might. And once Esfrost is laid low, Glenbrook will have served its purpose. What then would stop Hyzant from tightening their grip? Just as they did with the Rosal. The injustice I saw at the source is not something I'll soon forget. If you require proof of Hyzant's true nature, you need only remember. I know. I know. This country is my home. Built by my father and the kings before him. Safeguarded by my sister and generations of my forebears. I will rebuild it. Restore its glory and its pride. We will not be treated as dogs at the end of a leash. For now, we must look within. Only after that work is done should we look without. It's you. May we speak for a moment? Of course, brother. My apologies. I'm so happy you're alive. It's just... I believed you dead for so long. 
I understand. But hiding from the world was the only way. You needn't explain. I don't blame you in the least. About General Avlora. Avlora. She was... She was a servant of Esfrost. Our enemy. I know. And you know there was no room for mercy. Not if we wanted to win back Glenbrook. Not if I wanted to rescue you from Esfrost's clutches. However, I thought you deserved to know. She did have parting words. She asked me to protect you in her stead. It seems she cared for you, in her own way. She did. She was harsh, but always kind. Our scouts are yet searching for her, but her wounds were grave. I fear when we find her, she will. Uh. Cordelia? What's wrong? I... I'm fine. I simply need to rest. Fine? I think not. I'll call a healer. No, no. I just... This whole time... I refuse to show even a moment of weakness. It seems my efforts have taken a toll. You did well, sister. Now you may relinquish your burdens. I'm here, and I won't leave you again. But please, visit the infirmary. Some bed rest will surely set both of our minds at ease. Thank you. I'm glad to see your trials haven't stripped you of your kindness. Welcome home, brother. So, the Crown City has fallen. I see. And what of General Avlora? She fell into the Norzelia River, and has not been seen since. And my siblings, Thalos and Erika? They died, fighting bravely in battle. My condolences, Your Grace. I understand. I have fewer pieces on the board than ever now. Pieces? Really is true what they say about him? It seems I was wrong to think that Hyzant would remain idle. Or was my more grievous heir to be taken in by the Prince's false death? Hmm. Regardless, I was a fool to show House Wolford any mercy. Your Grace, reports from the battlefield tell of an unknown weapon being brought to bear against our forces. Oh? Continue. They say it sank one of our ships in a blast of purple. Hmm. Our iron, our pride, torn apart like sheets of parchment before a storm. We mustn't allow Hyzant to think they've won the upper hand. I intend to answer their weapon with one of my own. After retaking Whiteholm Castle, Roland assumes the throne. Joy over the return of the line of Glenbrook sweeps the kingdom. Yet not everyone is quick to welcome Roland back with open arms. Life under as frosty rule treated them well, and they suspect him to be naught but a figurehead of a puppet regime. Roland's absence, it seems, made room for discord among his subjects to flourish.
So that is what happened in my absence. Yes. Gustadolf was a clever ruler. After the invasion, Patriot and his royalists cozied up to Espros in order to protect themselves. Gustadolf used them to his every advantage. He stripped them of their privileges and left them nothing but their governing responsibilities. I don't think Patriot much cared for that, but it did ensure everything continued smoothly without interrupting the people's lives. Now I understand why there was little unrest after the occupation began. A clean, effective takeover by a well-seasoned commander. But all the while, he was preparing to face the next conflict. Wait, does he intend to march on Hyzant next? I believe so. I wish I could be more specific. But the Goddess's shield cannot protect the Holy State's capital from Esfrost. Not anymore. He said it will all be over once the Death Snell is ready. What is this Death Snell? A new weapon born from the coupling of his frosty ironworking and explosive projectiles. Thallus claimed it is powerful enough to break through the goddess's shield. To think Esfrost is capable of creating such a monstrosity. Ah, so much for their reign of peace. Taking over Glenbrook was only the first move in a bigger gambit to seize the source. I am disturbed to learn of Gustadolf's plan. But rebuilding our capital must take priority. Very well. We should investigate the extent of the damage and discuss how best to proceed from there. House Wolfort will lend whatever aid you need. Thank you, Sarah Noah. But since you are one of their saintly seven now, I'd ask you to keep an eye on Hyzant as well. Cordelia? Apologies. A brief spell of dizziness. I have been looking everywhere for you, Your Highness. A patriot. I do not recall giving you leave of the infirmary. Your injuries are still healing. Would you undo all the trouble I went through to get you the best of care? Pray return to the infirmary at once. It wouldn't do to push yourself, Cordelia. Rest now. Leave everything to me. All right. We got a pretty good understanding of the damage in the capital, my lord. It's... Uh... A tad more than we were expecting. I see. Then we must make haste with repairs. Let's report this to Hyzant and see what aid they can give us. Was there anything of note besides damage? There ain't an easy way of putting this, but not everyone's exactly pleased to hear Prince Roland's returned. Esfrost exempted Glenbrook's subjects from the salt tax. Likely a bid to get in everyone's good graces. And a damn good one at that. But more than that, the so-called freedom Gustadolf brought to the kingdom seems to have made a splash. He threw out the old ways and made it so anyone could better their lot in life depending on their ability instead of their birthright. Just as in Esfrost. Then the people must have looked quite favorably upon Gustadolf's rule. I wager folks ain't too pleased to see us, since they figure it means things will go back to how they used to be. Uh, Roland surmised as much. We must do something to show the people his is a return worth celebrating. Anna, have you looked into the state of affairs in the castle? Yes. The head of the Royalists, Minister Patria, is extending his influence. He made quite the name for himself, even under Gustadolf. Though he seems eager enough to support King Roland, he was just as eager to serve the Archduke. I do not believe we can trust him. Distinguished members of House Wolfort, how hard you are all working to rebuild our capital. What a delightful thing to see. Minister. You do us a great honor visiting us out of all the many other responsibilities that must vie for your attention. Oh, come now, do not think yourself so insignificant. 
The entire kingdom owes you its thanks, myself included, of course. We are so grateful for House Wolfert's aid, even though you now serve a different master. We are only doing what any of King Roland's loyal vassals would. Ah, oh, speaking of the king, I'm afraid we've a bit of a problem. His Majesty seems to be entertaining thoughts of retaliating against Esfrost. But the people have had their fill of war. And I'm sure you're already aware the people look upon the royal line with disfavor. <sighs> I only beg you take every care going forward. A warning. Even so, there is naught we can do but focus on rebuilding. Indeed. Let us return to the king and apprise him of our progress. I would walk the city with Gila a bit longer and speak with the people. As you wish. But this is not the capital you knew. Be careful, my love. There are more who accepted Esfrost's rule than I imagined. Glenbrook's history is long. Yet, that is why hierarchy and precedent hold sway. This is a stubborn land, my lady, not given to easy change. Though Archduke Gustadolf, acting in the name of freedom, granted privilege after privilege to the powerful, for people used to Glenbrook's rigid customs, I suppose that sort of change must have been too seductive to resist. Perhaps, but his freedom was not but greed and cruelty. Lady Frederica, I've been searching everywhere for you. A Wolfort messenger. Did you run all this way? What's happened? My lady. I hail from Castle Wolford, bearing tidings of Lord Seymour. Has he awakened? He has. He is in high spirits and recovering well. And he is most pleased to hear of the capital's recapture. He bids you visit Castle Wolford so he can honor you himself. Oh, I must bring these glad tidings to Saranoa at once. How long it has been since I've seen him smile. There is one more bit of news I have for you, my lady, but it is not so happy. Is there some sort of trouble in the Wolfort Domain? Bandits are laying waste to the Rosellen village. To our shame, Castle Wolfort does not have enough soldiers to stop this. We would beg Lord Serenoa's wisdom in this matter. The enemy must be powerful indeed. We cannot leave the Rosellen village defenseless. Let us inform the others. Messenger, with us. Well, well, things are about to get interesting. A coronation ceremony. Certainly there are more important matters to focus on right now. A coronation is important to assuage the people's fears and restore their faith. Besides which, it is the royalists most fervent wish. A kingdom is only truly as strong as people believe it to be. And right now the world believes Glenbrook weak. The ceremony will be a display to the contrary. Is this truly the remedy our situation calls for? Right now I imagine the people care only for where their next hot meal will come from. Rest assured, sire, House Wolford will see your subjects shan't go hungry. But trust me when I say nothing will hasten Glenbrook's return to her former glory, so much as announcing the return of Regna's rightful heir. To win your subjects' hearts, you need do nothing but ascend to your position upon the throne. You mean sit my royal backside on a fancy chair? In a manner of speaking. A king's duty is first and foremost serving as his kingdom's symbol. 
You needn't trouble yourself with day-to-day -day governance. We will assume that burden. After all, you have only just been crowned. There will be no ceremony. The people will tell us what they need, and you will listen to them, Patriot. That is my command. <laughs> As you wish, King Roland. How fair things, Huet. Have the relief supplies been given to those who need it? Well, we had received a sizable shipment of goods from Hyzant, but there are complaints. It seems very few of those goods have made it into the hands of the people. And why is that? We aren't certain, though apparently Patriot and the Royalists involve themselves with the distribution. Damn those Royalists! They cannot be left to their own devices. House Wolfort and Minister Exham's forces have reclaimed the Crown City. And not only that, they have dealt a heavy blow to the Esfrosty forces in killing Thallus and other commanding officers. We couldn't have hoped for a better outcome. Oh, to see Gustadolf's face when he hears the news. Now he'll have no choice but to come crawling to us on hands and knees, begging for salt. Though... This could be our chance to crush the duchy once and for all. Just because they are licking their wounds does not make them easy prey. They still have their iron, after all. Ha! <laughs> iron! We can get iron. All we need do is make Glenbrook hand over the Grand Norzellian mines to us. A paltry price to pay for our bountiful aid in their restoration of the Crown City. The Grand Norzellian Mines. The spark that lit the flame of Esfrost's aggression. But why go through the trouble to seize an iron source when they have all the iron they could ever need? I should have Milo look into the matter. Minister Edor? Well, regardless, we control the salt. I say we bide our time until Esfrost admits they are defeated. Besides, Glenbrook seeks our aid in their reconstruction efforts, do they not? Yes. King Roland and Minister Serenoa have both asked for help and sent reports detailing the extent of the damage to the Crown City. Send forth a veritable bounty. To Minister Serenoa of the Saintly Seven, that is. Ah, yes. A show of the Goddess's grace to the people and as a wedge to drive between him and the king. Esfrost, Glenbrook, they will both be ours before long. Thank you all for helping to determine the extent of the damage to the capital. This information will be invaluable as we proceed with reconstruction. There is also happy word from Castle Woolfort. My Lord Father is awake. They say he is recovering a pace already up and walking. Those are glad tidings indeed. He says he would like to see us and hear of all that has passed while he was taken ill. Then what are we waiting for? I'll saddle the horses. Would that we could depart at once, but the messenger brought another piece of news. Bandits plague the outskirts of the Rosalind village. Jerome and his folk are there. They can handle a few mangy thieves, surely. Not according to the messenger. The bandits are proving a formidable foe. Which is why they have asked us for aid. Apologies for my tardiness. It's sudden, I know, but I must ask you a favor. What is it? I suspect Patriot and his royalists are filching relief supplies. We've no proof it's them, but the fact remains. The people in most need of those goods are not receiving them. The matter warrants investigating at the very least, and I would ask for Wolfort's assistance. I see. Well, we were just discussing what we ought to do next. 
to explain three courses of action before us. One, return to Castle Woolfort as my Lord Father requests. Two, defend the Rosellan village from bandits. Or three, remain in the capital to investigate the Royalists. Lord Simon has recovered. What splendid news. If I could only go to him myself and thank him for all House Woolfort has done. But I can't leave the capital in the throes of a possible scandal. Too many hold the royal family in contempt as it is. That may be the case, but now that Lord Simon has awoken, someone must make sure he is healthy and apprise him of recent events. I would go to Castle Woolfort, Lord Serenoa, if it pleases you. My heart breaks for the Rosellen village. Let me go to its defense even if I must go alone. I cannot allow that. It's far too dangerous a task for one person. Well, I would have the Wolfort soldiers with me, of course. Besides, do you recall our first meeting? Of course I do. You were being assailed by rogues at the port. If you hadn't been there, who knows what would have become of me. But I am not as weak now as I was then. I am stronger. Enough that I shall bring no dishonor to House Woolfort's name. My lord, have faith in me. Let me do this. Very well. Hmm. It seems best that Benedict, Frederica, and I each attend to these pressing matters. Separately. Indeed, but the rest of us cannot be in three places at once. We can only choose one path to take. Bring the scales of conviction. Roland and House Wolfort succeed in reclaiming Glenbrook, but they cannot rest easy, for new dilemmas threaten to tear the kingdom apart. For one, the secret of Sarah Noah's birth come to light with Lord Simon's passing. Meanwhile, the newly crowned King Roland struggles to reconcile his ideals with reality after punishing the Royalists. Finally, there's the truth about the Roselle and the untapped salt crystals buried within the earth, revealed in a book to Frederica from her late mother. None of these revelations have an easy solution. As all parties discuss the matters, they receive word that the survivors of the Isfrosty army are gathering at the Grand Norzellian Mines. Forced to put all else aside to focus on driving out their foe, Serenoa and his comrades steel themselves for battle. The remnants of the Isfrosty forces are gathering at the Grand Norzellian Mines. Or perhaps I should say they are rallying there, preparing to defend it to the last. Something tells me you're right. Gustadolf may have used Lord Dragan's murder as pretext for invading Glenbrook. Yet I believe his true aim was to seize control, not of our kingdom, but of the mines. Once Glenbrook fell to them, Esfrost did indeed continue mining operations with notable zeal. Apparently, they transported huge shipments of what they excavated to the duchy, too. You mean iron ore? One would assume as much, but we do not know for certain. They say only a chosen few were allowed to have anything to do with the mining or transport. Odd, ain't it? Granted, the iron from the Grand Norzellian mines is supposed to be decent stuff. But the duchy has access to plenty of other iron mines of comparable quality. They've certainly no need to go to such pains to obtain resources from this one. You reckon there's something special about it? What my mother wrote of must be true. I've returned from scouting the Grand Norzellian mines. There were no signs of miners or couriers anywhere. The enemy's numbers do not appear that great. 
But the soldiers were occupied with some task within the mine. I cannot say exactly how many they are. Thank you, Huet. Well done. Well, there you have it. The Asfrosty army is scheming something at the mines. Whatever they are planning, we cannot allow them to continue unchallenged. Then let us reclaim the Grand Norzellian mines. And in doing so, we shall discover the Duchy's aims in due course. Glenbrook has drawn from the sanctions and reopened trade. King Roland is truly a man of his word. Furthermore, during the battle for the Crown City, our forces sustained nary a scrap, while the Asfrost were all but rushed. We could not have asked for a more auspicious outcome. Outcome that would not have been possible without the Elfric we supply. So, Minister Noah and House Wolford be given credit for aid victory. Minister Exam, how strange to hear you lavish such peace upon another. I am only speaking truth, leaving to Sarah Noah in Glen Brands is unwise. I agree, and of the Saint Misef, he belongs here with us. Of course, we shall bring him under our thumb. The Holy One has plans for the young lord. Making him our creature has the added benefit of bringing his entire domain under Hyzantian rule. But I doubt His Majesty will be willing to part with him. Oh, indeed. And yet King Roland owes us a grit. Which will be all great after we help him rebuild the Crown City. We will so overwhelm with generosity, he will be able to refuse us anything. Oh, you mean to seize Glenk as well, Minister Edor? Somehow unsurprised. I seek nothing more than to spread the Goddess's great and wisdom. To Glenbrook and even Esfrost, until her divine protection shelters Nozelia Kyrty. That the Des desires, what the Hyrof desires as well. Is this all of it? Yes, my lord. This is all the cargo we were able to carry. Comrades at the mine the final touches on everything right now. Hmm. Why is no one telling me what is happening? I don't even know what cargo you are hauling. We're only following Archdodolf's orders, my lord. Yes, I understand. Stop nibbling. Perhaps you may have heard the Orcus summoned me to Ironstone. This may be the last time I serve at this fort. As such, I would like to show my appreciation for everything you've done. Do you have a moment? The sentiment is a bit, my lord, but the Archduke insisted we haste. And did he also insist you spit in the face of his generosity? No, my lord, of course not. I meant no disrespect. We each refuse your gracious offer. Come in. Can all that cargo truly be not iron ore? I suppose I'll have to find out what it is for myself. more soldiers here when I came scouting. They've mined more since the last time we were here. Perhaps the enemy is further within. Likely that's the... But now it gets twisted to ain't gonna be... Indeed. The enemy may be waiting to S around any corner. I advise we familiarize ourselves with the nearby tunnels before we head any deeper in mine, Lord Saranoa. Agreed. Let's take care to cover our tracks while we look around. Benedict, these spheres everywhere. Unless I'm mistaken, they're explosive. Yes, a means Lord Dragan devised for looking through the bedroom. 
They aren't as powerful as blast crystals, but they are simple to set and can be manipulated to go off at the same time. Reckon I'll go collect whatever charges are left, my lord. Just to be safe. Thank you. I find it strange that there are explosives in a mine, only that they have been left here. Indeed. As deadly as they are, one would hope they were stored safely. You'd think the miners would have put them at the far end of the tunnel to use them. They're everywhere, along the whole length. If it were to detonate, the entire tunnel would collapse. Then they must have been left here on purpose. Indrus, get them! The SFT army! The Frosty mean to seal off the mine! Do not let them through the tunnel! <laughs> but this is House Wolfort, we're up again! You think I don't know that? The battle won't be only won. But if we've the metal to use our explosives, they cost us our lives, but we can take those Wolfort curs with us! For S Frost, for an end to Hyzantian tyranny! We must aid the mines! Soldiers, make ready! Aye. Aye! No, they don't mean to... They would blow the tunnel at the cost of their own lives? That was close. To think they tried to collapse the tunnel with themselves inside. Why would the Asfrosti blow themselves up to destroy the place they were charged to defend? It makes no strategic sense. Nothing Asfrost does make sense. But if they were this desperate, there must be something in there they do not want us finding. We must see what lies at the end of this tunnel. Now let us press on. These pink rocks aren't iron. It's salt. Or rather, salt crystal. Crystallized salt, untapped beneath the earth. The Roselian legend my mother recorded is true. The Grand Norzelian Mines must have been built upon a vein of crystals. This explains how Esfrost was able to cut ties with Zant. As long as they could excavate their own, didn't need to rely on the salt from the host aid. They could fight without it. How do you think Gustadov discovered this? Lord Dragan was in charge of the mine until he was assassinated in that sudden as frosty raid, which Gustav used a pretense to invade Glenbrook, after which he claimed control of the mine. That tells me. Lord Dragan was likely the first to discover the salt crystals. However, a struggle ensued between him and Gustadolf over their ownership. So Gustadolf had him killed and ordered the invasion of Glenbrook. In order to seize control of the mines and secure the salt crystals for himself. That scheming dirt. Looks like we made the right call, taking back the mines. We already took loads of salt crystals to the duchy. But even that ain't gonna last forever. Indeed. If we can the mines, Esros will have no choice but to surrender. And what if they discover another salt crystals elsewhere? A real possibility, if the Roselian legend is to be believed. But the Grand Roselian Mines only succeeded because all three powers worked together. If this is the kind of terrain salt crystals are found in, Esros cannot dig a new mine all on their own that easily. Meaning they are at their most vulnerable now, without a source of salt to call their own. This does not concern only Esfrost. The existence of salt crystals will undermine the very foundation upon which Hyzant is built. If people knew that, then the two pillars of Hyzantian power, Horus and the might of their goddess, would crumble. And it would prove the Roselin legend is true. If we reveal the truth, they would be forced to free the Rosel they've imprisoned. We hold very few Zelia in our hands. Whatever we decide to do, we cannot decide it lightly. Indeed. For now, let us return to the Crown City. Huet, send word to the capital. I want Kingdom soldiers posted around this entire area. Tell them to allow no one anywhere near the mines. It shall be done, sire.
This must be what the old man was hoping to find. So, our army failed to secure the Grand Norzellian Mines. It would seem House Wolfort interfered. Glenbrook forces already surround the area, so we must have discovered the salt crystals. Damn them. Gather our soldiers, and be quick about it. Aye, Your Grace. I see you finally decided to answer my summons, Svarov. I shan't use laboring in secret to complete the death snell as an excuse. Punish me as you see fit. If you think you can, that is. I ought to wipe that impertinent smile off your face. I saw what they brought in from the Grand Norzellian Mines. Huh. So you know the salt crystals. Enough secrets, Gustadolf. Tell me what you are planning. To use those salt crystals to put the final nail in Hyzan's coffin. To free people of Norzelia from their tyranny by ending their monopoly over salt. By which you mean the strong will be free to trample the weak. Is that it? I will not argue semantics. Though it is at least far human to struggle for one's own survival, rather than hitching to the whims of some goddess. People have the right to discover their own strength and wield it to claim what is rightfully theirs. Just as you are contesting me at this very moment, Uncle. How long have you known of the Salt Crystal's existence? I learned of the possibility long ago, when I read of them in an old text from the archives. Ancient knowledge should never be discarded, as you well know, since you had Dragan study there to perfect his explosives. You are the one who had him killed. Spare me your unfounded speculation. Unfounded, you say? Dragan oversaw the mine. It only stands to reason of discovered the salt crystals first. So you and your greed had him killed, so that you might claim his discovery for your own. Not only that, but you used his murder as a pretext to invade Glenbrook. Am I wrong? Huh. You have an admirable imagination. Admirable, but mistaken. Your son was quite the ambitious man, you know. What do you mean? You know very well what I mean. Indeed, Dragan did discover the salt crystals. Who else do you think told me of their existence? Yet he refused to hand them over unless I made him Prime Minister of Esfrost. Her son's scheming didn't end there. At the same time, he had initiated negotiations with Glenbrook. He offered them salt crystals in exchange for a noble title. He sought to fatherland and foe for all he could get. Lies! All of it! How dare you dishonor my son's name! I thought if anyone understood the extent of Dragan's ambition, it would be you. <sighs> Uncle, now is not the time for family squabbles. Glenbrook now knows of the salt crystals. But a matter of time until Hyzant learns of them as well. We must make ready to stand against them. What would you have me do? The Death Snell is taking far too long to build. See that it is finished with haste. Do that, and I will name you my Prime Minister, so you may fulfill your dearly departed son's dream in his stead. Very well. There is no time to waste. War will be upon our doorstep before we know. A war to end all wars. A war whose victor shall rule Norzelia in her glorious entirety. Deep in the Grand Norzelian Mines lay a most unexpected discovery. Crystals of pure salt. Now in possession of knowledge that could alter the course of history in Norzelia, the members of House Wolford gather at Whiteholm Castle to discuss their next move.
Unexpected though it may be, salt crystals are now ours. Carefully, for it has the potential to alter the balance of power across Norzelia. This is an opportunity to reshape the realm to our benefit. We must be strategic. It's a target on our backs is what it is. There'll be no peace for us so long as we hold them. Hyzant will set upon us with a fury we've never known if they hear of this. She's right. They will stop at nothing to defend their faith. Nor will Esfrost go quietly into the night. Then let us prepare for when word does spread, rather than fret over how long we can keep the secret. Whether we protect the salt as ours, or find another way to use it, we must act soon. <sighs> what say you, Your Majesty? We find ourselves at a crossroads. Not just as a kingdom, but an entire realm. Our decision will touch every life in Norzelia. I too wish to act quickly. But I beg you all for a moment alone with my thoughts. Your caution is admirable, but ill-advised. Hesitation could cost us everything. That much is obvious. Yet I cannot race headlong into the unknown when so much depends upon us. Benedict, I find myself unmoored as well. I wish to hear from all present before we decide upon a course of action. As you wish. Pray let it be swift. Serenoa, answer me this. Can I count on you to walk the path with me, whatever it may be? I was named Lord of House Wolfort long before I was inducted into the Saintly Seven. And I've been your friend even longer still. Say no more. Take the others to Castle Wolfort and await my word. Likewise, inform me of any movements from Hyzant. As you wish. Until we meet again. Ah, Milo has sent a dispatch from Glenbrook. Deep within the Grand Norselian mines lies... Hmm. It would seem salt crystals were found within. Impossible! The discovery of salt outside the source explains Gustadolf's recent... Provocations. How can you be so calm? The teachings tell us that salt is a blessing bestowed only upon the goddess's followers. The discovery of these salt crystals is an existential threat to Hyzant. Salt crystals are salt too. We need only keep word of this discovery from spreading. Of course. But how? The Hierophant has spoken. Minister Exham, you shall raise an army and seize the Grand Norzelian Mines in Hyzant's name. The Hierophant asks us to invade Glenbrook? Do you have another way to silence King Roland and his royal hounds in House Wolfort? Minister Serenoa is one of us, and thus is honor-bound to heed the Hierophant's word. But we know not if he will do so, or if he will cast his lot with his precious king. You shall ask him yourself when you surround Castle Wolfort en route to the mine. And if he resists? You are free to deal with him, as we do with all who forsake the goddess. I am gladdened to see each and every one of you, my ironclad brothers in arms, here at Twinsgate. I have asked you here to tell you of a most fortuitous discovery. We have found crystals of salt deep in the Grand Norzelian mines. Alas, Glenbrook has taken those very mines from us. What's worse, Glenbrook's esteemed House Wolfort is led by one of the saintly seven of Hyzant. 
They will no doubt be informed of the salt crystals, and their precious religion will be shaken to its core. I trust you can all imagine how Hyzant will respond to such an affront. They will not go quietly, but will instead seek the crystals for themselves, that their reign of terror may continue unimpeded. Therefore, we must subdue Glenbrook and seize the mines for Esfrost if we are to counter this grave threat. But we cannot stop there, for that will only draw Hyzant to our gates. They will stop at nothing to conquer all of Norzelia in their name. The duchy has never been in a more precarious position, but we will not yield. We subscribe to no faith, and we bend the knee for no king. We shall greet our enemies at Twinsgate with cold, hard steel. Our newest weapon, the Death Snell, is nearly complete. With it, we shall strike back at Hyzant. The false goddess shall crumble beneath the sheer force of our iron will, and Hyzant reduced to rubble along with her. Raise your swords, my Black Iron heroes. Your names shall be cast in iron when the histories of this day are written. You shall be known as the defenders of Esfrost. For Esfrost! Oh, yes. The Death Snare will reduce many a falsehood to rubble, dear Gustadolf. Have you heard the popular rumor, Lord Claris? That Hyzant intends to raise an army against Glenbrook? Yes, I am familiar. So it's reached the Consortium then. Is it true? King Roland has only just reclaimed the Crown City with Hyzant's help, not to mention restored relations with them. Ordinarily, such a thing would be unthinkable, but the rumors are so persistent that I think something may be afoot. For example? I wouldn't be so restless if I had an example to give. Esfrost gathers its troops at Twinsgate. Might they have heard the rumors as well? Perhaps. A battle for the very soul of Norzelia may loom on the horizon. But therein lies the opportunity for merchants like us. You can't wage war without a surfeit of supplies. You're quite right about that. And each shift in Norzelia's power balance opens new business opportunities. Will the Consortium continue trading with Hyzant? It is difficult to say. I believe House Wolfort's actions from here on will be key to the Consortium's decision. House Wolfort, you say? Indeed. They've been involved in most every conflict between the three nations on this continent. Why stop now? I shall wait and see how Lord Serenoa responds first, lest I make any hasty decisions. Hyzant has learned of the Salt Crystals. Minister Exham of the Saintly Seven wastes no time in mustering his army, which now marches on the Grand Norzelian Mines. Elsewhere, Gustadolf amasses his own forces at Twinsgate in anticipation of the war to come. All eyes are on Glenbrook, where Roland and Serenoa's pronouncement could touch off a battle for the soul of Norzelia. After much deliberation, Roland makes his way to Castle Wolffort to inform Serenoa of the decision that now weighs heavy on his heart. I appreciate you coming all this way, Roland. I was the one who asked for your time, so it is only natural I make the journey. 
I wish to tell you that I finally made up my mind. And I would hear your decision if you were willing to share it with me. I've long pondered over the one thing that Norzelia needs most. I thought back to the War. Thirty years have passed, yet the root of our conflict remains the same. Each nation still thinks only of itself, wishing to fill its coffers even at the expense of others. But who bears the brunt of such a war? The people. Exactly so. The avarice of the ruler is an existential threat to their loyal subjects. And yet without that wealth, the people suffer just as much. They languish in poverty. This much is obvious. But there can be no winner without a loser. Remove one, and you necessarily remove the other. If we achieve equality, we achieve peace. And how do you propose we achieve... No. No, surely you don't mean... Yes. The Goddess's teachings. All can live as equals under the Goddess. An authority greater than any king. The model nation was in front of us all along, Sarah Noah. The holy state of Hyzant. I have decided that we must give the salt crystals in the Grand Norzelian Mines to Hyzant. And in so doing, you'll give them control of all Norzelia. Exactly. There will be no more squabbling over salt. Norzelia will know eternal peace at last. Unequal peace, surely. One built on the backs of a people like the Roselle, if not the Roselle themselves. I am not blind to that fact. But so few will suffer for the good of so many. Nothing in this world is perfect, Saranoa. The sacrifice of the few for the good of the many. It's the only clear answer, and one I would give every time I were asked. Submitting to the goddess will rob you of your kingship. So be it. My crown. My pride. There are but small prices to pay for peace. You are truly prepared to throw it all away. Join me, Saranoa. Let us unite Norzelia under the Holy State. Roland, this is quite sudden. I understand. Pray, take all the time you need. I expect Frederica will want nothing to do with this plan, seeing as it forsakes her people. I am already mourning the rift this may cause between you, but I shall not be swayed. This will be my final act as Glenbrook's king. King Roland's anguish plays plainly across his face. It pains me to see him so tortured. I am not surprised. The future of our kingdom, to say nothing of the entire continent, rests upon his shoulders. Pray tell, what do you intend to do about the salt crystals? In truth, I cannot decide. Salt is too precious to be hoarded. We have a duty to share it with the people, which is... Where the difficulty lies, yes. The source makes that all too clear. Salt lies at the heart of every war in Norzelia. <sighs> Would that the boundless salted sea of Roselan legend still existed. We'd have no need of conflict if there were a source of salt for all. My love, if I may, the discovery of the salt crystals has made two things plain to me. The first is that my mother spoke true in the legend she passed on to me. And the other is that the goddess's teachings are nothing more than a lie built to constrain your people. Just so. We are guilty of nothing. Yet the Roselle languish in the source where they are looked down upon and forced to work until they die. Entire generations lost, countless lives given to Hyzant's cruelty. Cruelty created to justify Hyzant's own avarice and lust for power. Such is the ugly lie at the heart of their teachings. One revealed by a crystal of the mineral they hold so dear. The time has come, Saranoa. 
The Rizal must be freed. The Salt Crystals have brought us to the brink of war. We can harness this unrest, incite the Rizal to rise up and rebel against their captors. I am with you. Believe me, I am. But you make it sound so... Simple. Yes, I know. But the suffering of my people is so distant for everyone else. We can no longer wait for someone to do the right thing. Help isn't coming. Why else would my own mother incite rebellion? We are alone. I swear to you, none of this feels distant to me. The Roselle live in my domain. I am betrothed to you, my dear. It couldn't feel any closer. And I thank the stars that I have you by my side. I do. In truth, that's why I think this time will be different. Why I'll be able to accomplish what my mother could not. Hmm. I agree. But the risk is immense. Suppose we succeed, what then? Aizant will not let us go quietly. Of course not. And when that time comes, you can lead the Roselle to Centralia. Just as your mother wrote about in the book she left behind. Beyond the Great Falls in the Falk's Domain at the end of the Norzelia River. The ancestral home of the Roselle. But that's... that's just a legend. We've already found one legend to be rooted in truth. Perhaps this one is as well. And if not, at least you'll be safe from harm. <laughs> I doubt Benedict will share our feelings, though. Abandoning all we've built to embark on a journey fraught with danger in search of a legend. Yet no matter how perilous the path ahead, I would happily walk it at your side. I trust you understand what a monumental effect the discovery of these salt crystals will have on Norzelia's history. Whatever course of action we choose will determine whether House Wolfort leaves a legacy in that history or is expunged from it. How would you proceed, Benedict? I would do all I could to keep it from falling into Hyzant's hands. They already control the source. With the crystals in hand, they will solidify their grip on the realm and in time dominate it. The siren song of a false equality under their goddess shall blanket the land, claiming every domain and its people. Even though they count me among the saintly seven? Even then, for that matters little when the equality they espouse is dictated by the goddess, or should I say, the hierophant. In the end, they will have the same life and death control over all Norzelia that they now hold over the Roselle. And our wounds from the battle with Esfrost have only begun to heal. Hyzat will destroy us if we wage war against them in our current state. But they stand little chance against us if we ally with Esfrost. Ally with Es? Are you of sound mind, Benedict? Quite. Think about it for a moment. Esfrost wants nothing more than to loosen Hyzant's grip. They will go to war if it means control of the salt crystals. Our interests are broadly aligned, yes, but... Esfrost has been building toward precisely that purpose for some time now. You speak of the Death Knell, the weapon that Cordelia mentioned. Precisely a weapon capable of reducing the goddess's shield to rubble, leaving Hyzant's capital ripe for the taking. Without that weapon, we cannot win. You need only say the word, and I shall convince Esfrost to join our side. I appreciate your candor, Benedict, and I do not doubt you could secure Esfrost's cooperation. But I fear the harder fight is within our own domain. King Roland's heart will not be easily won.
I bid you listen closely and calmly to what I'm about to ask. From whence this somber tone? Do you believe King Roland is fit to rule? What are you implying? Decorum is of little use when the fate of our realm is at stake, Lord Serenoa. Are you content to spend the rest of your life in servitude to another? Not another word, Benedict. Roland is more than my king. He is my friend. And you are Lord of House Wolfort, whose military prowess is known to all Norzelia. Not the guard dog of Glenbrook and Hyzant. What else are you here to do, if not to protect your house and keep its banner aloft? <sighs> but you have the potential for so much more. All Norzelia could be yours if you but desired it. Treason, if not outright regicide. These are your suggestions. Of course not. The blood in your veins and the royal family's ring are claim enough to the throne. There is no need for violence. I told you not to speak of that again. But you did not tell me to forget. The time to reckon with your lineage draws near. You must make a... I've heard enough. Leave me. Just know that I will do anything you ask of me, Lord Serenoa. I pray that you make the right choice. Not only for House Wolfort, but for yourself. You are certain Hyzan's army marches for the Grand Norzellian Mines? There is no doubt. They've heard word of the crystals. It's only a matter of time. We knew this. Esfrost's army gathers at Twinsgate as well. War's breaking out over this thing, and we've got to be ready. How will Glenbrook respond, King Roland? There's no need to prepare for war. I have decided that we will surrender the salt crystals to the holy state of Hyzant. What? Furthermore, I hereby declare that the kingdom of Glenbrook and its people shall submit to the goddess and her teachings. There is no way to bring happiness to all Norzelia with the salt crystals. Which is why I have chosen a path that will allow the greatest number of people to live in equality and harmony. How could you? Do you not see that Hyzant's dominion over Norzelia's salt is why we are in conflict already? Is the suffering of the Rizal not proof enough that the goddess's vaunted equality is a lie? She speaks the truth, my king. Handing over the salt crystals is tantamount to giving Hyzant's goddess free reign of Norzelia. Will you so readily surrender the realm to the Hierophant? I acknowledge the abdication of my kingdom and kingship alike. A small price to pay in my eyes, in exchange for the security and prosperity of the many. And the sacrifice of the Rozelle, is that a small price to you? It is. How could you say such a thing to my face? I for one oppose. I would prefer to ally with Esfrost and strike back at Hyzant. The salt deposits within the mines give us the leverage we need to convince Gustadolf to join us. Ally with Esfrost? You dare suggest we ally with the man who murdered my father? I see no reason why we should not. You proposed abdicating the throne for the sake of the kingdom and its people. So you should have no trouble putting aside your own feelings and judging this matter dispassionately. I cannot believe my own ears. I will not have you lecture me on feelings when it is not your father he murdered. None of you can see beyond your own grievances. It's no wonder my people have suffered for generations. We're told to believe in the goddess, while our own lives are thrown away to make a few more grains of your precious salt. And now, even with proof that the goddess is a lie, you would watch us dig our own graves for your comfort. 
Lady Frederica, please. We shall speak of the Roselle in due time. No, I've heard that before. Your due time is never, and I will not have you cast us aside for another three decades or more. All else is in disarray. If Hyzant seizes the Salt Crystals, we forfeit the best opportunity in decades to free my people. We know the truth. We must act upon it. We must be a light in the darkness. We cannot afford to dilute our forces when the enemy marches on us as we speak. So we are a distraction to you? I am merely being rational. Liberating the Roselle would be extremely dangerous. We cannot take such a risk. Suppose we succeed. How do you propose we fend off the fury Hyzant will rain down upon us? Estros would pounce on us, sensing weakness at the undue burden we've taken upon ourselves. Precisely. We would be without allies and ripe for the taking. There is another way. And what, pray tell, would that be? We set out alongside the Roselle in search of Centralia. Centralia is a myth. The legends of my people are true. I care not one whit if they are. I will hear no talk of forsaking the Wolfort domain. Silence! I have heard enough to know where each of you stand. Do you all hold the courage of your own convictions? I do. Nothing I've heard here has swayed me. I feel the same. Very well. I would ask for some time to think on the matter. I understand each of you keenly, my friends. You have not arrived at these decisions lightly, and I do not doubt your convictions. Yet choosing any of the options before me risks creating a schism among the others. I cannot afford to lose any of you. Not after how far we've come. Which leaves me only one option. Nay, I mustn't give in so readily. There must be another way. One that will bind us together, not tear us asunder. Now then, to find it. Certainties first. We cannot afford to relinquish control of the Salt Crystals to any one nation. Salt necessarily belongs to the people, and on that point I shall not waver. There must be a way to bring about the lasting peace Roland desires without the need for Hyzant's warped teachings. Hyzant moves to take the Grand Norzelian mines as I contemplate this. It must be stopped. They will no doubt make an ostentatious show of power in an attempt to intimidate us. What's worse, they'll soon be at our door and we'll not defeat them with our army alone. Surely there's a way we can hold them off. The wildfire, of course, will draw them into the village and set the vast majority of their forces alight. The Hierophant will never relent, however. Hyzant will bear down on us with the full force of their army. We've no chance of winning a protracted war. Hyzant must fall and quickly. We need Esfrost. We need the Death Snell. Tis the only way we'll pierce the Goddess's shield. I hardly relish the thought of asking Gustadolf to come to our aid. He'll no doubt demand the Salt Crystals in return. Who might help us get our hands on that weapon? Lord Svarog, yes! He's fortified alongside us. 
It's time he made good on his word. We share a common enemy in Gustadolf. He'll be a boon! There is still the matter of how we invade Hyzant and incite the Roselle to rebel. Yes! We'll blast away the statue and reveal Hyzant's lies for all to see. If the Rosellan legends are true, an enormous pillar of salt rests within the goddess's statue. Revealing that will prove that the Roselle spoke truth all these years. Goddess and Hierophant alike will lose all claim to authority, leaving them open to a revolt from a united Roselle. And now we have the means to make the explosives that will bring Hyzant to its knees. Just one problem remains. How will we manage to pass through the goddess's shield? No banner could pass into Hyzant without arousing suspicion. Unless... Unless they've no banner at all. The Consortium, of course. One glimpse of the salt crystals ought to bring Claris to the table. So long as I play to his self-interest, the rest will follow. I have it. I've found a way to give everyone what they want most in one fell swoop. The salt crystals will belong to all and not just a privileged few. The people of Norzelia will finally be lords and ladies of their own making. Masters of their own destinies. Benedict's fervent desire to protect the Domain's integrity. Roland's yearning for equity. Frederica's resolve to free her people. I hear you all, my friends. You're not alone. Nor are the countless others who look to me at this late hour. If ever there were a time to heed my father's last words, it is now. I must forge my own path and lead my people. The scales cannot save us this time. The words of my closest confidants have revealed a way forward that the scales never could. All that remains is to convince them to follow me down the path I have made. As Lord of House Wolfort, I solemnly swear an oath by which all future lords shall be bound. I will never turn my back on the promise of a better world. Thus did Sarah Noah ascertain the scale's true purpose. Taking up the mantle of his late father, Lord Simon, and the ill-fated Dragan, Sarah Noah returns to present his allies with a bold new vision for Norzelia's future. I have made up my mind. We turn the salt crystals over to no one, but we do not keep them for ourselves. Instead, we distribute them equally to every person across Norzelia and change the face of the continent. Do you hear yourself? Do you mean this sincerely, Sarah Noah? What of the Roselle? I speak my conscience, and I promise I have not forgotten the Roselle. Pray, grant me the time to explain my strategy. We must put an end to the teachings if we are to release the salt to all Norzelians. Which is to say, the holy state of Hyzant must fall. So we are to take a Benedict's proposal? No. I propose we attack on three separate fronts. At the same time? We will use our domain's wildfire to prevent Hyzant from capturing the mines. Meanwhile, I wish to negotiate an accord with Esfrost 
that affords us use of the death snell. I know full well the risks involved. However, I believe we can convince Svarog, who opposes the Archduke, that an alliance is worthwhile. Finally, we expose the falsehoods that prop up Hyzant's precious teachings and incite another Rosellan uprising. In one fell swoop, we can abase the Hierophant and throw the capital into chaos. That accomplished, we shall sack the Holy State with Esfros at our side. With both the Source and the Crystals in our possession, no one in Norzelia will ever want for salt. We can bring peace, equity, and stability to all Norzelia, just as Roland envisioned. We can restore the Woolfort name to its former glory and usher it into a new era, as Benedict desires. An era, my dear Frederica, in which the Roselle shall be free once and for all. What I ask may sound impossible, but we have survived long odds before. Let us cling together and do so once again. Do any present have objections to the path I have set before us? None for me, lad. You've quickened the very blood in my veins. Permit me to speak plainly, Your Majesty. I am in agreement with Lord Serenella. We cannot dream our desires into reality. Some things must be fought for and won. We've tried your way, Benedict. It's time we tried something new. What say you three? I am ashamed to admit that my obsession with the Domain's safety may have blinded me to more aggressive solutions. Your plan is audacious, perhaps even reckless, but it is not impossible and may well be worth the risk. House Wolford is better for having you at its helm, Lord Serenoa. The fate of my people always felt so small compared to the war raging around Yet you would still choose to walk a dangerous path rather than cast the Rosella aside. It would be my honor to fight alongside you and see this through. I honestly thought Hyzant would rule better than I could. That they would bring prosperity to Roselia. I shrank from my duties and lost myself to the idea of revenge upon Gustadolf. I may well have betrayed my own kingdom. But you, Serenoa, opened my eyes to the truth. And for you, my friend, as King of Glenbrook, I shall face any enemy and lead our people to glory. Then we've no need of the scales. Our path is decided. From here on out, we shall split into three regiments. Allow me to explain the role each has to play. I pray that clarifies what each regiment needs to do. Prolonging the war is slowly driving the three kingdoms to ruin, starving their people in the process. Not to mention, all involved will lose sight of what they were fighting for, if they haven't already. Agreed. Tis for the good of all if we bring it to a swift and decisive end. And so we find ourselves contemplating war on three fronts. Hyzant and Esfrost aren't expecting such drastic action from us. The element of surprise may deliver us victory. As will the leader of each regiment involved in this gambit. I shall lure the Hyzantian army to their doom here at Castle Wolfort. Svarog knows who I am, and swore he would fight alongside me. I shall depart for Esfrost and hold him to his word. Pray. Let me be the one to journey to Hyzant. I would love nothing more than to expose their false idol for all to see, and lead my people to rebel in the name of freedom. Then I shall secure the help of Claris at the Consortium, in exchange for information about the Salt Crystals. He can secret you inside the capital, and provide you with explosives enough to fell the Goddess. 
Though we fight on distant fronts, we are bound together in spirit. We fight to the last for Norzelia! For, for Norzelia! No, it can't be. General Aflora? Of the Asfrosti army? Former general, I come to you now as a citizen of Norzelia. Nothing more. I come to House Wolfort in search of sanctuary. I beg you, have the mercy to take me in. Wait here. General of Laura, we thought you missing. Indeed, it was your actions that caused my brief disappearance. Though I bear no grudge for how the battle ended. This time, however, I come to you with a humble request. I wish to join your ranks, if you'll have me. You wish to defect? To what end? That we may bring this fraught and fractious chapter of Norzelia's history to a close. I would see those of Lady Cordelia's generation preside over an era of peace and tranquility. You've every right to doubt me when I say Lady Cordelia has touched me. But I swore to be her sword forevermore, not as Frost's. We have long been enemies. You've taken much from us in Esfrost's name. I know you to be many things, General of Laura, but a schemer and a liar are not among them. I trust that you speak true. And your talk of a swift end to this conflict appeals to me. We are of the same mind. My lord. Nevertheless, it remains bad blood between us. There may be some within our ranks who are less than pleased to see you. I expect there will be. I understand their hurt, and have made my peace with it. I will suffer their slings and arrows gladly if it means bringing peace to Norzelia. I admire your conviction. In truth, we have already arrived at our decision. Your strength is a boon we can neither hope to replicate nor replace. I welcome you, General Aflora, to House Wolfort. My sword is yours, Lord Serenor. Let us divide House Wolfort into three regiments. I leave the allocation of forces in your capable hands. Choose wisely. Once the plan is in motion, we won't have the luxury of adjusting our strategy. Understood. Gate is sealed. Gustadolf hardens his defenses at the encampment within. We will approach the gate and request an audience. We may yet find common ground with Esfrost. The duchy wields the Death Snell, a weapon capable of reducing the goddess's shield surrounding Hyzant to rubble. We need that weapon if we are to break the Holy State's stranglehold on Salt and thus Norzelia. I know this may feel a betrayal to some of you. Esfrost invaded us. They are the enemy. They murdered my father and brother. And I will never forget nor forgive them for it. But I believe if father were still here, he would see that I go to Esfrost for the right reasons. That I ask them for aid so that we may thrive. For above all, a king's duty is to his people. And I would sooner cast out the shadows of the past by building a brighter future than lament our lot in life. I ask for your aid in building that bright future. Let us walk the path set before us by Sarah Noah, 
and lead Norzelia into a new era of peace and prosperity unlike any we've known. To the plan. We shall slip into the capital of the Holy State, disguised as a band of merchants from the Norzelia Consortium. Lord Claris has taken on no small amount of risk in agreeing to help us gain entry. We are truly in your debt, Lord Claris. I stand to gain more from a liberated Norzelia, where Hyzant no longer dictates the terms of trade and commerce. In short, spare no extra thoughts for me. This is as much a business consideration as it is helping those in need. As he says, this is for the future of Norzelia. We now endeavor to destroy the goddess's likeness that serves as a pillar of their teachings. If the Roselin legends are true, we will find that the statue concealed a massive pillar of salt that was stolen from my people. This salt pillar is incontrovertible proof that the teachings and the goddess around which they are built are lies. The faithful will be shaken to their core, and the Hierophant's power will wane. With luck, we may even show the Roselle they were without fault, inciting them to rise once more and cast off the yoke of their oppressors. This is nothing less than a battle to wrest control of Norzelia from the clutches of a capricious and vengeful goddess. Have you prepared the explosives, Lord Claris? Prepared and loaded onto a cart, my lady. Enough to bring the goddess back to Earth, I should think. Excellent. Then let us depart. You are a marvel, Lady Frederica. A Rosellen with as frosty blood, fighting under House Wolford's banner. Who better than you to challenge Hyzant's tyranny? Do you not feel the weight of destiny upon you? This is not destiny, Lord Claris. Nothing could be less certain than the moment in which we find ourselves. Sarah Noah and I have traveled a long, hard road together. It brought us here, but it does not end here. And so we walk on. Now you seek to fell the goddess. You are possessed of an iron will if you'll forgive the expression. I shall take that as a compliment. Watch over us, Mother. From across the border, the Hyzantian army marches. Its sights set on the Grand Norzelian Mines. At its head is Exham Marshal of the Saintly Seven. Seizing control of the Salt is not his sole objective. He has come to investigate disturbing rumors that Serenoa Wolfort has forsaken the blessing of the Goddess. Knowing the answer to that question and the repercussions it will provoke, House Wolford and its allies have carved out a strategy on which their survival will hinge. They will divide their forces into three, each acting in concert to outwit their adversary. Roland will lead a company to the Asfrosty border, where they will entreat Lord Svarog for his support and the use of his death knell. Frederica will lead her own retinue to the source to reveal the lies of the goddess's teachings and rouse the Roselle to action as her mother did before her. Benedict will remain in the Wolfort domain, ready to risk all in an effort to stave off the Hyzantian army. United by their faith in Serenoa's vision, each takes to their preparations with resolve. Understanding fate's judgment is at hand.
Minister Exham has arrived with the full might of Hyzant intel. He requests a parley. How diplomatic of him, considering his forces already surround the castle. Doubtless he'll demand that we surrender the salt crystals and that we bow our heads low to the Hierophant. We'll deny him, of course, and a battle will follow. We must make ready. The common folk have been led to shelter, and we have oil aplenty. All that is left is to steal our resolves. Although our forces are fewer, we have the advantage of terrain. Prudent use of our traps will turn the tide of battle in our favor. The enemy knocks at our gates, but we must remain calm as we form our strategy. Our friends await news of our victory. These traps will set our foes aflame, but at the cost of the city. We survived one battle without resorting to them, but the stakes have risen substantially. However, any means shall be justified by the end we fight for, the future we fight for. I will do what I must to win. To that end, I would survey the terrain one final time. House Wolfort certainly has a curious way of greeting visitors. As the Holy State has a curious way of announcing its arrival. I believe we can dispense with the formalities. We won't capitulate to your show of force. Then you turn your back on the Holy One? That is correct. You will not step foot inside the mines. You will not lay a single finger on the salt crystals. I hope you understand the gravity of your words. The salt crystals represent the power to rule over Norzelia. You're a fool if you think we will let you have them. It represents much more than that. It represents the end of your tyranny, the end of the suffering you've inflicted on our realm for generations. You care not for the happiness of the common people, nor do you give a whit for our house's survival. I take it that means you intend to survive this little outburst of yours. Allow me one question then. What will you do with the salt crystals? We will set right this world you've corrupted. What fools you are. You would orchestrate your own destruction for something as uncertain as what is right. A pity. I had hoped young Saranoa would be a strong ally. A shame he has chosen a false cause. History shall attest to the justice of our cause and the wickedness of yours. I needn't await history's judgment, Benedict. You and yours are not but heretics, and you shall share the fate all heretics share. In the name of the goddess, I declare your lives forfeit. Show the Wolfort curs no quarter. Put every last one of them to the sword. They come. Our future lies before us. Whatever we may lose in the moments to come, we will lose much more if we do not drive Exham back. Only through this fraught path can we forge the future Lord Saranoa envisions. Fight with an abandon I did not expect. Our presumptiveness was our downfall. The day is lost. We must retreat. You've won this battle, but the war is not over. And mark my words, I will crush your pitiful resistance with my own hands. They flee with their tails between their legs. The cowards will think twice before trying us again.
Hold your heads high, brave men and women of House Wolfort, for today is ours. The House Wolfort! Roland's forces march for Twinsgate, gateway to the nation of Esfrost. Their mission is to secure the power of the Death Snell, Esfrost's fearsome cannon, a weapon powerful enough to shatter even the impregnable goddess's shield. Whether this action ends in alliance or bloodshed depends on the judgment of Svarog, who had once promised to aid the fledgling king. However, with storms of intrigue brewing, who can say which way the wind will blow? Work on the death snell is complete then? Just so. I have already ordered the cannon transported to Twinsgate. We shall use it to crush any who would dare attack us. Then turn it upon the goddess's shield. Admirably done, uncle. I did not do this to earn your praise. You will fulfill your promise. Of course. In recognition of your service, I hereby appoint you Prime Minister of Esfrost. An honor to be sure. Let us weather this storm together, Gustadolf. Hmm. I'm afraid that's not quite in the cards. Sicrus? Prime Minister Svarag Esfrost. You stand accused of illicitly smuggling salt for your own profit. What is this madness? We've recovered ledgers from Twinsgate, outlining every detail of your crimes. I advise you not to resist. You are hereby stripped of your authority as Prime Minister. You will be imprisoned in jail until you are judged in the day's hands. You snake! Your only intent was to steal my creation! A creation that would not exist, save for these crimes you accuse me of! All I did, I did for Esfrost! Of course. Your accomplishments are not to be denied. Should you wish to argue your case, your argument will be heard. I knew you to be cunning, Gustadolf. But I did not think you so cold as to betray your own flesh and blood. But now I see the truth. I see who was behind my son's murder. Careful, Svarog. I advise you not to test the limits of my mercy. From this day forward, I shall be steward of Twinsgate. And I shall lead Esfrost to victory against her enemies. Take him away. Curses. You damned... You damned traitor! Kinslayer! Night comes. We've marched from dawn till dusk. Let's rest here, Roland. Right. We make our final camp here. On the morrow, we speak with Lord Svarog, steward of Twinsgate. He has promised to help us. I only hope he hasn't had a change up since then. However, he is not our only concern. Gustadolf's interference could bring an end to our plan before it begins. That being said, I believe with Svarog's assistance we can win support both from within and without. And the cannon will be at our disposal. Saranoa's strategy relies on the success of the negotiations ahead. We must steal our resolve and be ready for aunt the morning brings. We're here, Twinsgate. I will let them know we come in peace. 
Everyone stand back. Be safe, my friend. I am Roland Glenbrook, King of Glenbrook. I seek an audience with Lord Svarog. Hyzant marches upon the Grand Norzellian mines at this very moment. Their aim is the salt crystals we've recovered from the Earth. If their ambitions aren't put in check, all of Norzellia will be helpless to withstand the will of their goddess. This future Glenbrook cannot abide to pass. And I believe Esfrost is of the same mind. Let us join forces and drive them from our borders. Your August Majesty, welcome. Had I expected your arrival, I would have prepared a suitable audience. Gustadolf! What are you doing here? Where is Svarog? Ah, I'm afraid he is otherwise indisposed. A little matter of treason, you see. Join forces and drive them from our borders. That voice. King Roland. He's come to make good on his word. Hmm. You there. This may hurt. Gah! Gustadolf must think me frail indeed. Such such green soldiers at my guard. So that's your gambit. Glenbrook and Woolford would risk everything in defiance of Hyzant. I admit you have better odds than anyone before you. Exposing the lies of the church and inciting the Roselle to action would deal the Holy State a grievous wound. But to approach for the killing blow, you must breach the shield. Something you could not do even with ten times your current numbers. And that is why you need me, or rather, my cannon. I suppose I had no reason to expect Cordelia would keep that a secret. You've the right of it. Battle has already broken out in the Wolfort Domain. Time is of the essence. Pray aid us, Archduke Gustadolf that we might topple Hyzant's tyranny. A noble goal. However, what do you intend to do with the salt crystals when this is all over? We'll share the Earth's bounty with all of Norzelia, Esfrost included. Oh, and for that, we would be forever in your debt. Is that what you expect from me? To grovel before you and sing your praises? What's to stop me from cutting you down where you stand and seizing the crystals for my own? If that was an option, surely you would have done so already. Esfrost's remaining forces can hardly challenge Hyzant. And you know this. Even at full strength, you were loath to stand against them without Glenbrook's support. Fair enough. But need I remind you, that plan was brought to ruins by you and yours when you entered under the protection of Hyzant. How many more times will you turn your cloaks before the day is done? And moreover, how could I trust a man who is so willing to plead with his father's murderer? If there is aught I can offer as assurance, pray tell. I only ask that you answer this question truthfully. Do you not desire vengeance for your father's death? More than anything. Vengeance against you and your accursed Esfrost. However, I know I must leave such grudges in the past if we are to realize a brighter future. <laughs> such ideals. Your home. Your own flesh and blood was taken from you. You would answer that with forgiveness? It is the only path. The righteous path. 
Your conviction is admirable. For what it's worth, I actually believe you. Very well. As Archduke of Estrost, I hereby offer my answer. I refuse. What? Why? It was I who unearthed the salt crystals, and it is I who shall decide who benefits from them. You would treat my discovery as your own, claim what is mine by rights. For this insolent act, you deserve death. More lies! It was Dragan who discovered the salt crystals, my son! Lord Svarok! You managed to worm your way out of your cell. Had you stayed obedient a few moments longer, you might yet have lived. Enough! I know you had Dragan killed and stole the salt crystals to feed your own insatiable ambition! That you were just far to frame Glenbrook speaks to the depth of your depravity! Foolish ramblings. I did not think captivity would affect your mind so soon. Silence! Your scheming has gone on for long enough. You judge others for taking what is yours, yet you do not scruple to seize upon the accomplishments of others. My son had his own ambitions. You fed off his success, then murdered him! As you surely would have done to me. My usefulness to you long since passed. The accused so often lash out blindly. And now it is your turn, Gustadolf. Me and mine are not the only victims of your blind ambition. Thallus, Erica, even Frederica. All palms to use as you saw fit. All to be discarded when their usefulness wore out. You would speak of freedom. The only freedom you care for is the freedom to sate your thirst for power. Loyal servants of Esfrost! See now the monster before you, laid bare! I was there when the Archduke received word of his siblings' deaths. He didn't even blink. All this fighting, and for what? Do we have Glenbrook's blood on our hands? This would mean you deceived all of Esfrost. That you led us into battle under false pretenses. Sikris, Svarog is in league with the enemy. Kill him now. Answer me, Your Grace. Was it truly Glenbrook that ordered Lord Dragan's assassination? Have you taken leave of your senses, fool? I said kill Lord Svarog. Now! No. If you truly believe in the freedom you espouse, he deserves to be judged based upon the truth. Ah! Your Grace, what have you... I'll suffer none to disobey me. You spell your own doom, Gustadolf. By your own hand, you have revealed what you truly are. A feral beast who must be put down. By my side, King Roland, I made a promise, and I intend to fulfill it here and now. I'm with you, Lord Svarog. To my side, friends. Today we bring an end to the Archduke's tyranny and secure our future. Follow the king! You're beaten, Gustadolf. Any final words? No. I lived how I deemed fit. And I shall die just so. So be it. King Roland, wait. Your reign has only begun. You needn't sully your hands with this foul deed. Allow me. I'll finish this on behalf of Esfrost. As you will. 
Get on with it. Avenge your son. You stood ever apart, Gustadolf. It was your greatest weakness, and perhaps your greatest strength. We shall meet again before long, Uncle. Gustadolf has paid for his crimes, and will commit no more. I shall succeed him as Archduke. And I pledge to assist Glenbrook in aught it requires to bring an end to Hyzant's tyranny. Do you truly mean this, Lord Svarog? My son had a vision for this realm. Were he still with us, I know he would stand with you, as I do now. I thank you, my friend. First order of the day. Get the Nell moving. Our destination, the Goddess's Shield. Aye! We're almost there, my friend. Indeed. To think that when we first met Svarog, we feared for our lives. It was a fortuitous encounter, however. And today, my grudges have been laid to rest. As Benedict matches wits with Minister Exam at Castle Woolfort, and Roland risks the wrath of the Archduke at Twinsgate, Frederica embarks on her own mission. Under the false banner of the Consortium, she hides her forces, marching steadily toward the Byzantine Holy State. With the aid of Clarice, she aims to gain entrance into the Source, that she might lead her people from their prison. Meanwhile, in the Rosellen village, Jerome has gathered his people to share the news of Frederica's exploits. Everyone, listen well. We've received a missive from Lady Frederica. It seems House Wolford has made good on their word, and taken the first steps toward a new future for Norzelia. Even now, Lady Frederica marches for the Source, where she intends to free our brothers and sisters from their prison. So bold for one so young. Truly, she is her mother's daughter. In her letter, she outlines the details of her plan. The road ahead of her is trying, but not impossible. However, she warns that failure may incite Hyzant's wrath, and asks that we flee for our own safety. Even now, she has only our best interests at heart. Were this letter to fall into the wrong hands, the results would be grave indeed. She risked much to warn us. What should we do, my lord? Prepare to flee? Yes, at once. But I do not ask all of you to flee. Lady Frederica risks life and limb for us all. I would not let her do so alone. I intend to go to her. Whatever danger she may face, we face it together. You may meet with the full wrath of Hyzant. Are you ready for that? Aye. And I welcome any who are of the same mind to join me. I ask the rest to watch well over those who would stay behind. If we do not return, I ask you to survive. To live. These bones aren't too brittle for another fight. It's time to pay the debt we owe the Warforges. I'm with you. Norzelia will sing of the courage of the Roselle. We ain't letting you take all the glory, Jerome. You're gonna have to share it around. The village will be in good hands while you're away. We won't let anyone do us harm. Thank you, my friends. Those who would fight, take up your weapons and march. 
We make for High Zant at once. Aye! I suspect soon we shall have a bird from Minister Exham bearing good news. It shan't be long before the mines are under our dominion. That's not my worry. I wonder whether the wall forts will obey. They owe us their lives and more besides. They wouldn't dare scorn all the Hierophant has given them. Even if they have no great love for our nation? Even if they've cast dispersions on our past deeds? I advise you to be cautious with your words. You edge dangerously close to heresy. And not even one of the saintly seven is immune from the goddess's judgment. Of course. My apologies. Pray forget my foolishness. So long as you understand. That being said, the Wolfords have but recently come into their station. And the inexperienced often reach beyond their grasp. Where are you going? To ensure the city is in order. My intuition tells me something wicked stirs within her streets. My long years have attuned me to her pulse, and I can tell when it has quickened. I'll handle the guards. Don't move a muscle, any of you. Don't even breathe. Hail! I am Clarus of the Consortium. I bring goods for trade in the city, if you'll give me leave to pass. Clarus! Consortium's working you hard. In these dangerous times, tis a privilege to be in such good employ. But you worked even harder than I. Here. A small token of my appreciation. <laughs> you always have been a thoughtful man. Go on, then. Wait! We cannot allow unscheduled goods into the city without inspection! <sighs> Fine. Guess there's no such thing as being too careful. <sighs> you needn't worry. Minister Kamsel of the Saintly Seven sent for these goods himself. He did? Oh, yes. Look closely, and you'll see. What have you done?! Ah! You snake! I must call for reinforcements! Claris, are you all right? My apologies. Luckily, mine was the only face they saw. Allow me to distract the troops. Use the opportunity to sneak into the source, my lady. Don't forget the explosives we've packed away, either. We'd make poor guests without them. You're going alone? You risk too much. Ah, my lady. But you do not become a merchant of my standing without a little risk. Pray save your worry for yourself. I've wagered quite a great deal on your success, after all. And I abhor calculating losses. Thank you, Claris. I promise this arrangement will give cause to celebrate before long. My fellow Roselle, I am Frederica Esfrost. Daughter of Orlea, who led you and your forebears from the bonds of servitude 30 years ago. I knew I recognized you from somewhere. You're the spitting image of her. What's Lady Orlea's flesh and blood doing in this goddess-forsaken prison? I am here to free you from it. I would see the end of Hyzant's tyranny alongside my betrothed, Lord of House Wolfort. Rise up and join us. 
High sand wavers even now, and the Rizal can be the gust of wind that topples them from their lofty heights. You speak like her too. Same heartfelt words. But look where those got us. We were lucky enough to be spared our lives once. They won't be so generous a second time. We're still paying for our sins. For thinking the salt of the realm could be ours. The goddess will forgive us. She will. We only need suffer a short while longer. Suffer? No! Don't swallow those lies! Enough! Minister Kamsel! Claris, are you... I'm sorry, my lady. I couldn't get away. He has more resolve than a common merchant has a right to. Better men have broken under lesser interrogations than his. Still, I can always smell a rat. It was only a matter of time before I caught the stench of rebellion. Led by none other than the Lady Frederica. I knew you could not change your nature. Your punishment shall be a lesson to your fellow sinners, just as your mother's once was. I should have known it was futile to resist. Forgive us, Goddess. It wasn't us that sinned. No, it wasn't. And it never has been. The Rizal are guilty of naught but wanting the same freedom as others. You have been deceived by the Goddess's lies. If my strength of conviction is not plain enough through words, then let my actions speak for me! Heretics to the very last! Show them the full measure of the Goddess's wrath! They brought a saint to his knees. And in our name, have we won? Is freedom at hand? But the goddess, our sins will never be cleansed if we leave. We'll forever bear the brand of thieves. There are no sins to answer for. There never were. They were lies, just as the rest of the goddess's teachings. I've read the legends put to parchment by my mother. The Roselle never sought to hoard the salt for their own. No. They meant to use it for the good of one and all. They meant to share the salt crystals with every nation. It was Hyzant who sought to hide the crystals from the world. It is they who bear the sin of greed. I've heard this story before. From Lady Orlea's lips. But it's just a legend, isn't it? A legend doesn't prove her teachings false. Not without proof, leastways. There is proof. It's been here this entire time. Ready the explosives. We must destroy the statue. All set here, my lady. Just give the word. Look well, my people. Behold the truth of the teaching's deception. Behold the lies of the goddess. The statue! What? What is that? There's something inside. What is that? A pillar? It's a salt crystal. A huge one. Now do you see? Our forebears brought this bounty from the Earth to share it with the world. This is the salt pillar from the legend. To all the peoples of Norzelia, we bequeath a great pillar of salt. It's just as our ancestors said, carved right here into the crystal. This crystal was meant to be a boon to all. But Hysan stole it and hid it away. 
They blamed us for their greed. All this time we've been paying for the sins of another. The so-called truths of the church were naught but twisted versions of reality. Just so. This statue was as hollow as the goddess herself, naught but a pretty facade to hide an unspeakable sin. A sin that Hyzant must now answer for. A sin that the Hierophant must reconcile. What is the meaning of this? The statue! What have you done? The heretics desecrate our holy land! Heathens, we will pay for this. Kill them all! No! They come in numbers, my lady. We'll be surrounded before long. We've come too far to submit now. I won't leave my people behind. Lady Frederica fought for us, and now we must fight for her! She aims to free us, but now we must free ourselves. Let's walk out of here, hand in hand! Two arms, everyone! Pick up what you can find! Today we bid farewell to the Source! Aye! My lord, the North Gate is under attack. Our soldiers cannot hold it. They ask for reinforcements at once. What? What banner does our foe fly? No banner, my lord. It's an army of Roselle. At their head is a youth named Jerome. He's spouting heresy, claiming he'll free his brethren from their bonds. He came. Jerome is here. Fortune smiles upon us, my lady. Where they once surrounded us, now they are beset on all sides. We have an opportunity. Everyone, to the North Gate! We will join with Jerome and escape the capital. Aye! Goddess, protect me! Swayed by Frederica's words, the Roselle of the Source rise up to take their freedom from the clutches of their captors. Not long after, Byzantian forces encircle them, preventing their escape. But not all is lost. Jerome and the Rosellan villagers arrive just in time, throwing their foe into disarray and affording Frederica and the others a window to escape the capital. With the long-suffering sinners freed from their shackles and the holy symbol of their faith destroyed, the people of Hyzant are left shaken to their very core. Frederica and the others take advantage of the ensuing chaos to reunite with their allies. Meanwhile, Benedict succeeds in driving Exham Marshal from the Woolfort Domain, securing the safety of his home, hopefully, for the final time. While at the borders of Esfrost, Roland succeeds in procuring the Death Snell, whose great blast will sound the end of Hyzant's reign over Norzelia. Together with Frederica, they take their first step into their new future. On the barren wasteland surrounding Hyzant, they gather, the goddess's shield towering before them. As Serenoa's plan reaches its climax. My friends, Roland, Frederica, Benedict, all of you who have gathered under our banner, we have weathered much to come this far. However, the battle of our lives is before us. The battle for our future, for the future of all Norzelia. 
until we arrive at the other side of it. I ask that you remain steadfast by my side. You don't need to ask. We're here because we believe in the path you've shown us. And we won't quit it now. In weal and woe, we'll be with you until the end. I am of the same mind. Thank you, everyone. Then, before we approach the threshold of our destiny, let us review the strategy that will see us through it. Our final aim is to gain control of the Hierophant's palace. Yet to even approach it, we must breach the goddess's shield, which has never fallen in Norzelius' history. History must give way to new thinking and new weapons. And today, my death knell shall usher us into a new age. With the shield destroyed, the route to the capital should be cleared. There is but one obstacle. It will take time to position the cannon and ready it to fire. The enemy must be distracted to allow you to work free of harassment. And I believe I know upon whose shoulders that role lies. Indeed. House Wolfort shall draw out Hyzant's main forces. We'll attack the shield's western side, hopefully enticing a good measure of Hyzant's soldiers in the process. While they're occupied, Lord Svarog and the Asfrosti soldiers will begin readying the cannon from the south. When they are done, the blast shall echo across the wasteland, and the shield shall fall. When we have won our victory in the west, we'll join with Svarog and bring our full strength to bear upon the capital. The Consortium shall keep your rear protected. That I promise. The plan is set! Lord Saranoa, my people wish to offer what support we can. Where would you have us? Thank you, Jerome. Those of you who can fight, harry Hyzant's forces in the northern and eastern parts of the capital. The city is still reeling from the Rosellen Uprising. With luck, this shall be over quickly and with few losses to mourn. Indeed. Let's bring an end to this as quickly as we can. The people have seen enough suffering. Then let us make ready. Each to their jobs. My lord, soldiers are always full of nerves before a battle. It would do well to speak with them. Make clear in their minds the victory you envision. Of course. I'll go to them. The Wolfort soldiers march toward the west of the goddess's shield, ready to risk life and limb making a show of attacking the nigh-impregnable barrier. Their display is enough to spur Exham to action, as he senses an opportunity to erase the sting of his recent defeat. He musters what troops remain in Hyzat, and sets forth to meet his former ally in the field. The two armies face each other, tension thick in the air. While to the south, Svarog and his men work hurriedly to prepare the cannon for its grand debut. My countrymen! The rebel Wolfords have spat in the face of our generosity and defied the goddess and her mercy. Now, scouts report that they have returned. They have been sighted in the west, doubtless hoping to catch us in a moment of confusion. However, before them stands the goddess's shield, silent and unyielding. It would be easy for us to leave them there to rot in the harsh sun, but that is more generous than they deserve. Those fiends who cast a wicked spell over the Roselle and destroyed the symbol of our goddess's beneficence. The Wolferts were behind that? Their sins are too great. They must be punished. Yes, in her name we must smite them, as is the fate of all heretics. If they will not bow their heads in obedience, then we shall leave them piled in the dust. They may have destroyed the statue of the goddess, but her blessing is eternal. Her smile is at our backs. Let us crush these infidels in her name. May the will of the goddess be our sword, and may her judgment strike true. In the name of the goddess! In the name of the goddess! Hmm. I 
I still have my talent for rousing rabble. It is time to wash away the disgrace of my defeat. Good. We're to meet them in the field then. I much prefer that over a protracted siege. We mustn't take Exham lightly. If we're to distract his forces, we must make him believe we mean this to be our last stand. We've succeeded so far. He comes. Wolford Kurz, prepare to receive the goddess's punishment. She has blessed me, Exham Marshal, with the permission to carry out her will. Minister Exham, all I did, I did for the people of Norzelia. To free them from the yoke of Hyzant's injustice. I know you harbor your own doubts about your country's rule, so I will ask you this once, and once only. Join us. Lay down your arms and help us build a new Norzelia. A greater Norzelia. I always knew you were destined for greatness, Saranoa. I admit I take great interest in seeing this future you have built. Then let us combine forces. I refuse. Why? Tis a simple reason. House Wolfort inflicted the only blemish on my perfect record. So, I must prove to the world that this was merely a quirk of fate. That I am, and have always been, your better. You would deny me? just to assuage your own pride? If you do not understand, you deserve no further explanation. Come, Saranoa Wolfort. From now, we speak only with our blades. Everyone to formation. Exham has made his decision. We fight! Crush these heretics under your heels. More reinforcements. Where the hell is that cannon? You don't think Esfrost has turned cloak again? No. If Hyzant isn't laid low today, then Esfrost's future is as bleak as ours. We win or we die. Together. Benedict's right. Swarog is an honorable man. He is not his nephew. They fight for the same future we do. And it will come soon, I promise. One final push. My lord, the cannon is in position and primed. Good. Make ready to fire. May her maiden cry ring sweet in the war for its ears. Align the sights. The target, the goddess's shield. Yes, my lord. Shield in sight. A peal of cannon fire washes over the sandy wastes and is answered by the crumple of steel and stone. The goddess's shield, once thought impregnable, is reduced to rubble. And behind it, Hyzant lies exposed like a seed in a cracked nut.
Seranoa cuts through the Hyzantian reinforcements, joining forces with Sparag and the Asfrosti. Together, they march through the breached wall. With every lie of their shattered faith laid bare before them, the Holy State's believers offer no resistance. Their restlessness and their fear slowly transforms into rage and anger at the Hierophant, who has seemingly abandoned them in their time of need. With the Goddess's teachings in shambles, the sun slowly sets on the Holy State. Minister Edor, we are beaten and disgraced. How will you answer for this? What is there to answer for? Don't act as if you're deaf to the world. The Roselle have rebelled. Esfrost and Glenbrook fight side by side. The shield has been reduced to rubble, and our enemies overrun the streets. And that isn't the worst of it. The church's lies have been laid bare. The faithful are lost and demand answers. We cannot simply ignore them. <laughs> Lila, my foolish girl. There is no need to worry. Hyzant shall triumph. The goddess's blessing, her true blessing, must be made known. This is what we have labored for for so long. It shall gird the faithful and shame the wicked. You speak of the Hierophant? I do indeed. <laughs> the goddess's shield shattered, the leaderless Hyzantian forces have no means of stopping Saranoa's march into the Holy State. The unified army splits into two. Svarog's forces stay to gain control over the city. Meanwhile, Serenoa's forces surround the palace. They demand the unconditional surrender of both the Holy One and the two saints left inside. Minister Lila. Must we really fight? We must. Please surrender. You have a gift, a power to save the lives of many. Use your abilities for the good of Norzelia. I swear we will not put your power to wicked ends. <laughs> I fear I must decline. Why? Someone as keen as yourself must have seen through the goddess's teachings long ago. I was a willing accomplice to the Hierophant. Minister Serenoa. The world you would forge is a righteous and just one. I dare not taint it with these bloody hands. Minister Lila. But I will not beg for forgiveness. As one of the saintly seven, I have a duty to fulfill. Come, Walfort heretics! You shan't lay a finger on the Holy One! Then there is no turning back for us, either. We will cut you down if we must. <laughs> now I will finally be united with the Goddess. I can be at ease, away from this world of suffering. No. We won't let you die. Gila, tend to her wounds. Yes, my lord. Stop! What are you doing? My life is meaningless. There is only pain in this world. We came here to change that. To build a new world, a new future, where you, where all people can find true meaning to their lives. True meaning. But to do that, 
Norzelia will need your knowledge and your skills. Your medicine can save lives. You can help people live to pursue their dreams. Minister Lila, you must live. And atone for your past. Lord Serenoa, Lord Sparog has successfully gained control over the city. And Minister Lila is no longer in critical condition. Jerome is seen to her now. All that remains now are the Holy One and Minister Edor. Serenoa, I hope you don't mind, but... I wanted to thank you for getting us this far. I have come to realize that being king is not about one's status or blood. A king is someone who stands at the forefront and carves a path for his people. As such, I think you worthy of the title king. Though royal blood runs through my veins, I do envy you, my friend. Thank you, Roland. I could not have done it without you or the others. But this isn't over yet. The final battle is still before us. Yes. To the Hierophant's Palace, everyone! The path that House Wolfort walks leads them to the Hierophant's Palace. They stand before the doors determined to bring about a new age of happiness for all in Norzelia. With conviction in their hearts, Serenoa and his friends take their final steps forward, knowing that where this path ends, another will begin. There's no one here. Lord Serenoa, perhaps it is time we see the true face of the Hierophant. But this is... What's the matter, Serenoa? It's a machine. Perhaps they left it here after the true Hierophant fled the palace. No. No one has ever seen behind these curtains. Which could only mean... Step away from the Holy One, you insolent swine. You mean to say this doll is your Hierophant? Just so. You should feel honored to be the first to learn the truth. This is the truth? You forget your station. No matter, she can be replaced. Was there ever a person behind those curtains? Or were the words you spoke on her behalf? All his, yes. So you were pulling the strings in Hyzant all along. The Holy State needed a leader. Had I not given it one, our nation would have long since fallen. Three decades ago, as the Salt Iron War raged on, the previous Hierophant fell ill. At a time when we most needed unity, the Saintly Seven began bickering amongst themselves. All fell into chaos. Only I understood. The Saintly Seven were all so fallibly human. 
And no greedy human would ever be able to unite our people. But none but a human can lead his fellow man. Not so. I realized that the goddess herself could guide them, for she is eternal and absolute. And the next Hierophant should be just the same. By my own hand, I crafted an undying Holy One who would lead this nation in the Goddess's name. You crafted a living thing. Minister Lila's research made it all possible. She is an undying machine, moved by the power of Elfric. She is as absolute as the Goddess herself. And you were the one putting words in her mouth! You've done nothing but deceive your people this whole time! And what is so wrong with that? Unlike my fellow saints, I do this not for myself. Need you proof? Witness the peace and prosperity Hyzant enjoyed for decades. The people's faith in the goddess deepened, and they rejoiced over her blessings of equality and happiness. Until you heretics ruined it all. I will not deny wanting to bring happiness to the people. Any leader would want the same. However, I refuse to stand by as you preach lies and deceive those you were meant to lead. You betray your people's trust. People cannot make the right choice without knowing the whole truth. Keeping them in the dark makes it impossible for them to see the other paths before them. The goddess's path your path is not the only true one. Hyzant has deceived its people for many long years. They used the Rozelle and tricked their own people. If that is truly what the Goddess believes, then she is evil incarnate. Enough of your senseless ideals. Pretty words alone won't save anyone. Humans are fools. The wise must protect them and show them the way. For fools, thinking is tiresome, decisions terrifying. Reality breeds discontent. Freedom gives rise to greed. Free will creates doubt, and ideals of justice lead to conflict. Ridding people of these things is the only true path to happiness and peace. How can you not see that the people want to be controlled? That is not your decision to make. People err in judgment. There are times when our hearts cloud our eyes to the right path. Call it foolishness if you want. But we can learn from our mistakes. We can find others to walk a new path with us. Denying that means robbing the people of their chance to grow. The people need neither a new path nor growth. They have me to show them what is right. Then we will do away with both you and your rule. Even if your puppets live forever, it won't mean a thing. No. My rule is immortal. The perfect Elfric has been completed. And now that it flows within me, I am as eternal as the Hierophant and the Goddess herself. So Elfric was a study on immortality. Your will is to live and control the people forever. Just what are they to you? They are my beloved children. Adorable and pitiful in their foolishness and misery. You lie. You fear your people. You fear them learning the truth and denying your rule. 
You cannot accept the fact that you are as foolish as them. And it is out of this fear that you seek to control them. You are nothing but a coward, Edor. The Absolute fear nothing. Be gone from this world! No. If you are so absolute, prove it. Shatter our convictions. Very well then. It is time you knew the goddess's true power. More puppets? They are innumerable. Do not falter! Our convictions will never be shaken! Friends of House Wolfort, it is time we end Edor's reign of deception! To arms! Together! We shall strike down this false saint! Yeah. Sarah Noah Wolfort. It must feel good to wield your blade for your ideals. But you will regret it in time. Human greed will fill the void left behind by the goddess. Those you sought to bring happiness to will criticize and condemn you. I know. That is the fate of a leader of men. But I will never stop believing in people. I will walk beside them toward a better tomorrow. I once believed in the same ideals. I prayed to the goddess endlessly for the people's salvation. But she never answered my prayers and the people remained fools. Only then did I realize the goddess did not exist. That I had to save my people by mine own hand. Edor, why not put your faith in people once more? You would forgive even me. You must atone for your wrongs, of course. But after that, you would be free to walk a different path. <laughs> you naive fools. What have you done? I have activated the remaining Elfric in the palace. Soon, all will be reduced to dust. But why? Remember this, Serenoa Walfort. Not everyone is like you. Humans will never be cured of their stupidity. No matter how much you love your fellow man, inevitably, he will betray you. Be that as it may, I still choose to believe. <laughs> then know this. The path you would walk will lead nowhere but despair. I will await you in hell. The palace is collapsing! We must go now. Even if I sink into the depths of despair, I will find a path out. 
As long as I keep walking, there will always be hope. Hurry, Saranoa! The Hierophant's Palace, once a symbol of prosperity in the holy state of Hyzant, crumbles and sinks into the source, taking Edor and his baleful puppets along with it. So it is that the long war that began with the unearthing of salt crystals comes to an end. The hearts of the Norzellian people are shaken to learn of the new sources of salt, the Rosellan history of the land, and the end of an era of three warring nations. Once the Hyzantians learn the truth of the goddess's teachings, their influence is shattered, and the holy state descends into chaos. In Esfrost, the late Archduke's staunch followers refuse Farov's new rule. Fortunately, the tumult is short-lived. Serenoa, Roland, and their loyal companions show the way, espousing the tenets of a new Norzelia. One built around the ideals of mutual understanding and cooperation. Gradually, doubts are dispelled and anxieties allayed. Peace returns to the realm under the rule of King Roland of Glenbrook. And for the first time in history, all the people of Norzelia take their first steps on a new path. Together. I would see the day my people would be welcome anywhere. Yet here we are. It truly is a dream come true. It took some time for everyone to adjust, but now it feels like the Roselle have been here their whole lives. Aye. With things finally settling down here, the young lord and King Roland can move the people forward. One step at a time. Indeed. And we must do everything in our power to see their plans through. Frederica, how good it is to see you again. Glenbrook seems to have gotten back on its feet. It has, Uncle. How fares Esfrost? Some of Gustadolf's most loyal followers resisted the change, but we managed to peacefully resolve our differences in time. Ain't that a relief? Truly, it is. I would be loathed Esfrost's history any further, and I am certain Dragan would agree. Well, well. To think dignitaries can stand about chatting in the open like this. What a world we live in now. Minister Lila, welcome. I hope your journey was a pleasant one. You can scarcely imagine my surprise when I heard that King Roland had asked for me by name. In truth, I was unsure of whether or not to answer his summons. After everything I have done, I cannot imagine being worthy of such a lofty position. Of course you are, Minister. After the Hyzantian people lost everything they believed in, you were the one who kept them together. You also shared your research with the public. Countless lives were saved thanks to you. 
I am flattered you think so. But in the end, it was I who was saved. Ha <laughs> ha! Come now! Let us save the catching up for later. We must be on our way to the castle. Where is your dear husband to be, Frederica? He is with Benedict at Castle Wolfort, discussing the prospects of the new salt crystal mines. They will make their way here once they're finished. Lord Serenoa is as ardent a youth as always, I see. <laughs> It has been an honor to serve. Wait! Where do you think you're going? I strayed from the path of righteousness, my lord. You speak of the day we all stood divided. Indeed. Had you not been there to unite us, Lord Serenoa, I shudder to think what our fate might have been. Ever since then, I have been plagued by nightmares. Visions of Norzelia swallowed up in flames because of my foolish counsel. But Norzelia has emerged stronger, and we could not have safeguarded her without you. My plan callously ignored Lady Frederica's people and would have driven King Roland away. I failed you, both as steward to House Wolfort and as a man. I have no right to be part of this realm's future. Stop right there, Benedict. Who among us has not once erred? What is important is that we learn from our mistakes. If you haven't the strength to stand after you fall, you must learn to lean on others. That is how we came this far. Whenever one of us became lost, the others helped us find our path. Is that not the way of your beloved House Wolfort? Lord Serenoa. Our work has just begun. We must stand together to forge the best path forward. We cannot hope to do this without you. Pray remain with us, Benedict. House Wolfort needs you. As do I. <sighs> I refuse. I refuse to abandon House Wolfort and its lord. My allegiance lies with you, Lord Serenoa, now and forever. I am heartened to hear this, my friend. I will not fail you, or this realm, my lord. Now then, you are on your way to the Crown City, if I am not mistaken. Let us make haste, so as not to keep King Roland waiting. Ah, yes. About that. You still waver as to whether or not to divulge to him the truth. <laughs> there is nothing I can hide from you, Benedict. I, I know I should keep the secret for House Wolfort's sake. And yet... Do as your heart tells you, my The bond between the two of you will not fray now. Your words hearten me, Benedict. I now know what I must do. Saranoa? Is everything all right? There is still time until the ceremony. There is something I must tell you, Roland. But of course, friend. What is it? I want you to see this. It was given to me by my lord father before he passed. A royal signet? But only those of the royal line are meant to have this. However, did Lord Simon come to possess it? My father told me on his deathbed that it was given to him by King Regna to be passed on to me. But that would mean... Indeed. My mother, the Lady Destra, came to House Wolfort bearing His Majesty's child. Then that makes us... Brothers? I am sorry, Roland. Perhaps I should have carried this secret to my grave, but... 
I simply could not. I do not expect you to simply take me at my word. Pray examine the ring for yourself. There is no need. I trust Lord Simone's words. You do? Do you recall that fateful day, Saranoa? When our diverging convictions threatened to tear us apart? I do. You, Frederica, and Benedict, you could not see eye to eye. I lost my duty as king and thought bending the knee to Hyzant would save us. I feel ashamed of my cowardice to this very day. But you were different. You never gave up. You found a path we were all willing to walk to there. I think that more than proof enough of your royal blood. But no. Being king is not just a matter of lineage. A king must hold fast to his ideals and be a beacon of hope to his people. His ears must be attuned to the wishes of all, and his eyes must see all paths, even those not shown by the scales. Saranoa, my brother, you are capable of that and much more. I have doubt you were meant to rule this realm. Roland. I will give you the throne, if you so wish it. And swear to see your will. I am flattered, but I must refuse. Your words now are proof enough of your kingship, Roland. People are ever in your heart, and you have shown that you can look back and learn from your mistakes. Narcellian needs a king like you at his helm. I am Saranoa, son of Simona. Ward of House Wolfort, ever a faithful vassal to his majesty, and his closest friend. I just could not go on living without telling you the truth. Hmm. Your majesty, everyone has arrived. Thank you, Huet. Let us begin the ceremony. Thank you, everyone, for coming here today. The war is over, and we have reached an agreement on the Salt Crystals. They will be deemed property of the Norzellian people as a whole, and be distributed fairly across the land. Lord Svarog and Minister Lila, we cannot thank you enough for your help in this endeavor. Think nothing of it, King Roland, but know that this is just the beginning of a new age. Indeed. And in this new age, I hope that all of Norzelia can overcome the borders of our nations and join together as one. In order to do so, Lenbrook wishes for an equal and peaceful union with Esfrost and Hyzant. And the first steps toward that are self-governing territories, yes? Correct. I will allow for free trade of goods, salt crystals included, between these territories. I will gradually ease the borders, while fostering awareness of a unified Norzellian people. I would like Lord Svarog to preside over the new Esfrosty territory. Of course, King Roland. I will do all I can to achieve my son's vision. Minister Lila, I would like you to preside over the Hyzantian territory. Gladly, King Roland. And presiding over both Wolfort and the Rosellen territory. I would have none other than my dearest friend and companion, Saranoa Wolfort. As you command, Your Majesty. And I do believe that concludes the formalities. I have but one more order for you, Saranoa. Ask and it shall be done. If you insist. I order you and Lady Frederica to have your long overdue wedding at the soonest opportunity. What? Roland, there are still so many matters to attend to. We couldn't possibly. 
This is an order from your sworn liege. You dare not refuse, Lord Wolfhorns. Roland. <laughs> what better to mark the start of an era of unity than a wedding? You will be my nephew in no time, Lord Serenoa. I know it is sudden, but shall we, Frederica? I would like nothing more. I never expected to see all these familiar faces here. It is a true testament to the path they walk together. Indeed, this is not only a celebration for Glenbrook and the Roselle, but Esfrost and Hyzant as well. Their union will become a symbol of the new era. A new dawn is breaking over Norzelia, and I am honored to be here to see it. The young lord's all grown up now. Feels like it was just yesterday when he was no higher than my knee. I feel the same about Frederica. She was always alone, yet today she is someone's bride. This is the happiest day of my life. My friends, it would appear the young couple is ready to begin. Without further ado, let us commence the ceremony. Please welcome the bride and groom, Frederica Esfrost and Sarah Noah Wolfort.